race. And then the lights on the safety car go out and you can resume racing. So 16 down, we'll all get that and get back on the lead lap. And every safety car we get, more and more cars yep. end up back on the lead lap of the race. Yeah, I think the first safety car, there was still only 11 cars on the lead lap. So we're buying more contenders back into the race with the Lucky Dog, which is great news. There they go, scurrying off around, trying to get to the back of the queue. But unfortunately, here comes the BMW safety car, not far behind will be the Porsche. Fair head uh, of steam, the safety car getting back <laughs> in the pit lane. With that amount of power. Yeah, which should. <laughs> yeah, huh? and an electric motor to help it along. Now, so this is the third different uh, driver for the leading Porsche. Where does uh, Chad Gouven gone? He's gone. Yep. Really, yeah. Yep. So that's the earliest of anybody yep. there, Garth. And he's going to have to break it at the final corner. And Valentino Rossi, right there, had a decent restart last time around uh, when he was chasing Van Sur. Well, this field, waving. this field needs to make hay while the sun shines now because the weather is on its way. They were driving straight towards it now. So almost halfway through this race. How long into this stint can they go? Very wide. The vortex off. Scott Taylor Motorsport car, Craig Lowndes behind the wheel, taking evasive action. Ross Gunn behind the wheel of Heart of Racing. The 27 AMG was the same. Oh, Up the inside goes Brock Feeney. Big move, gets it done on Joel Erickson for fourth place. Track position critical in this race, that's a nice one. So Mercedes AMG get themselves into the top four. So it's now Porsche, BMW, Audi, Mercedes. The four key brands in this race in the top four positions outright as they run up the shelf for the first time. So good restart, Ayan Kanguven. Valentino Rossi still behind the wheel of 46. Chris Haza is now in that orange Audi with Rock Feeney doing Rock Feeney things up to four. Now yeah, that number 22 looking ominous again. That bright orange and blue Audi in the hands of the rabbit. Haza is rabbit in German. So obviously that became his nickname straight away. Good little battle pack following on behind as well, Garth. Just noticing Garth Walden up to eighth spot in the M Motorsport AMG Mercedes bronze driver up there with the full factory drivers. That team did not pit at that last safety car, so that's why they've got themselves up the road. And I wonder whether they didn't pit because they looked out the, out the front of the garage and went, it's probably going to rain in the next four or five laps <laughs> and we're going to be back in pit lane anyway. So why not get a bit of track position and get ourselves in the game? So Garth Walden has Ricardo Fella right in his rear vision mirror. This fella has a look up the inside. Does he get the job done? Yes, he does. Yes. Walton lets him go. And that's Felipe Fraga that follows fella through. So Walton's given up a couple of spots, but still they've gained a lot of track position out of that. It is temporary. You do have to come to the lane at some stage, but they're banking on that very dark sky opening up and having to come to pit lane for wins. And now it's a straight out battle for the Boys Hill Pro Am class between Garth Walden and Ross Gunn just behind in the 27 car. So that becomes first and second in class with Jordan Love not that far behind in the three Mercedes AMGs. So <laughs> the race within a race, Lee Holdsworth just sticking the head out to He's see been, what the weather's going to do. Weather mark. He knows yeah. where it comes Absolutely. from. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's rain oh. affected with the year he won the great race, yes. was there not? With Chaz Mostert. Make the point here, gentlemen. It's slick Pirelli tyres or wet Pirelli tyres. There are no intermediates. No, 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 no. So if it does get wet, coming back off out of the wet, you have to wait until you're going to be happy on the slicks again. Yeah, and it's a very durable wet tyre. It's a, the Pirelli wet is a very durable one, so you can take it a reasonable distance into a dry line before you switch back to slicks. But engineers live their life on Excel spreadsheets and they will say, well, it's going to be faster on a slick, so I don't care if it's wet or dry. Here's a slick tyre. Yeah. So I've had many an argument with an engineer oh, over really? that one <laughs> over the years. And the other point to make on tyres is that your tyre allocation, which was 48 tyres, 12 sets, are 12 slick sets. Your wet weather tyres are uh, unlimited. Separate allocation. Yeah, yep. basically, because it's a safety measure, of course. You can't run out of wet weather tyres. A safe tyre for the conditions. Yeah. The McLaren GT4 cars, again in formation flying, trying their best to stay out of the way of this very angry pack of GT3 cars. 
they make their way down Conrod Strait. Have I missed the bungee cord between those two <laughs> McLaren <laughs> arterials? Because they've barely been more than half a second or a second and a half away from each other. The whole race, it seems. It seems that every time our leaders make their way through, those two cars are line astern. They're actually a couple of laps separated between the cars. One lap separated between the two cars, but they're always on track together. That's for sure. This is for position in the Pro-Am class. Jordan Love looking down the inside of Ross Gunn. Couldn't quite get it done. So Walden, Gunn, Love, 48, 27, 88. The three numbers, those three Mercedes AMGs, that is for the class win. And just behind them is Harry King, who's got himself back onto the lead lap. And the young Brit, who is very, very fast, is going after them in the second of the Manti EMA Porsches. He's got Craig, Craig Lowndes up his tailpipe as well. So that, that's going to be instructive for, for Harry. Remember, we had Yasser Shaheed uh, nerfed off the track at the top of the mountain, uh, lost a lap. They played the lucky dogs uh, as well as they could to get it back in there. That's three safety car restarts in a row where those two poor McLarens have found themselves <laughs> utterly mugged by all of the leaders within about 20 seconds of going back to green. That's the exact term I was going to use, yeah. mugged, because <laughs> what are you meant to do? So the number nine Hallmark Audi doing its best to stay out of the way. Mark Sini at the wheel of that one. Trying to stay offline, so hard to do across the top of the mountain. Stays to circuit left for the run to Skyline. Nice actually, job. Yeah, actually break to stay out the way there, not even just a, a little lift. Now they get to the Mark Car and the IRC GT. Oh, now this could be interesting down Conrod because yeah. those they go. two invitation class cars can motor on a little yeah. bit. So we've seen this all day in waves when we catch the lap traffic. You catch it in waves. Race First the GT4 cars, teams. then the, the invitation. have imposed a pit lane penalty drive through to car 911, breach of safety car procedure, waving after lights are out. Yeah, another the... international driver yeah. caught out by the rules here in Australia. As we go back to the lead. Uven gets the job done up the inside. Rossi follows him through, as does Haas. And look at the cube forming behind, though. Oh, it's not Erickson. done yet. Ericsson went left, but had to go right to get past. And down the inside, the Caltex car tried to make a hole where there wasn't one. Craft Bamboo kept Daniel Yunkadella still not done. up. It's still not done. Yunkadella trying to get up the inside for the run now. <laughs> It's oh, there's no room on the inside there. It's Shulgun on behind the wheel of 75. Yeah. He's got track position out of that. He's got a spot. Gets in front of Ricardo Fella. And off the road goes the triple one car. Busy little moment. Well, we heard from Craft Bamboo. They said, we're going to keep the Spaniard stashed away until the second half of the race. We're not quite there yet. But he has been unleashed and tried to make a hole where there wasn't one. But good stuff. Danny Yucadella up to sixth place for Craft Bamboo. We've just been quietly creeping up on it today. They were, yeah. they were strangely, I think the word's anonymous last year. They just weren't quite in the mix all race, but a much stronger performance this time around. So, so far, so good. <laughs> Team watching on, going, what's going on? He's to see himself. He see that he sees himself. I'm trying to watch where my car is. Three minutes to halfway. Get the halfway there memes ready. Hashtag B, one, two, HR. Great scrapping once again over the top of the mount. Wits need to be horned very sharply here. I get terrified when I see cars hit that kerb on the inside and Ricardo Fella just kissed it with the rear corner of the KFC Audi. As Hankan Guven's doing an awesome job scything his way through this traffic. And Rossi matching him and just held up by the Lambo. He's got Adrian Dietz, the AM driver behind the wheel as they run out of the elbow. And have a look at Brock Feeney. He wants to move on Chris Harzer. And the big Merck's got in the toe of the Audi. And there is a straight line speed advantage to the AMG GT3 relative to the Audi. He won't do it on Conrod. What about under brakes into the chase? Harzer defends. Rossi just in front. They can all see the race leader. You can see as they went down Conrod, Haas didn't defend all the way. Just left three quarters of a car width to the inside. And... Feeney wasn't going to be able to get down the inside. Look at Rossi, Rossi having, having a crack lead. for the lead. So Rossi trying to use the lap traffic to his advantage. We talk about the triple two K team have got snakes and ladders in their garage. We're seeing it live here today. So a, a point that's been said to me by Declan Brennan out in the US is Rossi here, we've talked about him more than holding his own. 
he's only at the start of his career in terms of this level of racing. The guys around him have all been doing it for years. How much better is he going to get? <laughs> I mean, this is only one year that he's been doing this. It's like when you're training a driver, you find the big chunks of lap time in big chunks. And then when you get closer to the front, the gains are far more incremental. But you have to be impressed. I mean, we we marvelled at what a job Valentino Rossi did last year. To see the improvement 12 months on, to be doing what he's doing now, forget about the lap times, the race craft is what's impressed me the most. The way that he's got his way through traffic and not given up lap time to these guys that live in these race cars and have done since they were born, effectively. Yeah. So, for me, it's not the lap time that's impressive, it's the race craft and the positioning of his car relative to the lap traffic. Hashtag B12HR, Dave Alcock says, can we just bring out now the cars are actually out there at the moment? There seems to be far more now than there were when we started. That was just an insane race start. You're not wrong, David, but I promise you, we have not, no one sneaked in the back way with a couple of race cars. Let's have a look at the counter, top left corner of your screen. We're now in the second half of the race, six hours down, six to go. And the Repco Bathurst 12 out. And three seconds cover the top five cars. And there are 16 cars on the lead lap of the motor race going into the second half. So this is all to play for with the threat of weather impending. We've had several reports that it is actually going to happen. Well, it's one of those things at this place. You never yeah, believe I it mean, until yeah, you actually uh, exactly see it. Right. But everyone's looking at me and sending messages going, no, no, it's actually going to happen today. Yeah, they've said that every day this week. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. been here enough, Rich. You've all been here enough now to know that until the actual black stuff is wet, you don't <laughs> believe it. It's the old weather rock theory. <laughs> yeah, if right. rock, wet, raining. <laughs> the wind has picked up a little bit. Yeah. As I say that, the flagpoles are limp outside our window, but I looked at them 30 seconds ago, Garth. <laughs> don't shake your head. <laughs> and they were blowing around. So it is a bit gusty at the moment. Let's call it gusty. Chad? I've, uh, I've come up here to the 12-hour club, guys, because I found Christoph from uh, Borzell Watchers, who are sponsoring our Pro-Am class. Uh, he can both give us a weather update as well as uh, tell us all about whether uh, or not we're going to be giving out some watches here today. Christoph, tell us about Borzell Watchers, because I've been having a, a... Well, I've been drooling over these watches, actually, for the last five minutes now. Tell me a bit about the company. Thanks, Chad. Well, we are Borzell, Australia's watch, since 2011. We made watches... Well, so we're from the Sydney, from Sydney, North Shore, in, 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 in Sydney. And uh, we've made watches for the Royal Australian Air Force, for the Royal Australian Regiment, so a lot for the defence. Uh, and we are lucky since last year to be the official watch of the Bathurst 12-hour. Uh, we absolutely love it here. We did a watch last year, which was uh, a tribute to Liquid Muddy. It was the last uh, year as a sponsor. So we did red and blue on the, on the, on the bezel for them to, uh, for the watch. And this year we did a watch that's completely different. Uh, it's green. So first we, did, we used a 316L uh, sandblasted uh, surgical grade steel uh, that we put with a black uh, IP coating. Gives a very racing look to the watch. And then we went with a green uh, dial, a green dial because it's green here in Mont Panama, Panorama, but also because of the latest uh, uh, logo of the Bathurst. I don't know if you saw, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. A lot of colors, and we picked up on the green. Uh, it has Bathurst, 12 hours, 720 minutes. But the feature that I love the most is actually the case back. So you can, you can wear it upside down if you want. <laughs> Won't tell you if you want. It's not great to tell the time, but it looks so good. It has an open case back, which is the first time that we're doing that at Bozelle. So it shows the movement, the beautiful Swiss-made automatic watch uh, movement inside. You can see through transparency. And uh, that's one of the best features of the watch. And also something that I forgot to mention uh, is that we're only doing 100 watches. So last year's watch sold out. This year's watch, we're doing 100. 12 for the winners of the race and 88 for the general public to buy. They have a little bit of something in the crown, either Mount Panorama, Panorama Rock for the winners, or uh, there is a tire marble uh, from the racetrack here, uh, from GT3 in, in the crown. Beautiful. I love the, uh, the tiny little bit of detail from Mount Panorama. Makes it even better. Christoph, well done. And uh, the lucky winning drivers from Pro and Pro and will be able to take these home today. How cool is that?
Nice, Chad. Yeah, timepieces for winning major endurance race are a bit of a tradition around the world. So I love that we've got an Aussie company to do the job. So there's been a change of position. Chris Haza has slipped his Audi R8 LMS past Valentino Rossi, who now finds himself defending from Brock Feeney with Joel Erickson just in behind them as well. So this is the battle for third, fourth and fifth place. And I just, I don't want to do the dramatic, it's going to rain thing. But as we have a look at this moment, so it was an error from Rossi at the top of the chase that's dropped him off the road and Hazel was able to take advantage. Just got a message from Cam, who works for Ford in the PR department. He said, raining hard five minutes from the racetrack. So we're going to roll with this. We've heard that here before no, as no, well. I'm rolling with it. We've heard this before. Let's hear from Shane Pitlane. Well, let's get some more local intel. Uh, Brad Schumacher, you call this place home. You've seen this weather your entire life. Is it going to rain? You know, uh, if you look out towards the uh, southwest, it looks like the world's about to end. So uh, usually if the weather comes from that direction, then it does rain. Uh, looking at it and the clouds are rising quite rapidly, I'm thinking for sure we're going to get a shower. It was a rough start for your team and MPC in particular for the, the start of the bronze session. Got all the bad luck out of the way. Race has been going pretty well so far. I'm not going to jinx anything. But your duties, are you going to get back in the car? I know you want to. Yeah, no, I did my stint this morning. Uh, did quite a good job of it. Left the uh, car in a good position for the guys. Of course, uh, Winky and uh, Ricardo, are, uh, they're the stallion drivers in this team. I'm just here to try and top up the numbers. Uh, but yeah, no, I've been put on notice. So for sure, maybe back in the seat again. Just not quite sure when. That's super exciting. I mean, it's not every day you get to drive at this track. For you, it is, but not at speed. What's the mentality shift for you when all of a sudden you're allowed to drive it as fast as you want, not just 60K? Um, I mean, the mentality doesn't really change, I guess. Uh, for me, I've been racing long enough. It's more about just uh, concentrating on doing my job as well as I can for the Audi team. And, of course, uh, I'd give anything to win here at Bathurst. This is uh, literally all I'm asking for in this racing community is to take a win here at the Bathurst 12-hour. For me, this is the holy grail of motorsport. And, uh, yeah, I really hope we can get a good result today. Never know when the mountain's listening. Good luck, Brad. Please, mountain gods, please. <laughs> yeah, might have to... Just have a, a little prayer to the racing gods of Mount Panorama. Into the second half of the race. And Chad Govan still leading by about four seconds now, Chad. Yes. Now, guys, I wanted to sneak this in before the rain came because <laughs> <laughs> I've loaded this thing up two or three times and it's been safety car. There it all goes again. So I've got to load it up before the rain will come and that'll obviously change things again when they all pit if they need to for wet. But there's a few guys that we didn't get to talk about a little bit earlier on. So let's dive into the Pirelli pit bunker and just open up our live driver stints because there's a few teams here that have had updates since we last spoke. So we know now that this car, unfortunately, the BMW has had their crash, so we can pretty much discount the 32. But Garth, you were asking earlier about car 13. So I've added it to my tracking list today, and this is how they've gone so far. So they've gone Evans, Ericsson, Boos, and then Repeat. And they've only done that one half stint, which is when the safety car came out. And they're back continuing now in there, what would be that one, two, three, four, five, six stint of the race. Now check how almost identical that looks to that okay wow. so what they've done i love this right how good is this genius thinking from the 13 they've gone okay guys quick strategy meeting Manthe racing are really good at this why don't we just do whatever they're doing okay everybody ready great so all they're doing right now is just following exactly what car 912 is doing they've got a porsche they've got a porsche so hang on we've got three drivers they've got three drivers we'll just do what they're doing so that's actually pretty clever no need to go recreating everything when there's a team down the road doing it I have spotted one team doing something a little bit different, Rich. Please enlighten me, Chad, and is it car 77? It is. Well done, because if you're ever going to find a way that there's one team when you think you can't do anything different, it's Craft Bamboo. We saw that a few years ago where they decided to pit four times every single lap, it felt like. And what's missing from here, guys? What can you tell me? What's missing from that? There, there's some white in that graph that I can't yeah. see there. Yes. Now, the reason would be that Daniel Junkadello's only just got in on that last safety car. So he's actually competing in the Bath of Six Hour here today because <laughs> he did not drive at all in the first six hours. OJ did a nice job in his first time here in an AMG car to say, all right, he's pretty much done anything that he needs to do. I'd probably expect Gertz and Junkadello to just get the job done. The only real advantage of that is that uh, Daniel's nice and fresh and ready to go. So they've saved some time for Daniel Junkadello to be nice and ready to just keep driving through the afternoon. 
that could really help, particularly in a wet, dry race when fatigue could play a factor. But question without notice, and I know you don't have the exact driver time on that graph, chat. but does that reduce some flexibility for their stints at the end, given they've already used a chunk of time for their other drivers? Yeah, it's pretty similar to what the the guys are doing with the loophole rule or the Kenny rule, mm. uh, similar to cars 2, 22 and 75, where they've backed themselves into a little bit of a corner. But you can go stint one hour stints the whole way to the checkered flag and just use those drivers. Worst case scenario, you just put a fast kid like Jaden Ojeda back in the car. The only time that'll catch you out, which is what I was saying before the BMW went backwards in the fence earlier, is that if you get a safety car around 45 minutes into a stint, that puts you in a little bit of a freaky strategy territory, which obviously didn't happen last year when we went five hours green to the checkered flag. Yeah, you're right, and we're yet to see if that will be the case again. The other one, I suppose, is 46, who has done okay. a, a really good job. All right. Where's the lone remaining BMW at? Okay, well, probably coming in for wets if I look at those clouds out there <laughs> anytime soon. But uh, if you have a look at the strategy, strategy graph for the 46 car, Martin Rossi and Marciello. Uh, for Lello, he only did a little bit of driving in the early part of that race. They've been pushing the 32 lap marker whenever they can. And uh, at the moment, we've had two stints for Martin, a little double for Marciello, and then Rossi in the car right now. So it's not that Rossi's slow or anything, but you'd expect that they'd be doing the Martin Marciello trick at the end of the race. Nice work in the Pirelli pit bunker. The only final question again, without notice, Chad, is did you score yourself a watch? I did not, unfortunately. Oh. You know, he's a pretty tall lad, was uh, Christoph down there, so I wasn't going to try my luck in running away from him. He told me he went for a very nice manly beach this morning. Just think about that for a second. That's like four hours away from where we're standing. So that's pretty impressive that he's did gone he for a Did he borrow your chopper? Did he borrow your chopper to get here, Chad? No, he had to go on wheels, actually. Okay. <laughs> Tough for some. Thanks, Chad, down in the Pirelli pit bunker. With more strategy updates as the race goes on. It's got the massive spreadsheet operating down there, tracking all of the various numbers. And uh, it could get even more complicated as this race evolves, given what we think is to come. This continues to evolve as a battle three and four on the road. Valentino Rossi being chased by Brock Fenny. You mentioned off air just a little bit before, Garth, that there's a little uh, storyline here because there's great motorcycling heritage between both of these families. Uh, Brock Feeney's dad, Paul, was a bit of a legend of the two-wheeled scene here and raced at Mount Panorama. We're going to give you a bit of an idea about who sits where in the field. So that is the race leading Porsche heading up into turn two. There's the battle behind Rossi, Feeney, the Porsche, the Mercedes, and then Julgunon. Then we find Ricardo Fella being harassed by Felipe Fraga and Jordan Love. Ross Gunn is next, second in the Pro-Am class, and then we find Garth Walden has just dropped back off that leaderboard. Craig Lowndes is 13th. Harry King will be next. He's 14th on the road, still on the lead lap. Only 38 seconds behind the race leader at this point is the Shell V-Power car from Manti EMA. And then it's quite a way back to Marcel Zalua, who's jumped behind the wheel of the silver class Valmont Racing Audi R8 that's done such a good job today. Luke Yildon and Brad Shields sharing that car with Marcel and his mate Sergio Perez. IRC GT. Jeff Emery behind the wheel of car 702 with a Lamborghini just in behind with Adrian Dietz behind the wheel. And that is a car in the wall on the run down into the Repco Dipper. Off of Brock Skyline, it's the Superglass Racing IRC T, uh, GT from Matt Stone Racing and John Hollinger behind the wheel of what was the class leading car. 19th outright leading the class and instantly the timing screens go yellow. 15 seconds to slow down. And Chan Guven again, when he has built up a wee bit of a buffer, he's going to be hauled back. So what have we had since the last safety car? Tw well, 10, 12 laps? 12 laps yeah. in this stint for these drivers. So, I mean, we've seen them pit with less before, and we are getting some reports of rain in the lane as well as Valentino Rossi blazes through pit entry. What tide did he put on? Get the car down to 40 kilometres an hour. Chad, what's it doing? Uh, not feeling a heap of it in the lane at the moment, but I just wonder, we've seen so many teams elect to pit at the end of a safety car window, which is typically very strange. Are you better to just wait right now? Wait for the weather, wait to see if you're better to be pitting in two laps strictly for the sake of tyres than switching to a wet tyre. Because if you go out in a slick right now, you might find yourself back here in about five minutes. 
It's a good point, Chad. Like, I would have waited. There was a late call. Rally didn't even get the belts loosened when he unclipped them, so wasn't fully prepared by the time he pulled up at the pit box. And with the threat of weather, as soon as that safety car came, I was like, right, do you pit now or do you just wait? Because the weather is coming. We expect it is going to rain. You can see it. It is actually dropped. It's spinning it's coming on the top. from, and that's its skyline. So it's starting. How much, how intense is that rain going to be? So here's Hollinger. Oh, now the number two KFC. Yeah, I hope he was right yeah. there. It was. The smoke there's usually fire. <laughs> <laughs> Says the racing driver. <laughs> and race control takes a very dim view of pro drivers making contact with AM drivers. Oh, the they've class. called an audible. Oh, wow. Absolutely called an audible wow. because they, they had brand new slicks on the car. And now they are going to a wet. It doesn't matter though, does it? Because A, it's 85 seconds, and B, you're under well, safety car, so you're going to get a part if you're in the lane. Now it's well. Now have we gone too early? Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> so great game. They are right in the real tricky point. Do you do it now? But there's more rain. There's certainly more rain coming down. So that's the bottom of the mountain. It's still uh, not oh, wet enough not for wet, wet but for they're apple. banking. That by the time we go green, it will be wet enough for wets. So they're ahead of the curve if it does rain hard, but everyone else has they got stayed the, out. Yeah, so the, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, look at the size of those drops. Like this is proper Bathurst thunderstorm type rain. That's big ploppy drops is the technical that, term for that. That's a meteorology. meteorology use. Yeah. yeah. What was yeah. it? Oh yeah. What was it? Big ploppy drops. Okay. Yeah. Just gotta write that down. Scott Taylor Motorsport in the lane. Driver change, so Craig Lowndes jumps out. WRT looking at their radars busily. What are this team going to do? Try and shut the door for one. So there's obviously been a bit of side to side contact with that car. What tyre did they put on it? Slick. Still slick. slick. I wonder if that's a warm it slick. It is a warm slick. Isn't yeah, it? so here we go. That's what we're All right down. in that tricky period where probably too wet for slicks and not wet enough for wets. Part of the new Repco Bass's 12 hour merchandise range there. The very nice new umbrella will be put to good use, we think. So the field's at 80 kilometres now. They'll catch up to the BMW safety car while pit stops unfold for some. The wall racing Lamborghini is in the lane as well. What a shame for the IRC GT team. And the rain yeah, falls on it now. the it's, mountain. It's, it's wet. wet. It's wet. That's all you needed to see. Generally work on the ratio of wet versus dry on the ground. And uh, when it's more wet than dry, that's good enough for wet. Yeah. That is that is going to get very wet very quickly. And we've had a, a decent bit of time where the, the sun has been covered by the clouds, so there's not that much heat in the tarmac either. So it's not going to evaporate so easily. Five and three quarter hours to go, and we've got more drama. And this time, it's been provided by Mother Nature. The field is under the control of the BMW XM safety car. The race is under the control of the rain at the moment because it is raining at Mount Panorama. We've talked it and talked it, and it's happened as the recovery is underway on the entry to the Repco Dipper at the top of the hill for the Superglass Racing IRC GT Invitational Class entry with John Hollinger behind the wheel has had an incident there. We understand there may have been contact with a GT3 car that was trying to place them another lap down. We'll confirm that as we watch on board. Well, this might give us the answer. Oh. Was squeezed against the wall on the entry at Brock Skyline down through the S's. It was certainly contact. There was 100% contact. <laughs> But the run to Skyline, wow, that had our attention. So Hollinger potentially didn't see that Ricardo Fellow had a run on him. And then ultimately there was contact in the S's going down to the dipper. We're under safety car. Once the safety car boards came out, the Jesus. sky opened and rain began to fall. And yes, it is certainly going to be wet enough now. For Easy a choice wet now, Garth, isn't it? Yeah. Really? It's wet. So 46 pitted first, and they rolled the dice mid pit stop to put wet tyres on the BMW and a Raffaele Marciello in the wheelhouse. So it's a pretty good combination between the two of them. So they've already done their pit stop. They were first in. They might get a little bit of track position game out of that 
as well. Matt Campbell's aboard the race leading 912 Porsche. Gets the belts nice and tight. Wet weather Pirelli's on this car. So 912 pitted. Joel Erickson pitted car number 13. That's the Phantom Global Racing Porsche. Daniel Yucadella for Craft Bamboo Racing in the Caltex car. Now, car number 22 stayed out. Chris Harza has not pitted the Wash It Audi from yeah. Audi Sport Team MPC. And remember, <laughs> that Audi, it looks like an R8 because it is an R8, but it's not Quattro. The road no. car is Quattro. You're not allowed all-wheel drive in GT3 racing. But also staying out, Brock Feeney, Jogunon, Ricardo Feller oh. in the two car and Jordan Love in the Johor Motor Racing Double Eight from Triple Eight Race Engineering. So the five leading cars yet to stop as well. They will, you think. Unless they think it's a passing shower. Garth Tander has been out and he's he's, he's a little dumb. No, <laughs> well, I, we, we've got the, the radar up here on the computer screen and we all have it on our phones, but still the best way to hear about this is absolutely to step outside and check it out. And whilst it does look quite bad there it doesn't actually look like a big front looks like it'll pass quite quickly so i'm tipping teams are hanging out to the last possible moment to see what the weather's going to do here so the rain yes, is falling at bathurst and rain at bathurst is just i often say for excitement just add water we don't really even need to do that here at mount panorama but it is very very wet it's big drops chad nailing is down uh, in the pit lane have you got your brolly chad uh, i don't need it thankfully in the Pirelli pit bunker john but what i was keeping an eye on in the chaos then was the pit stop times most of which have been around the 85 second mark now, unless I'm seeing numbers that were incorrect, I had car 912 in the pits for 64 seconds and they did a driver change. So just keep that in the back of your mind at the moment. Right, thank it, you. It did, it did get my attention when Matt Campbell left the pit box that it looked scrambled, like Matty was looking into the pit bunker. He wasn't, control, wasn't looking at the car controller. Probably was getting a lot of chat on the radio. It looked like there was a lot of confusion going on there. So correlate with what you said Chad that potentially there was some confusion around the pit stop time there so we think then at the front of the field Chris Harzer is on slick, slick tires in the 22 Audi the triple eight Brock Feeney still on slicks Jill Goudon in the 75 Sun Energy 1 AMG still on six Ricardo Ricky, Feller, Ricky Feller yeah Jordan Love as well I think the first car on a wet is Campbell is so, and this car, when we saw it in the lane last, had left with a warm Wall slip. Yeah, on. I'd agree with that. I don't know whether they've come back and uh, grabbed the wet or not. McLaren Arturo going on to wet tyres. And a new set of tyres going on the Hallmark Audi as well. And that was a slick Pirelli coming off. Of course, the longer you wait, the better chance you have of, of working out what, whether you actually need to change whilst you're behind the XM safety car. Oh, so oh. have a go at this. So Haas is going to get stuck behind the tilt tray that's bringing in the car that's brought out the safety car. Let's hear from Shay in pit lane. A little bit of extra intel, guys, on that Matt Campbell uh, kerfuffle. When they went to do the driver change, Matt's radio didn't get plugged in, and Ancon actually had to go back in the car again, John opening the door and trying to get to the radio to plug it in. As soon as he closed the door was when the pit board went up, which officially releases the car, but it hasn't always been the indicator of when the driver then leaves, so that could have been a little bit more confusion and a little bit more stress. And just to let you guys know, we are now seeing rooster tails in full force down the front straight and a storm warning has just been issued on all the local TVs. So if you're a fan around the track, you might want to seek shelter at this point. Both of the Audis have just come in from the pro class, both the two and the 22. It will be tire changes for both cars. No driver, no fuel, and they are going to full wet Pirellis. 
if that radio wasn't plugged in, then they couldn't tell him to wait either for the 85 seconds. So that could be a problem. Repco Bathurst 12 hour highlights. We're into the second half of the race now. Wow, there's some stuff that's played out already and so much more to come. This start feels like a long time ago all of a sudden with the way this race has changed and evolved as the weather now falls at Mount Panorama. This was the Vortex car 701 in the gravel at the top of the hill. That was the first safety car. This was the second car number 91 into the fence hard at uh, the entry to visit New South Wales corner. Controversial moment. Yasser Shihin turned around. Glenn Wood, the GT driver with the contact at McPhillamy Park. And racing has been properly intense, as you'd expect. Some of the world's best drivers going at it. Very, very good cars. Hugest moment of the race so far. Around the outside of the lapped Janetta and the race leading BMW of Charles Vietz behind the wheel, led early, was right in the mix at that point. Crunched into the fence hard on the entry to the cutting and then out of the race. And then not that long later, the Janetta's tough old day continued with damage on the run down the hill. This is Brock Feeney putting a move up the inside at turn two. Nice pass. And then a little error from Valentino Rossi, the first of his weekend. Not the only one to do it today, though. And that caused him to drop some track position. And then this is the reason we're currently under the control of the BMW safety car was contact between the KFC Audi and John Hollinger in the IRC GT car. And just as the field needed to get to pit lane when the safety car was called, the heavens opened. And a really busy moment with some of our leading cars caught up behind a recovery vehicle entering pit lane. This is how things stand with five hours and 30 minutes to go. Under safety car, the Pirelli leaderboard shows car 912 still leading the race with Matt Campbell now behind the wheel. Uh, Bastion Boost, that car up to second place, the Phantom Global Racing Porsche. So they're one and two. And Craft Bamboo Racing up to third place with Danny Yucadella behind the wheel over the page. So car number two's dropped back to 11th after that pit stop. They were last to stop as people throw wet weather tyres at their cars. And then you can see the class letters a little bit further down. Um, we're down three cars, at least at the moment. Class leaders, thanks to Boysell, Campbell, Ian James leading the Pro-Am battle. Sergio Perez still leads the way in silver. John Hollinger was leading the invitational class. And I think they had a couple of laps up their sleeve actually prior to that accident. And then Marcus Flack doing a nice job in car 25. So that's the scene. That's the famous Mount Panorama sign. And Garth, you stuck your head out the back of the commentary box just moments ago. I did the same. What you didn't mention was that the atmosphere is as electric as the skies at the moment. And you could cut the tension out there with a cricket stump. The air so thick. It is properly dramatic out the back of the paddock. Everyone scrambling to work out what's going on. Spectators taking shelter. Corporates, not so much. They're pretty happy. Everyone in the suites up above the garages on pit lane having a very, very nice day. Those new shelters on pit straight. They're a welcome addition for the sun and the rain. So that's worked out nicely. Good point, yeah. So now the whole complexion changes, Garth. Uh, what what are you going to be changing on the car as a driver? What are the tires? Oh, put wet tires on. Yep. That's going to raise the car up a little yep. bit as well. They have a little higher profile. A little bit, probably two millimetres of ride height. It, the car comes up. Uh, the first thing you'll do is you'll change the ABS setting on the car. You'll change the traction control setting on the car. So um, most cars have got between nine and 12 settings for, depending on the manufacturer, depend, for ABS and traction control. And some of those settings are dedicated solely for the wet. So probably three settings in the ABS for wet, three or four settings in the traction control for the wet as well. And um, the engineers will be on the radio letting the drivers know based on the amount of water on the track what sort of settings to start with and then it comes down to driver feel and car balance so we've had absolutely zero wet weather running some of the boys on the top of the mountain pretty happy with it probably enjoying a, a cool change with the weather blowing in but we've had zero dry weather run our uh, wet weather running in practice and qualifying leading up into this one and uh, from memory i think 22 was the last time we had some wet weather running and that was early in the morning so not these sort of tro more tropical conditions that we have here today. 
felt like half an hour ago, those that had umbrellas up were shading themselves from the sun. And give it 30 minutes at Mount Panorama, and it is a tropical thunderstorm coming at you. Ooh. This is under safety car. Daniel Bilski behind the wheel of the Prestige Iveco GT4 car run by Mark Griffith's team. A little moment. The IRC GT just in behind. That's the car that Paul Tracy is part of. We had him in the commentary box earlier today, former Champ Car World Series champion. And that's the scene. Right now at Mount Panorama in less than seven days' time, what will happen at the Thrifty Bathurst 500. It's part of Superfest, which rolls all the way through the week. Grab your tickets at supercars.com now. And if you are watching overseas, as part of the massive car drive, people all around the world checking out this race, supercars.com slash superview. We'll have live coverage for you for international viewers. Someone who will be part of the Thrifty Bathurst 500 next week for Walkinshaw and Freddy United, but part of his own race team this weekend, Method Motorsports, Chaz Mostert. Hello, Chazzy, how are you? G'day, guys, how are you going? Extremely well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to talk to you first about how you're negotiating these restarts when you are getting attacked by GT3 cars at every point of this circuit. Well, yeah, first of all, it wouldn't be Bathurst without throwing a mid-race rain in, so, um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Bathurst gods. Um, but, yeah, look, it's, uh, it's pretty fun, to be honest. I feel like I try to make it a bit harder for the GT3 guys this year, I feel. Like I'm just trying to mix it in, maybe a little underpowered and a little bit undergripped. But um, it doesn't last very long and then they disappear from me and then I generally see them in about eight or nine laps time. <laughs> Ch Chaz, new race team, uh, Method Motorsport, you're part of this. For those that might not be aware of it, just tell us about the team and how your involvement came about. Yeah, um, kind of last year I thought about challenging myself quite hard in, um, in some off weekends of racing with the supercars. and. I've always loved GT cars. I've loved the, always the, the blue ribbon events, the 12 hour, you know, Spa 24. Um, and an opportunity came to, to possibly buy a couple of GT4 cars. Um, you know, McLaren Customer Racing were, were really awesome to work with and, and supply us a couple of uh, GT4 Arturas to come here in Australia. Um, we've had to work pretty hard in the, in the off season. We had our cars delayed. We had the, the motorsport retailer down here in Australia with Zagami, Automotive, uh, Zagami Autosport look after us and do a car swap. So. Uh, not a lot of sleep over the Christmas New Year break, but we made it here. We've got, um, you know, other than uh, not myself, but five other very talented drivers, and uh, we've made the race. It's a whole new learning curve, and um, I now I know what the stress level of team principals and and uh, <laughs> team bosses and team owners. It's um, it's a new one, but I really am enjoying. I'm new, enjoying the new challenge. We've got an amazing crew. Um, our crew here with the team as well. I've called in a lot of favours from a lot of ex-supercar teams, so um, we're very spoiled for, for talent in this team. Chaz, tell us how you're balancing that. How are you balancing the team owner, team principal hat with your race car driver hat? Is it 50-50 you're splitting your time, or do you feel like you're more team owner than race car driver this weekend? Yeah, it's um, it's it's funny. I think the Tuesday, like the Tuesday we got here, we did Tuesday, Wednesday, did all the team setup. It's the first time we've ever set up a, a pit garage. Um, so it was, um, you know, more hands-on. I feel like going back to my early years when I was in um, development series and stuff like that, just getting hands-on again. So I must say I'm a lot more knackered these, uh, this weekend than what I'm on a normal supercar weekend. Um, but, yeah, it, managing it's not too bad. It's um, When I'm out of, the ga out of the car, I'm obviously trying to see where I can help and, and try and use that experience that I've had in working with other teams. But when the helmet goes on, I'm just a typical racer. I just want to go out there, try and race door-to-door -door with everyone even try and make it a bit harder for the GT3 cars. So um, I think there's a few Euros that are probably pretty disappointed with me uh, out there in those first couple of stints. Uh, and Chaz, is this new experience that you're getting uh, from the team management side, is that good news for teams that you're going to be working with and the TM for that? Is that going to change your <laughs> attitude? Well, I definitely have a whole new level of respect. Or, I mean, not that I felt like I was too um, painful for the teams. Hopefully not. I'm sure they've probably got a different story. But <laughs> it's, um, look, it, you, when you kind of run it yourself and you've got, um, you know, f lesser hands and you're trying to piece together a team, there's a lot of work that goes in the background. I mean, some drivers probably do need a reality check out there when they turn up and something's not right or wrong because um, they're all the guys and, and girls we have in this team, you know, the last three or four nights, it's been so amazing to stay back with them with the team. And just see how many hours go in. I mean, the drivers are generally the first ones to duck off the track, press their body for the big race. But physically, I actually don't know the, the, the guys behind the camera and the girls. You know, they're the real heroes of the day. 
Well, Chaz, we're back here in five days' time, and you'll be have your supercar driver hat on, so I'll hold you to that to make sure that you are the last driver here doing all the work and all the rest <laughs> of it with your race team. How have you dealt with being the slower car in the field, not the car doing the lapping, the car being lapped? How have you dealt with that? It's quite funny. I mean, we're doing, I think, what, 215s, 216s in the GT4 around here in the dry. But to be honest, they feel like they're 202, 203 laps like a GT3. So even though you're lapping a lot slower, you think you would get quite bored out there. The car's still, um, you know, very rewarding and pushing quite hard. And, um, you know, the, probably the difference to the GT4 to GT3 for me is the, the GT4 is probably a more mechanical car. So when you do, you can still slide it a little bit. The car's not going to quite bite you. I think it's, a, you know, a really good young junior car or, or, or an AM car to get involved in. Um, GT3, you've got to, you know, you know, it's like Garf where you, you're around here, you just got to hold your, get your other foot on top of the other foot and keep that throttle down, even though you, you actually want to lift off to create the grip with the arrow. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a different beast, but, but saying that, it, there's still an absolute hoot to drive. Uh, you've got a couple of really impressive young guys with you this weekend behind the wheel, Chaz. Is the, the plan to keep hold of some of them and run them through this program for the year? I would, I would like to, for sure, try and run a, a, a you know a young junior program in GT4, um, and then you know obviously have some some AMs as well, and, and try and help with that type of driver coaching and, and throughout the year. Um, yeah, I challenged myself pretty hard to get here to the biggest race of the year for, for GT cars, but I'm uh, still working on some stuff for the series. Um, yeah, don't have anything locked away there, but I'd love to be running these two cars in the GT4 series this year. Uh, and last one, mate, next week, we've got to look forward to it a little bit. Uh, the Thrifty Bathurst 500, you're back with WAU. Where are you at? How's testing gone? And, and what's your thoughts and feelings going into next weekend? Yeah, testing was um, really great. Obviously got a new engineer this year. Um, that's a really different mindset for me. So um, it's been a long time since I've had a, a different person being married to as an engineer and driver relationship. So um, it, it seemed pretty good on the test day, a lot of positive vibes. But saying that, guys, I'm, I'm that buggered, I can't actually even think that far ahead. I think me and Cam Waters have a, a golf um, duel on Monday, Tuesday, we've decided to do. So if you guys are kicking around and don't have anything done to do, maybe we could have an Ambrose or something. <laughs> nice work. Well done. It's great to see this team here. It's a great addition to the sport. Well done for your role in getting involved and best wishes for the rest of this race and indeed the year. Thank you very much. I just want to say hi to Reese, Andy and the doggos back home. I uh, wish you girls were here with us, um, experienced this, but thanks for all the hard work in the off-season. And also, obviously my parents back home too. So thank you. Nice work, Chaz Mostert. Well done. Method Motorsport, keep an eye on that. You can guarantee that they'll be doing some cool things throughout the year as GT4 evolves here in Australia. 16th on down have cleared off and have done their wave by. And... Oh, no. No, that'll be next lap. That's yeah. eligible. Next lap, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be an adventurous lap. Uh, Ooh, that's yes. actually the first real opportunity to push in the rain, and you've got to make hay while the sun's shining. Well, the sun's not shining anymore, but <laughs> get up the road a little bit because that's your lucky dog opportunity. Yeah, so, like, talk uh, about pioneer. Yeah, talk about adventure into the unknown. Pathfinders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the first one of those, David. So, good guys behind the wheel, though. David Wall is the first of the yep. cars a full lap down. Two times Aussie GT champion and Carrera Cup champion Lee Holdsworth won the great race a couple of years ago. David Russell, who with Mark Sini have got the most starts in the GT3 era of the Bathurst 12 hour. He's been very good in these cars. Paul Tracy, yep, he, goes, he okay. goes okay. Pretty good. So they'll be the ones race waved control by. To safety car, maintain 80 kph. Lights out at normal position. Wave by is entitled from turn 18 this lap, please. Return which, to pit lane this lap. Which will be this lap around. So the lights will go out halfway down Conrod Strait. And then we go racing in the rain for the first time today. When this safety car started, it was it dry. It wasn't raining. Well, the first car into pit lane when this safety car came out was the number 46 of Valentino Rossi. They put slicks on and then changed their mind mid pit stop. And it was a smart move because they would have come straight back in to grab a set of Pirelli wets, so yeah. when that car will and, now restart fifth. When you go back and reflect on your life choices, that's probably a good one you've made there, yeah. I think, to make that decision. It did cost them a little bit of track position pitting as early as they did in car 46, so Raffaele Marciello, fiercely quick Swiss base driver, is in fifth position at the moment behind Maro Engel. So they've got themselves back into the game as well have Mercedes AMG Cooper M Racing at 1.30. And Danny Yunkadella behind the wheel, Craft Bamboo Racing.
they've another team that's played themselves in as the race has gone on and crept up that leaderboard, much like the car in front. Phantom Globe will now find themselves second with the Porsche 1 2. Bastion boost behind the wheel. Uh, just seeing one or two little bits of water running down across the uh, different crowns and uh, nuances of the road guard. You're looking for a different racing line yeah. here, aren't yeah, you? There are. We'll there see are. some what look to be odd lines. There are some some op option racing lines, if you like, in the rain here at Bathurst, and one of them is at the cutting. You run not all the way around the outside or at the go kart line that we, we sort of call it growing up. We all used to drive around the outside of the racetrack. You drive about mid track at the cutting in the same at Forest Elbow. It depends on the car balance. Depends on the type of tyre. Depends on how wet the racetrack is. But I would expect, based on what we saw there on that lap the drivers will go exploring early once we go green. And that green flag is coming, so I've dived into the 44 garage to have a chat with the guys who are doing a really nice job in leading the way right now in the Boisel Pro-Am class. So this team's been together for a little bit of time, Marcel, but it's going really nicely at the moment, but just changes so quickly today. So how are you guys staying on top of that? Well, firstly, they got me out of the car, so I'm really, really pleased with that. So <laughs> Serge has to deal with the rain, but we're just going about doing our business. Um, we're here to have a good time, but at the same time, we're, we're here to compete. We can't seem to shake the, the wall racing guys just yet. It seems like uh, we're going to be racing down to the wire. When you've got a guy like Luke Gilden or even Brad Shields here, here in the garages, it puts a lot of pressure on Serge in the rain. You didn't think about plugging one of the pros in? Oh, we've got a lot of faith in Serge. Um, he'll do a good job. Anyone named Sergio Pirez has to be pretty good in any conditions. Uh, best luck for the finish from here, mate, because this team was really great in Highlands last year, and it's cool to see you guys continuing on and having some good fun. Thank you. Cheers. So we're completely resetting the race now as we're into the second half, Garth, because everything we knew about the relative performance of the cars, that we were just seemingly getting our heads round over the first five and a half, six hours. Um, that's all. Throw that out the window for a little while because we've got proper full wet conditions now. Um, I think it's either it's eased or it's stopping that rain. It hasn't stopped completely. And then we'll get a drive, we potentially we'll get a driving out, the drying out phase, all of which could favor different cars. Yeah, that's correct. So the lucky dog cars making their way past BMW XM safety car. But you're right, John. All the performance indicators that we've had so far are gone. We have absolutely no idea what these cars will do in the wet conditions this weekend because this is the first time they've driven the cars in wet conditions this weekend. So it'll be Matt Campbell, who has done a lap or two around here in the rain, that will lead them back to the line. And he goes very early this time. Bastian Buse goes with him. So two Porsches. One, two, as we go green. These and guys, sorry, John, crazy. both massively experienced in the wet in these cars as well through junior one-make racing, the one-make championships in Carrera Cup, and all the way through Super Cup in Europe. So sailing off into the unknown at the moment with wet conditions and wet weather Pirelli tyres for the first time today, well into the second half of the Repco Bathurst 12-hour. Control, hour. attention all teams. Stewards have imposed a pit lane penalty with a two-minute stop to car two. Oh. Pit lane penalty with a two-minute stop to car two. Driver conduct. So that is Ricardo Feller versus John Hollinger. Car two has a stop-go penalty, two-minute hold. At the top of Mount Panorama. That's what brought that safety car out. That was the contact. Two-minute stop and hold penalty. That is a big one. And that's an SRO. Uh, a penalty pro on arm driver. Rich mentioned it earlier on. It is very much frowned upon. Uh, it might seem draconian, but you have to understand it when there's people out there. Check out, different. check out what's going on right off screen out of the Audi Sport cutting. It was like peak hour in the middle of Bathurst on a rainy, wet day in the middle of winter. They were just tippy towing, trying to get up the hill and negotiate the lap cars as well. And Matt Campbell's just disappeared up the road here. He's going to get to the Race back control, of attention number all 19. Team. Stewards have imposed a pit lane penalty to car 912 for a pit stop breach. Wow, Japan, race leader. Through penalty for car 912. Race leader with a pit lane drive through penalty. So that was a driver change that they did, and they didn't respect the 85 second pit so lane mandatory minimum. Our pit lane crew were right onto that right one. On it. They saw that happen, and we picked up 
the vision of Matt Campbell looking somewhat confused and leaving in a hurry, and it turned out that it was too much of a hurry. So our race leader, who had dominated this race pretty near on 120 laps, will have to serve a drive-through penalty. So that puts it's the number 13 Phantom Global car lead the race. in the lead of the race. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's, the, uh, that's uh, another 992 car as well, of course, the newer version of the, the Porsche. And remind you, that, that particular team in its first race, here's the KFC car coming into the pit lane. Might as well get your Kindle out and start reading a couple of chapters. This two minutes is going to seem much longer than that as it heads towards the penalty box. Ricardo Fella is the driver who has been penalised and he's going to take the pain now, Chad. Yes, he will. So if you are the Mante EMA team, there was a little bit of discrepancy on the, the regs if you had to pit on the first lap that you get told about a penalty, but we've already seen, was it the uh, the 130 got the drive-through and they went a couple laps before coming in? My question here to Garth would be, would you leave them out for the maximum amount of time to try and build as much of a gap to negate just how many spots you'll lose in the traffic here, given that he's got the clean air and no miss? Well, traditionally, yes, that's what you would do. You'd go to the maximum allowable window as we've got one around at the Audi cutting. One of the IRC cars around Paul Tracy is that Paul Tracy that's a leader has that had contact has that damage on the left front guard so really hard to get it done here because it is blind it's literally blind you're relying on the marshals to let you know when it's safe to turn because you obviously cannot see around the corner here this is a very wide angle lens camera oh, nice oh, job Paul Tracy man. he's done that before oh, hang on oh, oh, hang on oh, 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 we praised him too early but that's an old school Luck. IndyCar spin turn that yeah. one Lock up the front wheels. So he stalled it as well now. Yeah. So hopefully he can refire that and get going again. Race control can manage this because yes. they will have the the tracking map of where all the cars are and they're at the BMW elbow at the moment. So they've got plenty of time for Paul to get this recovered. That's timing <laughs> by iPhone. Talking about time. The penalty, yeah. To for Ricardo Fella, who can just sit there and there's nothing he can do. And the point of that, Rich, that you know. There's nothing, there is nothing you can do. They, no, cannot, they cannot touch, touch the, the car, car at all. Correct. Safety car has been called. So that's trapped this car out on the racetrack. So we never got to the answer for Chad Nalon. Do you stay out? The risk is if you do stay out and a safety car comes, you can't come oh. to the lane and you can't serve your penalty. They're coming to the lane now, but this you can't serve your penalty under safety car. No. So I'm not sure what's going on. But why would you be coming to the lane now? You wouldn't otherwise from a competition perspective. Well, no, because they've just done everything they yeah. needed to do. Unless they're going to put some fuel in it. Lots of questions to be answered. We'll try and come up with some answers and yeah. figure them out. But this D one's They did fuel one. the car last when, the, when yeah. they did the driver change. Yeah, they didn't they just did put them up in. They did so, full stop. Yeah. Well, that's a bizarre one. He's going to trundle through pit lane. He's going to have to do it again. So th this is... This is drama here for well, he a car that's dominated. He hasn't stopped at his box. He's driven through. More yeah. to come here. Well, that's, that's a head-scratcher. But remember what we were told by, I think it was Shear down in the lane, that they struggled to get Matt's radio plugged in. And Chan had to go back and help him to do that. Ha, do we have some kind of communications issue? Because they had plenty of time to say stay out there. Well, it would have had to be intermittent because he wouldn't have otherwise known about the penalty. Yeah. Because ah, the, good point. The, the radio was so very strange. Like, Matt Campbell knows you can't serve penalties under safety car, and he knew they would have been under safety car because he had the, the full course yellow limiter engaged. So still curious to know what's going on with that one. The net result of all of it is that we have a new race leader and it's Bastian Boos in car 13, which is the Phantom Global Racing Porsche, which is a brand new race team. They have never raced before in this iteration. Run out of Porsche China, Timo Bernhard's Team 75 helping out behind the scenes. They started well outside the top 10. They have chipped away and chipped away all day and they now find themselves leading the Repco Bathurst 12 hour with 
a little over five hours to go. In second place is Craft Bamboo Racing with Daniel Yucadella behind the wheel. Mara Engel in third for Mercedes AMG Grupa M Racing. Uh, so that's another team that has recovered from a drive-through penalty early on today was Grupa M. And this is just how Paul Tracy had his moment at the Audi Sport cutting. Shay. Mantha thought that was penalty served, and they are currently discussing it with no. the officials, but no, that was not. And Race Control came over and said, you guys still owe us a drive-through. That's not what we consider serving the drive-through because it was yellow. Yeah, and it was yellow well before. It's not as if they'd committed. You, you, you might have a case, Garth, if, you've, if you're in the lane and you've committed to the lane as the safety car is called because that at that point you have to drive yeah. across the grass no, not to come in that's right and the yeah. safety car was out well, the safety car had been called when maddie was on the braking zone in the chase yeah so um may have just tried a swift one there Mento ema but they'll have to come back through when we go back green and give up another bunch of real estate real drama for the car that's been dominating so far It's a genuine head, head scratcher for mine. Uh, we that's, we that's have a, all got furrowed brows. A <laughs> series of unfortunate events that entirely convinced should have happened. But I genuinely second guessed myself yeah, there. Yeah, same. You're positive. No, nope, you cannot do serve a penalty under safety well, car. It defeats the purpose of having a penalty, doesn't it? So logic dictates that it serves under green. Yeah, that's a strange one. So right now. That little two or three pit lanes dropped them to six on the road, but they'll have to serve that under green when we go back to green flag conditions. The other news is it's not raining anymore, by the yeah. way. So that shower has passed, at least at this point, and you would expect the track now to dry. So unfortunately, the flick spin has not been effective in getting the 702 IRC GT back underway. There was a bit more of contact than I'd realised with that car, to yeah, be honest, Jensen. I, the front clip sort of at a funny angle. Yeah. You can see the top of the front tyre. I, I, I just wonder if there's maybe a little more damage. Yeah. Pulled well, the, when he pulled did the serpentine belt off or something well, like that. Well, he did the spin turn and got going and then it stalled. And if you rem remember yesterday in the practice session, that car had an alternator issue. So yeah. I do wonder whether maybe it won't fire because there's not enough voltage in the car. Here's Porsche going to plead their case. I don't like their chances, as Paul Martin, He's long been the supercars operations manager in pit lane, the point of contact for the teams. So there's nothing that he hasn't heard before, teams trying to get out of penalties. No, 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 no. What, what they're seeing is we have to come, we were told we have to come at the, at the first time, uh, at, at the first possible opportunity. That's what he said right now, I'll guarantee it. Chad. Yeah, just reading through uh, some of the regulations, which I know Rich would have access to up there, so maybe he can have a little flick through and see if I'm missing anything. But I reckon the argument that they could be making down there at the moment is that, uh, as far as I can see, there's nothing actually in the regulations under 3.4 penalties that says you can't serve it under a safety car. It just says you've got to do it in three laps. Have a flick through, Rich, and tell me if I'm missing I'm, something here. I'm in there now. Thank you, Chad. Page 14, if you're wondering. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I also wonder whether it's a more global, in the more global FIA rulebook, rather than just the sporting regs of this event. Um, the the rulebook is out in hand there yep, as well. Yep. yep. Hey, so look, if there's a way to get out of it, you'll, you'll do everything you can mm. to find a way out, for sure. And that's what Mante EMA are trying to do right now. It's, it's in the Motorsport Australia standing regulations, yeah, yeah. not necessarily. I think they've read the event. Yep. supplementary regulations and uh, the standing regs from Motorsport Australia are that it must be served under green flag conditions. No, it's, a, it's a global FIA yeah, rule. Totally. It's, yep. it's not like it's just a, an Aussie rule only. 7.1, they can check it if they like. <laughs> and that's exactly what Paul Martin will be telling them now. He's heard all of them before. So, interesting times at Mount Panorama, just for something completely different. As the Repco Bathurst 12 hour continues, Bastion boosts the race leader. 
Well, Ronald McDonald House Charities are the official charity partner for the Repco Bathurst 12-hour this year. And they've got a wonderful setup outside the track to come and check out. If you're here this weekend, I've actually come down and I found Grant Denny down here as well. He's done a lot of great work with McDonald's over the years. First, let's chat about the charity and the great work that they do. Well, first of all, $5 from every coffee goes straight to the charity, Ronald McDonald Excellent. House. And you think about the wonderful work they do for, for, for kids who need critical care, you know, in a moment of sheer desperation in their life when times are tough. It's a place where them and their families can go and receive the care they need, but also remain as a family unit because that's the most important thing. You know, when a child's going through the trauma of receiving some potentially life-saving care or indeed some treatment, you know, they, they need to have their families around. So it's an environment where they can all live together and receive the care they have. And out here in the Central West, it's, it's, it's so important because we also take care of all of our brothers and sisters that work in all the farming communities far out west. So they, they absolutely depend on this resource. Resource. And, and they're the farming families that put food on our table, breakfast, lunch and dinner. So we've got to look after the, our, country, our country brethren. I like that. We're going to be looking after the commentary team with some coffees as well this weekend, which is great news for us. So five bucks for a coffee down here at the McCafe. The proceeds are going to go to that wonderful charity as well. And there's something for the kids, both little and big over here as well, Grant. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. With a special guest on the swing right now as well. Talk about the Bathurst locals. We've got Grant down here. We've got Brad Schumacher who looks right at home. Tell you what, mate, why don't you go on that one? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm going to come around the back here. I'm going to give Grant a little push. Here we go. Nearly got taken out by Brad. So there you go. Come down and grab a five dollar coffee. Whee! And, and that could be the smile on your face down here. <laughs> Five bucks, come and grab one. <laughs> it looks like twins. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And all of a sudden, it's clearing up here. Uh, I thought the rain was easing. It's still wet on the track. I, I tell you what, a couple of laps, the way these Pirelli la uh, wet tyres clear water and with a bit of heat, it's still overcast at the moment. Um, you might have people scrambling back for the pit lane. It, it's not there right now. Uh, and Manti, EMA, taking a little flyer with uh, Matt Campbell in the pit lane and did his drive through. You'd be brave and bold to put slicks on now, but you can see already at the kink yeah. that there is something of a, I'm not going to call it dry, let's dry go with moist, less moist line yeah. evolving there at the kink. So. It will dry very rapidly, and these Pirellis move an enormous amount of water out of the way. A, a few moments ago, there was a, a conversation going on. The gentleman with the glasses who was doing, uh, putting Porsche's cases, Thomas Loudenbach, uh, and he is the head of Porsche Motorsport, and he was fairly forcefully putting his case with Rulebook in hand there, Garth. So... With, this is not team manager, this is head of Porsche Motorsport. Yeah, but that doesn't make any difference if it's a rule. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> so uh, That's how seriously Porsche yeah. and EMA. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's great to see how serious Porsche taking this race. And clearly they've been the form dominant car so far in this one. So it's still plenty to play out. The weather's hanging around. It wouldn't be Bathurst without a few curveballs. Curve balls or top spin googling. Well, so I'm not sure. I think there's sliders, curve balls, all it? sorts going on at the moment. It's all happening. Real shame to see that car out. Mm. Paul Tracy, it was great to come and spend some time in the box with you guys early this morning after the first stint. And they'd worked their way up to the lead of that class by not having any incidents. So that that will be really disappointing for them. Well, the invitational class is going to be. Whoever gets on the podium is whoever finishes Just at the gets moment. to the end, that's Correct. right. Yeah. If you get to the end, you're probably going to get a trophy. It's been quite a war of attrition there so far. Just It's easy to get bogged down in regulations, but to simplify it for you, there are two sets of regulations. One, the Motorsport Australia regulations that govern all of motorsport in Australia. So they apply for this event, and then there's the event-specific ones, which sort of tack on above that as well but the FIA-approved Motorsport Australia standing regulations that every race meeting in this country is covered by are what I reckon they're arguing about because they would have had the ones for the event on hand, no problems, but the domestic rules for Australia are slightly different elsewhere, slightly different elsewhere, and uh, that's what they would have been arguing. That's an inventive solution to get the TV going up on the scaff at the top of the hill. Well, I'm, I'm not aware, Quill, so even in... Uh, SRO. We haven't mentioned it. This is the opening round of the international uh, competition, intercontinental GT yeah. 
challenge for SRO. But I'm not aware of any differences in the SRO regulations. We, we mentioned the contact rule, which is an SRO. Stefan Mattel, who's here, by the way, looking debonair and dapper as ever. But that rule is in the Bathurst 12-hour specific regulations as well right. as the SRO regs. So, yeah, you're right. But there's nowhere in the world where you can serve a drive through penalty under a safety car. It's, it's not a thing because it defeats the purpose of being penalised or it minimises it at the very least. So the net result is that this guy is going to have to serve a drive through penalty and lose 32 seconds plus pit in and pit out under green flag conditions once this race restarts. And then he's just going to have to do Matt Campbell things to try and make it all back up again. Oh, there's still five hours to go in this one. And you made the point earlier, John, that it looks to be drying a little bit. And there is a dry line forming. forming. And I would think that if we were under green conditions now, we would have a dry line on the racetrack. Yep, so it's not going to take long at all. So there's going to be another round of pit stops. There's going to be all sorts of things that potentially go sideways there. So they are opportunities to get yourself back in the game. When things go sideways, if you play it right, you can get yourself back in the game. So there's not, it's not the end of the world for the 912. It's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. And you know what? They've taken a flyer on it. If it had come off, then they would have minimised the loss of time. They're not going to lose that much more. The field's going to be packed up. They'll be able to get back around, uh, pick off some of the other cars and work their way back through. I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee that car will be back in, in with a shout uh, be up before too long. And they'll be calculating that. Just remember, they can't do anything else to the car when they come through, so they can't change back the slick tyres or anything like that. Five hours to go. Supercars Season 2024. A lot has been learnt. A lot has changed. And we've got a lot to look forward to. It starts with the Bathurst Superfest. Following the Bathurst 12 hour, it's time to kick off the new season at the thrifty Bathurst 500. Brace yourself for another great race, Australia. It is showtime. This year, a new champion will be crowned. Take your pick. It could be anyone's. Who gets the job done today? Ticket information can be found at supercars.com. Supercars, unforgettable. The new supercar season, it starts next week here at Mount Panorama, the Thrifty Bathurst 502, 250 kilometre races, plus two top 10 shootouts as well to set the grid for it. Nothing like a Bathurst top 10 shootout in a supercar. Looking forward to that. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a new champion this year, Ford Mustang versus Chevy Camaro. The racing's going to be great. And if it continues on the way it ended last year, where we had some surprise winners, Garth Tander in those closing couple of rounds, it could be a really exciting way to start this year's Repco Supercars Championship. Yeah, certainly can't wait for that one. Picking up hostilities here at Mount Panorama for round one of the championship. It's time to have a roll in the hay, Rich. <laughs> just, as, just a bit of a reset. A bit busy at the moment, Garth. I'm yeah, sorry. Just roll in the hay. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from Jack Perkins in pit lane. Yeah, thanks, Garth. I thought I'd just update you on the track temperature. So before the rain, we had 38 degrees, and now it's at 26. That's still relatively warm for these conditions. So we need to start thinking about the, the crossover lap time when you go from wets back to slicks. And in supercar land, it's around about 2 minutes 18. So you might like to expand on that, Garth. Yeah, 2 minutes 18 for a supercar is the transition time. What do you reckon here, lap time here? Probably, yeah, probably 16, 15, 16 yeah. would be the, the crossover. Um, but Jack's point is is valid that it's very, very warm, and even you can see visually how much drier, how, one, how wet it got during this safety car, but now how much it's drying out under that same safety car. And the track will dry even more quickly once the cars get back up to racing speed. The other good news just through all of this, so there was one question mark over the penalty, which was car 912. Car two, however, had that two minute stop and hold. They're okay because they did that under green. Yeah. And then this safety car has been perfectly timed to get them back to the back of the queue. And they're still on the lead lap of the race. So they're going to be all right. The other news is, is that from Matt Stone Racing, just heard from Slade Perrins, who's the team media boss down there. And they're working to get that car back on the road. Yeah. Supercast Racing IRC GT. 
which is great news for them. Shay. I've just done a little bit of investigating, guys, because we do have a pro-am category. And yes, they can win the race overall, as we've seen happen in the past, but they have their own set of rules that they are trying to abide to right now, i.e. a bronze driver that must get 60 minutes worth of drive time in the second half of the race. Well, we have just had 60 minutes uh, elapse in the second half of the race, and one of our bronze drivers is very near meeting that time. Ian James has about 15 more minutes to do in the 27 Mercedes, the heart of racing with SPS performance, then he's done. Whereas the other two cars in category, namely the 88, where uh, Prince Ibrahim has to get back behind the wheel, and the number 911, Yasser Shaheen, has to get back behind the wheel of that car, neither of them have fulfilled that one hour minimum. So we are going to see the 27 with two pro drivers, Alex Roberis and Ross Gunn, for the remainder of this race after about another 15 minutes has elapsed. That's a really good point, Shay, that you make in the Boisel Pro-Am class battle. That the bronze drivers do need to do an hour of drive time after the second or in the second half of the race. So that sets them up really nicely. And remember, if a Pro-Am car stays on the lead lap, put a pro driver in at the end, they become as outright a contender as anybody else. So Alessio Piccarello behind the wheel of 911 at the moment, their fifth outright. But Yasser Shahin still to drive. And the same for car 88, who sits ninth outright. So potentially hard of racing in with a really good shout. Put their fast drivers in, their properly fast drivers in at the end. And they'll be an outright contender for this one as we confirm the Pirelli leaderboard all the way down to the bottom end of the top 20. So you can see cracking in to the top 20 for the first time today. Marcus Flack behind the wheel of the Method Motorsport McLaren leading the GT4 class. Invitational, who wins Invitational today is absolutely anyone's guess because at the moment it's still showing 702 as the leader because they had so many laps up their sleeve from everyone else and it's an endurance race. If the race stopped now, they'd still have the most laps. Whether they'd be classified or not would then be a massive argument. But this, until they get passed by another car in terms of laps completed, they stay where they are on the leaderboard. Um, and as we thought, there was some damage to the front because there was fluid that had come out of that car and there's a bit of dry compound being put down there. BMW XM in the pit lane and for the first time it's Bastian Boos who has to decide when to go and he goes about halfway down the hash marks before Murray's corner stays away from the inside line, finding the grip from the... Wet weather Pirelli ties, that's a smart restart. That means he won't be bothered into turn one, Garth, he can pick his line. Oh, and he's picked a slightly wetter line than he wanted, and he's gone sideways. And that's going to cost him time up Mountain Straight. Has it cost him the lead already? It has. Uh, not yet, but he's defending hard from Danny Giancadella for the run up Mountain Straight. I was about to say that Boos had done his homework because he put the car exactly where you needed to put it at the final corner. You need to run it up the middle of the grid boxes and as soon as you leave the last corner, it comes straight back to the middle of the track. So he has done his wet weather research prior to coming to Bathurst. He is a properly talented young man, just 20 years of age, but already the reigning Porsche Super Cup champion. One mate Porsche Racing's pinnacle last year. He knows how to wheel one of these 911s. That was the moment at turn one. His uh, Porsche family teammate, not direct teammate, Piccarello a little bit wide. The question now is, was when does Matt Campbell peel off? So he'll have a couple of laps to serve that penalty, but he's currently up in fifth position. It's a big wag of the tail from Raffaele Marcello in car 46. Stewards have imposed a pit lane penalty to car 44 for a pit stop breach. And a pit stop breach for our silver class leader, so Sergio Perez behind the wheel. We just heard from Marcel Zalua in the lane about how trouble-free their day had been. All of a sudden, the uh, iron hand of Motorsport Australia race control comes down on them for a pit stop regulation Would breach. To car nine for a pit stop breach. And car nine, Lee Holdsworth so will visit the lane. Both those breaches for... A safety car, two safety cars ago. Yes. And because we didn't yeah, have time to get all the penalties out, and that was for going through the red light at the end of pit lane. So they've been caught out with that one. It's just taken that long to process it all because we went straight back under safety car. Here's Matt Campbell. He's got a run on Raffaello Martiello. So does, do we reset the three laps that he's got to commit no. at the end of the safety no, car? I don't think so. I don't think... Really? So it's just so if he had one lap on the I mean, green before, he's, he's then got. If I'm doing, if now I'm coming now yeah. straight away, so you don't get caught out again. 
here we go. He's coming to the lane. So, because that's what caught him out last time. They did that extra lap. So, into the lane. Massive commitment on entry for Matty Campbell, as you'd expect. Because when the number two car came in to serve their penalty, it was as the safety car peeled off. They jammed straight into pit lane and got it out of the way early. So there was that lap, one more, and then this was the lap that Matt Campbell had to pit. So transit down pit lane at 40 kilometres an hour. It's a 33-second transit, so he's going to tumble down the leaderboard to the bottom end of the lead lap. That releases March Yellow in the 46 car. Engel third, Jukadella first. Boost continuing to lead 1.7 seconds. He gained over that first lap. That's under green flag conditions. And there's Campbell out of pit exit. So the leader's going up the hill into the cutting. Campbell exiting turn one. And he's tumbled all the way down to 15th position. Shay Adam on the intercom channel in the background posed a very good question to me that this is potentially the first time that Raffaello Marciello has driven this car in the wet at all. Because remember, he's made the switch from AMG Mercedes to BMW. Probably would not have tested in the wet at all in the lead up to this one. So he'll be learning on the run what ABS setting to run, what traction control setting to run, what is the turbocharged engine's characteristic in the wet. The other guy that's going to be fun to watch is this guy, Cameron Waters. They haven't been particularly happy with the raw car speed of triple two in the dry, but in the wet, it could be a very different story. So let's keep an eye on Cam. They're up to six outright at the moment. That got my attention as well, Rich. His Waters now looking up the inside of Picarello. Doesn't get the job done at Forest Elbow. So that's hampered his run down Conrod Strait for Waters, who now has comes under the attention of Lucas Stoltz. Ranges up side by side, and does he get by? Yes, he does. So Waters goes from the attack to the defend and loses a spot. Watch for Haza behind. Experience here. Well, Stoltz is really wide. Just on that outside line past the kink. Picariello going along nicely in 9-1-1. That's the red and white shell Porsche. And peeling off into the lane is Raffaele Marciello. So he abandons out of this. And 46 pit lane drive through penalty yeah. crossing, crossing the blend line at the exit of pit lane. Man, the unforced <laughs> errors in this race today. They are throwing curveballs. He's going to end up exactly where he was. Before this, on the restart, Dysick with Matt Campbell, who's just served his drive-through penalty. So, and also, we've got a pit lane drive-through for the number 25 car as well. Method Motorsport McLaren for safety car procedure as well. Nice debris flying around up there at turn two, as well as the GT4 Merc jumps out the way. Tim Bilski, well, he'll assume the lead in class when Flack takes his drive-through. And that's the first little faux pas for that team today yeah, as well. They've been otherwise really nice and smooth and controlled. Uh, Alessio Piccarello, first time at Mount Panorama. He has been super impressive this weekend, getting up to speed, and especially in these conditions. You expect people like Maro Engel to be really good because he's got so many miles here. Luca Stolz as well in all kinds of conditions. And Luca in 2022 in these cars in the wet was really good. But Piccarello's doing well. And they're keeping car 911 in the mix in the knowledge that Yasser Shahim will jump into that car at some point between now and the chequered flag. And then it will be up to Harry King. Actually, Piccarello hasn't done that many laps in that car today, so it may well be him at the end. We're not far away from that point of starting to work backwards from hour 12. So now, starting to see the effect of what tyre pressures teams decided to run the wet tyre at. Because remember when the teams put the wets on, it was hosing down with rain, so you would have the tyre pumped up. Now it's dried out in a rapid rate, so you don't want as much pressure in the tyre. So teams having to adjust on the hop, they didn't have a lot of time to adjust. They literally had to throw the wets at the car for the conditions at the time. But the cars you can now see starting to really move around on the blocks, on the wet weather tread pattern. And you'll be 
starting to think about, starting to have the discussion about when do you put the slick tyre back on. Morrow's under some pressure here in that group of M car in third place. Cirello looking quite aggressive, trying to work his way past an angle, defending, driving down the inside. He'll claim it's trying to find water, <laughs> keep the tyres cool, but we all know that's not the truth. Chad. The awkward thing about the tyres going off is that you need the car to get in the fuel window because you could just come in and change tyres only, not have to do the full 85 seconds. That would be one way of handling it, but then similarly, you'd rather just get the fuel into it as well and get the full 85 second stop out of the way as the 911 goes to the outside. It's an extra complexity to think about. You wouldn't just come in and get rid of the tyres if you could. Uh, and the other thing to remember is, yes, we put wet weather tyres on, but we haven't put wet weather settings on these cars. Oh, close. Oh. Engel again covering his line. Piccarella trying to find every which way past, and that's got Lucas Stoles in this. He's got some serious energy about it at the moment. And Engel struggling relative to the Porsche and the other AMG behind. But it's single lane stuff at the top of the mountain. That's a really good question Chad poses. Yeah. So 14 laps since they last had a, a pit stop in these cars. But so, really four green laps. Correct, correct, exactly right. So they've theoretically got a lot of fuel range still to go in these cars. So do you take the risk of diving in to put a slick tyre on without, and you can just do the tyres, no driver change, no fuel, but you don't have to do the 85 seconds mandatory pit stop time. Who rolls the dice? Yeah, well, that's, that's the it. question. It's going to literally be a roll of the dice because you could say, oh, well, you leave the wets on because it might rain again, but if you torture the wet here in these drying conditions, the wet's no good to you anyway. So you might as well come and have got the slick. So Look you can up. see the dry line, it's coming, and just the way the cars are moving, they're really slimy, they're moving around on the tread block. So there's no real water to go looking for offline because it's all gone because of the warm conditions here. Oh, Piccarello just <laughs> they side by side there. Just took a little step back at that moment. If you're outside the 10, if you're the silver class car of David Wall, Jack LeBrock's yeah. got the talent to do it, you're them, you probably think about rolling the dice and be a bit of a pioneer because the net Steve result Holdsworth is that you, you could have a massive gain out of it. Holdsworth. I think that's for the penalty. Yeah, uh, for that yeah, Sorry, Sorry. So apologies. They're taking their drive through penalty. You can just see yeah. there. Holdsworth leaving the lane. Stolz trying to go around the outside at one. It's a great battle. <laughs> Third, fourth and fifth. Four track position. Oh. Change of position here. Triple two. Dicing on. And that's Jamie Wincup getting up the inside of Cam Waters. Supercar race yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> a couple of old stages going at it there. Cam will appreciate that. As Piccarello, Piccarello to the outside at Griffins. Sails around the outside and they'll be wheel to wheel on the run up to the King and the Porsche this nice time will have track position. Nice move. Here comes Stolp. Does he get oh, in there? Not oh. there. <laughs> not there. <laughs> that, that had disaster written all over it in capital letters. It's a repeat of the BMW. Just the two quicker cars doing it. Big move for a Picciarello. Nice job to hang on the outside at two, which gave him the inside for the run to the cutting. Here, how much they're off the throttle, rolling the car through the corner rather than loading the tyre. Looks to me like Engel has got the higher tyre pressure. That car's really struggling with comparison to Lucas Stoltz. If you compare Mercedes v Mercedes. Boost, meanwhile, out in front for Phantom Global, 1.9 seconds. Cleared away. Jumpadilla trying to chase him. To get a bit of a lap time comparison from Piccarello. Now he's in some clean air and has been able to dispatch Maro Engel. See what that car can do. The Porsches have been really good over a race run so far today. And now Lucas Stoles is looking racy. Sun Energy One Racing, defending champions of this event last year and the year prior, looking for a three-peat. Lucas Stoles has won those races with this team. He's behind the wheel of the car we're watching. We're on board with Maro Engel, looking backwards. A couple of Mercedes AMG stars duking it out. One little milestone we have missed in this one is that we're 167 laps into this race. Ah. So a thousand Ks has been and gone, that 161 milestone. We're well into the second thousand Ks of this race now. 
Stoles continues to find a way past that. Bastion Bruce leads by 1.3 seconds. Daniel Lucadella from Craft Bamboo Racing second. Alessio Piccarello for Manti EMA. That's the Pro-Am car. And class leader next. These two go side by side. Can Stoll still a repeat? Oh, That's contact. Naughty. Almost trading paint at the top of the rise on Mountain Straight. Engel with a driving line. Return serve under the braking zone before Griffin's bend and holds on. Where's the head of Mercedes Motorsport right now? Have his head, hands, his head in his hands. Those two banging wheels up Mountain Straight into the braking zone into turn two. I just had a quick look at the lap times for the previous completed lap because we were starting to wonder what's the crossover time. Wets to slicks. And our race leader, Bastian Boos, a 16.5. Danny Yunkadella a 16.0. So we thought it was going to be around the 16s. So they're there now. So it becomes a strategy play. The track's probably ready, but does it fit the strategy at hand right now? One driver way belong below that crossover. I'll come back to that because this is pretty wild. <laughs> Burrow angle left, Lucas Stoll's right. Way to undersell it, Rich. <laughs> well, <laughs> right there as well. Expectations. <laughs> yeah, it's the one at the hub that gets me. This on board with Burrow. Luca just got such good drive out of that corner. And a little and bit a of good side, side draft. Run. Yeah, right there at the rear quarter. Your car just gets sucked along. But then it works for Maro. When Luca gets the run right there, that's why Maro was fighting to stay there, because it works for him. Came out into the middle of the road just enough to so he didn't have to pinch that corner too much. It's got keep fighting written yeah, on the dash that. of Maro. I, saw that earlier. I think he's just looking at that every 20 seconds, going, okay, okay. Because he's oh, oh God, big moments for both, they both cars. That moment. They were both sideways and it hasn't cost either of them. It is costing both of them well, that time wise, but not position. So Mark Engel defends into the final corner. Stoltz trying the crossover move, but that's not going to work this time. Uh, look what that's doing to that gap between them and the chasing cars. That is extraordinary that they're fighting and losing so much time. Oh, it's no. exacerbated by the fact they can't get the power down. Oh, the rear tyre. Oh, God. God. Lucas Stoltz is just gone, yeah. and we know that Mara Engel's probably gone more. So he didn't even turn in to Hell Corner there. The rear just danced its way around the corner. Stoltz just held the steering wheel straight. <laughs> so the reason they're hanging on, folks, is because they're trying to get as far into this pit stop sequence as they possibly can. The other driver I just wanted to talk about had a drive through penalty, was 35 seconds from the lead. He's now ninth, 21 seconds from the lead. Matt Campbell on last time round was three and a half seconds a lap quicker than the cars in front of him. So Matt Campbell flying in the former race leading Porsche. Fortune favors the brave and there are brave people in the pit lane right now feeling that the crossover point is this moment. We have slick Pirelli tires going on to the number two MPC Audi. That car still receiving service and actually getting a little bit of uh, ice, dry ice getting put in the side of the car. So Ricardo Fellow should get extra cool on this stint. The 48 M Motorsport Mercedes, they are going on to shiny sticker new Pirelli tires. That's relevant, stick with me now. If we go further up the pit lane directly across from me are both the triple eight and the 27 mercedes both of those cars have scrubbed pirellis to go on the car that should be a little bit less harsh going out on what is still a very damp circuit thanks shay great point uh, if i'm a race car driver i want scrubbed tires, scrubbed tires not, yeah. not brand new shiny green tires so that is a relevant point that shay makes the tyre that you put on the car is relevant. Whether there's two types of slicks, the brand new ones are very lightly used ones, and you would want the scrubbed one. It just comes up to temperature that little bit nicer, less slippery in these changeable conditions. I'm reminded by uh, Daniel Priest that nobody races harder against each other as the factory AMG <laughs> drivers do, and he's right, actually. He's just reminded me of uh, Raffaele Marciello when he was still with the AMG versus Mauro Engel at the Nürburgring last year. That was incredible. Michel Gounon versus Mauro Engel here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Full elite, yeah. almost for the win. I don't yeah. think it's exclusive to no. Mercedes AMG. I've been in the middle of a few <laughs> Audi factory driver fights. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't think it's exclusive to one brand, let's put it that way. They've all got the same toys, they just want to win. So we'll keep an eye out on the cars that have just stopped. So Ricardo Feller, a bit of a pioneer. Car number two. Here goes Lucas Stolz again, looking to the outside. The triple eight of Brock Feeney is in the lane. So another 
of our front runners rolling the dice and coming to the lane for slick tyres. Let's hear from Jack. Yeah, it's all happening down here in the Sun Energy One garage. But I'm here with the Mayor of Bathurst, Jess Jennings. You've got an exciting announcement about Kenny and Bull joining Bathurst City Council. Absolutely. Uh, we've uh, accepted and uh, asked uh, Kenny to be an ambassador of Bathurst, and we're absolutely delighted to have him. It's really cool when Kenny comes to Australia. The only place he calls home is on Conrod Strait, so he's actually a resident. He, actually, yeah, he is a resident and uh, he's a local, just like uh, all of us here who live here 365 days a year. There's a lot of uh, drivers and fans who have uh, Bathurst as their spiritual home, and uh, Kenny's gone that step extra to make it his physical home. So we are delighted to have him and have him as an ambassador for Bathurst and Mount Panorama. Very good. Let's watch on and see if he can get three in a row. Yeah, fingers crossed. Thanks, mate. I saw the Bathurst City Council stickers actually on the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw that. I thought, oh, that's Filled cool. Of, there yeah. it is. It's on the in car. So that's cool of Kenny to do that. Didn't yeah. realise that the city was giving him the keys to the city. <laughs> uh, by the way, credits to GT here. 2.16, he said, was the crossover time. Guess what times we're doing now. So now in the 16s. The, the question will be what will the cars that have just gone out on slicks do on their first couple yeah. of laps while they're trying to generate some tyre temperature. And it will be a case for a while that if you go half a car width offline, you might be in some peril. This battle will continue, speaking of peril. And Maro Engel peels off and Jamie Winkup follows. So Winkup's been a big... Oh, Engel, Winkup, they're the... both in the grass. I was so close to saying you've got to be so careful when it's <laughs> dry on the racetrack and wet on pit lane because you can get caught out. Two of the best. There you go. You're wow. nailing the calls today so much they preempted <laughs> yeah. you on that one. <laughs> so... And in comes Matt Campbell as well out of seventh position. So he dragged that car from more than 35 seconds off the lead to 21. Have a look. There you go. Have a go at the spray in the braking zone. Spray still coming out of the guards. Maro Angle. Uh-oh. Jamie Winkup's thinking, I'm just going to break where Maro does. Yeah. He follows him in. Yeah. <laughs> and they both go through the grass. He won't get it wrong. He'll be <laughs> fine. He knows what he's doing. And ironically, they pit basically adjacent to each other at the Merck end of pit lane. So Angle, Winkup, Campbell, Waters in as well for Scott Taylor Motorsport. So they're going to go to slicks on that car as well. Manti EMA going to work. So the first car in to put the slick on was Ricardo Fella in the number two Audi. So that's the one we need to keep an eye on. Like he had to make up some track position as well from that penalty. But as a outright competitor, that was the first car to come get slicks. So when these cars leave the lane, how close will that be to that car? We well, just look at the middle sector last time round. 36-3 for Fella across the top of the mountain versus Marciello was a 36 and a bit as well. Yeah. So basically borderline now. Well, there you go, car for car, half yeah. to the 39.2 in the other Audi. So three seconds across the top of the mountain for a slick tyre. The AMG fleet leaves pit lane. Heart slick tyre equipped. Heart racing Ian Jams in the pit lane as well. This is for the race lead. Yeah. So Daniel Juncadella has got to the back of Bastion Boos. And Porsche versus Mercedes, not for the first time in this race at this place. Not for the last time today, I don't think either. I guarantee you that for a fact. Official oh, margin point two. Oh, Look at boost. boost. That in. thing's moving around. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not using coming. those tyres anymore. Now, do they fall for the same trick that we saw Maro Engel? No, the radio call went out, I think. Yeah. Careful on pit entry. That's smart play. They're both into the lane. So how does that play out for the cars that have just come to the lane? taken on their slick tyres on left versus these two one lap later. The overcut worked this morning, slick tyre versus slick tyre. How does it work wet tyre versus slick tyre? 2.12 for Ricardo Fella last time around. So that's a good couple of seconds yeah. advantage on that lap alone. 46 in as well. Picarello stayed out in the 9.11 Porsche. Okay, sharing with Yasser Shikin and Harry King, and a driver change going on here at Phantom Global. So this rejoin, we're gonna get almost cleansed the running order with everyone on a slick tire and get an idea of who stands where as we continue to charge the finish. So this is the driver change down at Sun Energy One Racing. The team name is 75 Express. Can he set up his own race team to run the program now? and that is a slick Pirelli P0 tyre. Great news that Pirelli back on board with this event for 2028. 
global partner of GT3 Racing. And this is the interesting one. So, oh, oh and it, that's the Super no. Glass Racing Matt Stone car. They just got this car back on the road. I just saw it in the background leaving pit lane. Oh, there's Angle. Angle. It's just all went, happening again. Just went to Sleeks. So there's going to be another safety car here. So Hollinger finds himself, well, it's Cam Hill, I think, at the wheel of that car at the, the end of Mountain Straight. This is going to work for 911. Yes. From a safety free, car, yes. they're going to free pit stop. Well, he's still, got to, he's still got to be in there for 85 seconds. Uh, 85 yeah, seconds. but the rest of the field's doing 8 now. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. The, the rest of the trains on the Scarlettric set doing the same speed. Whereas if you did it under green, everyone's at full race speed. So there it is. The 911. Double yellows being waved at the incident as the safety car being called. We can see the XM. Everybody's on the 80k limits now. 911's on Conrod, if not a little bit further around, so they can oh, wow. peel off very wow. quickly. So let's just have a look what's happened here. Oh, you can't stop oh, it. No, no, it's, there's been an issue there with that car. I wonder if that's a hangover from yeah, the Yeah, I think so. Cam Hill's experienced enough to know not go out of pit lane and not take it easy at turn two. So that car hasn't turned after his steering input. So right. a real shame for that team. Did a great job to get it rebuilt and back out there. There is Picarello. So this is a car that... So he's in the chase, isn't he? Yeah, coming yep. into the yeah. chase. Yet, yet to stop to put slick tyres on out of that whole leading group. They were the only one that stayed out one extra lap. How far ahead is he? Brake pad, Brake pad change for the Audi. Interesting. So it's not mandatory this year. No. He's been, they've been in the lane for a long time. He's counting up over two minutes now. So Can Picarello get in and out without losing the lead here? Don't. Uh, uh, really five seconds? Shitty. I'll pull back to you on that one if you don't mind. Please hold call up. Yep, thank you. Jackson yep. Evans well, is the next car through. Jackson Evans is coming through metal great now. Yeah. Wow. Well, the, the on, timing saying building. the gap is two minutes. Well, there's uh, Jackson uh, Evans. At this speed. At this speed. So Which is fine. Yes. Uh, he's in and out. No problem. He's got with, with change. Yeah. With free, change. <laughs> this isn't a free pit stop. They're, they're getting some bonus <laughs> as well. This is, yes, it's the roll of so dice pit, today. So pit one, get one free. Yes. So Mante EMA, we praised them for their strategy with the 912 car. Yep. And this car, remember, was backwards in the gravel trap at a Villamy, lap, lap. a lap down. Yeah. And through this phase of the race, it's going to come out of pit lane in this one with an advantage outright in the lead. <laughs> uh, extraordinary. XM is back on the track. And this car could still be leading when it comes back out. Full Nick. service for the Pro-Am Porsche 991 version of the venerable 911. Oh, that's such a good shot. Oh, love it. Probably left actually pretty casually just to make sure they don't breach the 85 second. There's no need to have it right up shotgun under the throat because Where's you've, Jackson got, Evans? you've got room to spare. Where's Jackson Evans on the GPS tracker? Somewhere on Conrod at yeah, the moment. He's miles, stuck miles Stuck in the behind. dead spot in Conrod. So he, at 80k an hour, that's half a lap. <laughs> the, you <laughs> know, the better the art that you are, the, and the more you prepare, the luckier you the get. The better you are, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, that that is absolute quality. Jackson Evans, not even down to the right-hander. What it does do is put Yasushik in behind the wheel. He has to do One hour. 60 minutes of the race yeah. in the second half of the race as a bronze driver in the Pro-Am class car. So remember, it can race outright, it can win outright, and it would win both trophies, and he'd go home with two boy cell watches. However, <laughs> however, he has to deal with Jackson Evans, yeah. Maximilian Goetz, Jules Gounon, Mick Grenier, Ricardo Feller. I could go on and on and on because the talent stacked up behind them. And that's an important point you make, Rich, is that if this was a full course yellow, yellow, he would maintain that gap. But this is a safety car yellow, so they will bunch the field. So there's the BMW XM safety car. Heart of racing car just double, double, double checking. checking, triple checking. Yes, you're yeah. okay for me to go by. Thank you very much. I'll that was Ross Good. Being... And here's our race leader, yeah. Yasser Shaheen. So he has to fall in behind. That was Ross Gunn being very, yes. very careful yeah. because they're in with the shout of this pro arm yeah. um, category. What we need to look for in the next one hour now, while Yasser Shaheen 
is behind the wheel of that number 911 is what the other pro-am cars are doing now we know that the 27 of Ross Gunn that we just saw there almost a lap behind and that's really important that he didn't drop off a late lap he's going to come back around they've got no more time for Ian James to do so it's Alex, Alex Riberos and Ross Gunn to the end in that car I'll answer your question for you right now Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim is aboard the number 88 and he's got to his hour AMG Mercedes so he's getting his time he was the other driver it was yesterday yeah. in and Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim had to do their hour. So they're now aboard both those cars. So there he is, Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim. So the field will condense under the safety car once everyone closes up at the 80 kilometer an hour speed. Do you remember how the restarts have been completely sedate and nothing's happened all day today? Yeah, yeah. Well, I have a feeling. Yeah. And, and that was when the, the racetrack was fully dry and there were no wet edges. So, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm forecasting a very casual restart to this one. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. And everybody on slick tyres on a cold still, slick tyres. Cold slick tyres on a greasy track. What could possibly go wrong here, gentlemen? I think we're going to have to pull our belts down a bit tighter when we go back to green four and a half hours still to go and we've still got plenty to talk about so make sure you stay with us One hundred and seventy two laps into the repco bathurst 12 hour for 2024 it's turning into another beauty just over seven and a half hours ago the field burst into life in perfect conditions cool crisp and bright morning on the mountain. This was a huge moment. Ironically, a car deposited into the sand trap at 200 kilometres an hour currently leads the race. This car, unfortunately, taking no further part. The Shell WRT BMW in the fence, hard at the cutting, well and truly out of the race. Our pole sitting car, no chance of winning today. It's been a yo-yo kind of day for the Janetta, a real challenge for these guys in the GT4 class and busy has been the byword, especially at the top of Mount Panorama. That copped the number two car, two minute penalty, standing in pit lane for turning the Matt Stone car into pit lane. Ironically, that car's just bought out the next safety car. And then the rain came to the mountain and everyone scrambled to put wet weather tires on. There was a pit lane miscue for Manti EMA. They served a drive through penalty when they weren't allowed to. They had to repeat that under green flag conditions. This was a big, bold pass around the outside. Alessio Piccarello fighting his way past Mauro Engel in a really entertaining battle between Porsche and Mercedes AMG. And then Lucas Stolls decided he wanted to get into the mix. They boxed on on Mountain Straight. They traded paint once and they traded paint again the next time around. And through all of that, the track started to dry and we've gone back to slick tyres. And that brings us up to speed with the safety car out for a car stuck in the tyres up there at turn two. This car leads the race with Yasser Shahin, two-time Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia champion, behind the wheel under the control of the BMW XM safety car. There's the Pirelli leaderboard. So Porsche leading Porsche, and then it's Mercedes AMGs in third, fourth, and fifth place. The first Audi is car number two there, Ricardo Filler behind the wheel. And then you go back and find Philippe Fraga, Maxime Martin, David Wall, the Lamborghini is ninth outright. They have crept up on this. Great job for our silver class leading car today. And Matt Campbell, safety car helps car 912, gets them right back in the mix. Yeah, all those times are going to close up. Here's the Brazil watches class leaders with Jackson Evans for Phantom Global Racing, the best uh, of the pro cars, but not the best <laughs> position because the pro am car is leading with Yasser at the wheel. David Wall for Wall Racing is in the top 10, as we mentioned, uh, and that is the silver leader. GT4 chassis Mostert for Method Motorsports McLaren and MRA Motorsports are in the, with the, in the lead of the Invitational class with uh, Darren Curry behind the wheel of the Triple One Mark two from 2023 and our chat is down in the pit lane thank you john i'm just pondering fuel at the moment and particularly for the porsches so historically here and crowds will back this up the porsches just seem to get great mileage around the mountain here they can go a lap or two more but they've been able uh, to do that in the past but this year there's a rule that says you're not allowed to do more than 32 laps in a stint in normal racing conditions now guys would you call these normal 
racing conditions from this green flag. No. I reckon if I was in the Porsche camp, I'd be seeing just how long we can make these stints, and you'd have a pretty good argument on your hands to say these are not normal racing conditions. And now that everyone's back on slicks, I figured it'd be nice time to tell you it's just started sprinkling in pit lane. Not normal racing conditions. Well, Ian James has never been to the mountain before, so he doesn't know what normal racing conditions are. You got both the race start in the darkness, and then they put you back in the car to get your 60 minutes drive time in the second half out of the way, and then the skies opened up. So Mount Panorama has given you about everything you can handle, but now you've earned the cup of coffee. What do you think about your experience here? I mean, it's just been off the charts. You know, no matter what the result is, this is like a dream come true for me to be here and racing. Um, the track has lived up to its height. And uh, I just excited every lap. Maybe not so much in the wet. Uh, that was a little bit nerve wracking, but uh, brought it back in one piece. Got Ross and Alex to finish it off. Talk a little bit about uh, coming to this track. None of you have ever raced here before. So when the conditions are wet and they're asking you, do you think it's the crossover time? You have to delve back into so much of your experience to try and say yes or no. Yeah, exactly. And it's a lot easier when I say Ross is getting in the car, so it's time for slicks. <laughs> That's for sure. But uh, no, I mean, we don't really have the experience of the track. The local knowledge, you can really see the guys that know the track well in the wet. They, you know, try to follow them a little bit. But uh, ah, we've learned a lot this year. A job well done so far. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Ian James, what a great character. A brick now living in the States and raced over 30 times at 30 different events uh, last year. We've got a moment or two before we go back to green flag racing. Uh, it's been a bit of a tradition here at the Repco Bathurst 12 hours that we send our pit reporters out to uh, sample some of the traditions here. We're not letting Jack Perkins off with this at all, and he's up at the top of the mountain. Well, I found myself at McPhillamy Park, and let me tell you, these cars over 200 kilometres an hour are very impressive, but as are the fans. I found myself here, Dunga Derby, and this is Chris. I want to ask you, what's Dunga Derby all about? Uh, Dunga Derby is a, um, as a um, local charity group that, um, from the Fraser Coast, so we have a, um, uh, a local charity group that does a, an annual run, um, pretty much like the uh, usual, um, the big charities. Um, we do take tw uh, roughly 250 people out, um, out on a tour for a four-day tour once a year and uh, raise a lot of money for our, uh, our, cha our community in Fraser Coast. It's a great cause. Now, I see a lot of the guys here that you've got with you. You've got the, the years on the shirts. Oh, yes, yes. So how many years have you been coming along and who are we supporting? Um, we're, we're actually at, um, supporting uh, Car 77 um, and a few and a few other, other teams, but, um, yeah, we're good enough to, uh, to come and or be organised by Paul and, um, yeah, our group get a shirt every year, so it's great. I can see why you sit up here. This is a great spot yeah, and a great, great cause, guys. All the best up here. All right. Thank you very much, Jack. Cheers. Jack at the top of the mountain and the vagaries of Bathurst. It's sprinkling again down here on pit lane when everyone's just gone back to slick Pirelli tyres. Uh, Yasser Shaheen at the moment loving the fact that he's behind the XM safety car. He's got to do a full one hour yep. in this second half of the race. He'd be happier that he's eating up some of that time under safety car. Correct. So exactly. That's, right. that's a win. It's a massive win for them. But he's still got a job to do in the Pro-Am as the Brollies go back up again. I was about to say, what would you guys say if I told you it was raining at the cutting? Now that we've brought all the cars in, the track's dried out, we've brought all the cars in, we put slick tyres on, and now it's raining again. I look at you with a blank, slightly exasperated look on my face, I think, because it's just the story of that day. That's just Bathurst. No, it's, that's, that's what happens here. <laughs> the <laughs> mountain the design. Me too. It's, th there is, on the radar at least, weather all the way around Bathurst at the moment, uh, except for sort of northeast side, which is the weather's coming across sort of west-southwest at the moment, pushing up across Bathurst. But however hard it rains, even if it's only a little bit, it is going to make the surface greasy again because we've not had proper sunshine on the surface of the circuit and, and that UV energy. We've not had that for hours now, Garth. So the actual... Maintain 80 kph, please. Light out, return to pit lane this lap. Wave by to be undertaken from turn 18. 
we've not had a UV energy on the track, so the track is going to be cold. Yeah, uh, whatever happens, certainly there cooler is. than the initial shower yeah, when it came. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that's a very good point that you make. So you, if I'm a driver out there right now, I am working double time to get as much tyre temperature into the car as I can now, because the long, the, the more temperature you can get in the tyre, the deeper into the rain you can go on a slick, give the team more time to make a better informed decision whether to go to a wet tyre or to stay on a warm slick. So we and feel like there's, there, there was a period half an hour ago that was critical for decision making. And I feel like that's coming again in the next five minutes. Uh, and this is where the communication between driver and pit wall is crucial because they have to work together. The pit wall can look at the data and the radar. The driver is the only one that can tell them what it's actually like yeah. all the way around the circuit. And remember, no intermediate. You have a slick, you have a wet, no cut slicks. So. Yeah. See the enormous bolt of lightning in that shot as the cars are coming over from I Skyline. deliberately ignored talking about that, Mr. Uh, Quill. Spooky. Was that very, very frightening? Yes, right. If you're any one of these cars on the racetrack right now, absolutely, here's the wave bite. This is the BMW XM safety car. Now, this is matter for he from heaven for these guys because they get to charge around and we'll get to put a bit of heat on. But We're seeing, actually, it. starting to see some significant rain on Conrod Strait. So, someone dive. Here we go to replay. This is Richard's lightning watch. Oh, that was way bigger than I thought. Wow. It was. <laughs> oh, mate, that was uh, electrifying. Oh, very good. Very good. As will this restart be, Yasser Shikin finds himself in a position leading this field the safety car pulls away it's up to the south australian to lead the field back to green with jackson evans and maxi goats right behind him and it's somebody's going to pit here That's just, do you get, somebody is going to come to the lane do you roll the dice yeah who's it going to be Coming back to green flag, everybody back on slick Pirelli rubber as the rain starts to fall again. Is anybody going to hit the lane? Yasser Shaheen gets his foot down, comes down to the final corner, searching for grips from those front Pirellis. Actually did a pretty good job there, kept the car on the black stuff, but it is looking filthy over to the west. Talk about pressure for Yasser Shaheen. Bronze driver leading outright. He was in the car when it was turned around at the top of the mountain and sat yep. in the gravel track contemplating life, wondering whether they were going to continue. Now he's in the lead of the race, fighting off Jackson Evans as they make their way up Mount Straight to make it a bit more difficult for him. It's raining and they're on a slick tyre. Jackson Evans sends it up the inside. I think that's smart from Yasser. Yep. Follow someone else across the top of the mountain so you can get a gauge on the grip level. But it is oh. raining significantly for the run to the cutting. This is as tricky as tricky gets. Jill on trying to work his way through as well on the outside is Mick Grenier, the national storage car. Still side by side with Gunon. Still side by side with Gunon heading up the hill. Still side by side with oh, Gunon. They come out the other side and Gunon manages to straight pass behind the Ricardo Fella in the KFC Audi. Really dicey conditions. Yasser Shahin, the cork in the bottle at the moment. He's third. Evans disappearing up the road in front. And Maxi Goats going with them. Yasser yeah, so spun up the rear tyres as he was coming out of Griffin Bend, and that cost him up that incline. It's much steeper than it looks. But also, these cars are not right now, they are not his fight. He's got to get his 60 minutes in, in the second half of the race, and then he can stand down. He's, he's gunning for the pro and victory, so he's got to keep it pointing in the right direction. Meantime, at the front of the field. Yes, is doing an awesome yeah, job right now. Job. The full-time professionals are trying to crash into each other because Mick Grenier just got into Gunon on the run into the elbow there. They're all boxing on as they head down Conrod Strait. So it's certainly wetter on the west side of the circuit over at the cutting and the run out of turn two. That's where the weather comes from and it makes its way across the racetrack. Here come the Mercedes, they're through. Yasser, I think, let them go. Ricardo Fella up the inside as well. Oh, Campbell off. Campbell very wide on the entry and the braking and a couple of wheels off on the white line trying to get the Grello Porsche stop. Change for the lead. 
Craft Bamboo now assume the race lead for the first time today. Oh, it's, it's, a a huge it's going it. to Bathurst. <laughs> Maxime Martin. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. Do not put it in the gravel trap. Oh, oh he will get away with this. Well, will he? Will he? If the splitter digs in, no, he gets out. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Brock Feeney <laughs> graphically showing what we're all doing. <laughs> and Devin Wall got past Matt Campbell there as Matt went deep. Yasser Shaheed staying out of the way. He's done a really good job there to keep that 9 one one number car in one piece. Yes, he's dropping back down uh, towards the other pro arm, but that's not important right now. No, he's done the right thing there by getting out of it on Mountain Straight as well and letting all of these pros go by. Kelvin van der Linder in the 22 out. He's gone past Cam Waters and Matt Campbell in front. You're right, Campbell lost a spot to David Wall. He had two wheels off the road on the braking zone, uphilling to the chase there, and it really slowed him on the exit. Wow, Ma Martin. The National Motor Racing Museum is a great place to visit, but I don't think with not four right hours now. and 11 minutes to go in the race, it's not. Oh, oh, oh it is rain. pouring down up the top now. So remember, last lap, it was dry. This is the challenge of Bathurst. The weather moves across the circuit so quickly. Darren Curry, he shortcuts. He doesn't want to have anything to do with the yeses. Oh, and you've got to slow down so much. Matty Campbell, he went around the outside of David Wall there. So David Wall doing the right thing into full conservation mode. And look at him. You could drive your rent -a car down the hill quicker than that. So now the driver surviving as the weather makes its way across the circuit. Teams ready and waiting. I was going to say, you've, uh, you're going to come in. Well, uh, you're not going to risk another gotta, one off well, the top. You've got to wait and see how thick and strong the front is because it can blow in and out so quickly. I saw it here in the 1000. Oh, wow, man, that's serious, oh, right? That's, I can hear it. They're pitting. Wow, yeah, they're, they're pitting. pitting. Yeah. Oh, man, now you've got to be seriously careful of aquaplaning on a slick tyre and seriously becoming a passenger. Luke Gilden, but Lux Dreyer, Lux yeah. Dreyer into the chase. It's so localised, it's ridiculous. Luke Gilden, who was one of the cars waved by Pitts, Holdsworth, Pitts, Webb, Pitts, uh, all three of them, Bathurst 1000 winners. Matt Campbell gobbling up lap cars in Grello. He's up to sixth place already. Unbelievable. Oh, have a go at Peak Hour coming out of the chase. Did they now they're all yeah. trying to race to pit entry. They don't want to get stuck behind the lap cars coming into pit lane. Who's that still that's, that's, that's the Scott Taylor Motorsport car, triple two. Wow. Cam Waters. I like He's it. rolling the dice. Okay. That's going to be an adventurous lap across the top of the mountain this time by. Clear racetrack for Cameron Waters. He is going to lead. The Repco Bathurst 12 hour on slick tyres and what at the top of the mountain is a very wet racetrack. And at the say, bottom is a very busy pit lane. I was going to say, how long is it since an AMG has led the race? And then we've had two different <laughs> AMGs leading in consecutive laps, but two different AMGs as everybody is in the lane. 85 seconds stop, new tyres. Uh, actually, no, because they don't have to. Right, if they don't fuel, let's remind ourselves, tire only fuel, stop. it's a tyre-only stop, so it is a race of the pit crew. I can't see a single team putting fuel in, guys. They're all taking tyres only because they're also conscious of the 85 seconds. They want to get in, get out. So while all that was taking place, I jumped out of the Comrades Rocks and did the old sticky head out the window trick. The front doesn't look that big. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Oh. Could this so this be? could be a blinder from Cab Waters. So that's what we're saying. If you can survive the next oh. couple of laps and the front doesn't develop into something serious, I mean, it's wet there at Reed Park for Cam Waters. Last year in this race, Manti EMA, without a timed pit stop, had the fastest stops. Matt Campbell has drummed everybody yeah. to get to second place. Yeah. Oh, oh and Waters. off the top, Cam Waters drops it. Yeah, look at the rain at McBellamy and Skyline. That's the, the rolling the dice has not worked. The only thing that he's looking about straight ahead, is. straight ahead. Don't even bother with the S's. It he was, might not stop it. It's, he's aquaplaning down the hill. This is the problem. The only thing he was looking about there is that the gravel trap was so wet he got out of the other side. But he, he's literally tiptoeing. This is the leader of the race, and he's going to get caught up very, very quickly. Indeed, Cheer Adam in the pit lane. Guys, what defines a stint? Does a tire only stop define a stint? Because if it does, then we have several teams who have breached the two stint maximum per driver. Matt Campbell being one of them in the 912 Manthai Porsche. Uh, is it is it how, how long you're in the it's in how long you're in the car though, isn't it? Rather than 
A stiff oh, shoe Richard is Crail a mule dives stick. to the it's rule a book. Stick. Here's mule Cam Waters trying his best to stay alive in the triple two AMG Mercedes on a slick tyre at McPhillamy. Comes out the other side and scarily enough, the slowest corner on the track was probably the most dangerous for him coming yeah. down the hill. Let's yeah. hear from Chad and Pitt Lane. My understanding of the rule is it's 150 minutes, minutes. which for a pro driver equals two stints. That's why they've designed that rule. So it would be like two stints of driving in completely green conditions. But I could see where a few teams will get confused with that because they've designed the 150 to meet the two stints. But there's nothing that says you could just stop as many times as you want in that 150 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Bang, bang on, Chad. The, re the regs back that up. It, it is a timed situation rather than a set number of periods behind the wheel between pit stops. But it's just the way they're playing the race out. <laughs> so with Cam Waters pitting, Matthew Campbell now finds himself back in the lead of the race, having served two, two drive-through drive penalties. One of them he wasn't allowed to. Well, what he was just a drive through. What he just drove through the pit lane for, oh, I'd love for, this for race. nothing at all. Oh, I love this car race. It's insane, uh, this is it? incredible. Uh, two. Oh, yes, Sheen's pulled up under his boot. Well, has he? Well, no, what happened there was he went to go. Yes, because yeah, they, go. they were waiting for the 85 seconds, and they didn't need to because it was uh, presumably that was tyres only. Chad was down there watching. Oh, have a go at the rain at the cutting. It's not nice, is it? So I said it's only a short front, but there's plenty of it in this front. So oh, you're not going to survive if you're not That's what's tricky to. about Bathurst yeah. and making a call on the weather because it blows across so quickly. It, often you can come in, jump at shadows, put a wet on it, and then you're back two laps later. But this one has played out. You definitely need a wet tyre. This is Porsche 911 weather as well. Rear engine car. Predictable handling. Full tank of fuel, and the fuel tank is in the front, so that helps the balance. Ironically, as the car burns off the fuel, the balance of the car in the wet will go away. Yeah, it gets worse it's more and more. It's really, really awful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here, Matty there. Wow. Spin the tyre up, fourth gear, <laughs> leaving McPhillamy Park. And this is where it's really tricky, coming down the hill, because obviously the water runs down the hill. Yeah. And that corner right there before the dipper is the slipperiest corner on the circuit. You can feel like you're walking down there and the car will get away from you. Right now, Matt Campbell wishes that he's, he was in a Porsche Cayenne and not in his 911. Let's have a listen to the flat six engine as he comes off the elbow. You can hear what he did there. He was first gear. Before he even got anywhere near full throttle, he short shifted to second to punt, use first gear to stop the car and rotate it, and then straight back to second to minimize the wheel spin. That was really nicely done. So it's a, probably the driest part of the track is here as we make our way down Conrod and into the chase. Big lift there. Yeah, in the wet, it's definitely a lift. Nice. Oh, understeer through the chase. Really nice and patient there. Yeah. It's so easy to overdrive the car in, in these conditions, isn't it, Garth? Yeah. Where you get on the throttle a tiny bit too early and you're just going to get that understeer scrub of the front tyres. And that is going to cost you time side by side at the BMW M elbow. Four hours to go. The amount of water they're moving at the elbow there. Yeah. It's like a wake in front of a boat. And those Mercedes AMGs as they negotiate the BMW M elbow. They celebrated Cam Ward's bravery, spending that extra lap on the circuit on a slick tyre, but it's cost him 49 seconds yeah. to the race lead. So, basically surviving the moment at McPhillamy and then going full survival mode to get back to pit lane has cost him a lot of time. I, I agreed with you at the time, Rich. I loved, I loved the bravery and I loved rolling the dice, but it wasn't the time. Conditions didn't work in their favour. It's, it's heavy now on the front straight as well. Uh, it doesn't lie so much down here. The wettest part is still up on the top of the mountain, and that is also treacherous because of how many times the car goes light. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> this is where the guys earn their money, Garth. Yeah, it certainly is. So, as it starts to normalise, we'll start to get a bit of an indication of what the wet weather pace is like for each of the cars, because yeah. although we've had wets on the cars a little bit, over the course of the day so far, we haven't actually really done any proper wet running. Oh, so, Maxi Goats, big understeer. 
for the yeah. rundown. And as you can see there, the water like teeming down the hill at the exit of the dipper. And that's what catches you out when it really downpours here. Does the same out of Forest Elbow. Come out of Forest Elbow here. And just before the little kink, oh. there's another river that runs across the track. You can hear more spray than you can Mercedes AMG V8. Yeah. It's extraordinary. It, this is where you put your pink fluffy slippers on, on the throttle. Because the best traction control in the world, they'll have clicked it up. It, Garth, you were mentioning earlier on about having a rear setting for the traction control, probably two or three different rear settings. But the best traction control in the world can't deal with running water like that. So there you go, that's the dipper. And there you can see water definitely runs downhill. So. <laughs> And when it really, really pours, that becomes a big, big issue. So they're the little tricks at Bathurst you need to learn. It takes years of experience. Oh, oh no, the M Motorsport car's gone around. Jack LeBrock is aboard that one. That's at Skyline. This car still on the lead lap, still a contender in the Boyce Pro-Am class. And he'll be able to hopefully drive on if he can get that car refired. And he does. He's just clipped the left front part of the Front splitter. Gone safety car. Oh, really? Yeah, the front splitter's definitely bent up. It yeah. looks like there's, I think there's a bit more damage than just that as well. So, the Brock gets the car going again. So, that's the only reason we're under safety car. It'll be a quick one. So, so here's the Brock here. Oh, oh big aquaplane and then the tank slapper. And he actually went around before oh. Skyline. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a reverse entry to Skyline. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that, oh, and he has that, wiped that the wall a, hard. Yeah, much bigger hit than I thought, yeah. There'll be radiator damage to that car for sure. Totally. Wow. So, uh, under four hours to go by the time we go back to grade. When these wet weather conditions, the National Motor Racing Museum might be the place to be at the moment. Just past Murray's Corner, there's a pedestrian bridge to it and everything. It is a great display. There's everything from a champ car in there to some of the greats of Mount Panorama's history on four and two wheels as well. Tributes to all of the greats of this place and Australian motorsport. It's a wonderful place to visit. There's a special Chrysler exhibition on at the moment. Up there. With some really cool Chrysler products from the Gagan era. There's a Valiant Pacer in there literally with your name on it. So I'm not sure how you've <laughs> conjured that up, John Hindoff, but it's happening. I'm uh, heading down the morning to see Brad and the team. As we tick over three hours and 59 minutes to go, we're in the final third of this one and a pit stop for Scott Taylor Motorsport. Thomas Randall jumping behind the wheel of Car Triple Two, taking over from his Tickford Racing teammate Cameron Waters. And in the meantime, we've had some excitement. This is Jack LeBrock. Top of Mount Panorama. Unpick this one for us, GT. Well, it started right back at the exit curb of McPhillamy, and it looked to me like the water had puddled yeah. against the racetrack in the curve. And then he aquaplaned out of there. The car got away from him, and then tank slapped it around the wrong direction and rear entry into Skyline. And then big heavy contact with the wall. And you can see the front splitter sitting up on the left front of the number 48 M Motorsport AMG Mercedes. So fair bit of damage to that one. It was heavy contact into the wall. So they also having... wonder whether there's radiator yeah. damage to that car. They're going straight to the garage, which is a smart move. They've been having a decent day as yeah, well before that. Knocking about just outside the top 10. They went a lap down. They got that back with the lucky dog. Rich was talking about the wind at the top of the mountain, and there you go. It's become quite unpleasant for those of you that are here at the circuit. It's uh, very, very wet, very, very windy. There you go. Hang on to your easy ups, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you. Still on getting the top plenty side. of thumbs up from the crowd on the top of the mountain, so they're pretty hardcore fans up there, aren't they? Jack. Yeah, I'm down in Triple Eight Garage, and to be honest, it's getting quite cool here. Brock Fenny's got the jumper on. I might steal that off him in a second. Hey, we saw your reaction when the rain came down, and yeah. it looked like you were pretty pleased to be in the garage. Yeah, look, it's much warmer in the car, but um, probably a bit nicer in here at the moment. But yeah, I got a bit of the rain. Certainly not what like what it is here now, but it was super challenging. This track in the wet, it was daunting in the dry, let alone the wet. So uh, Mick's doing a great job out there. We got a fast car, so let's see what we can do for the rest of the day. Hey, unlike the supercars, you can change a few things like the ABS and traction control. Yep. What do you do in the wet in this particular car? Yeah, you dial it down a bit. So, um, you know, you're probably in the traction control a little bit more and 
You try not to get in the ABS though, but look, they're just a couple of little aids that can help you along the way. There's a lot of painted lines and that on this track, which make it super challenging. And when you've got a concrete wall to manage, uh, you've got to be pretty careful. So yeah, they're good cars. Uh, let's, let's see what we can do. So we see Will Brown's got shorts and t-shirts on here. He's done for the day. When do you get back in this car, Brock? Uh, not too sure yet. Uh, what is that? Four hours to go. I've probably got another hour or two to chill out for a bit. I'm hoping this weather just disappears and we have a we have a dry race to the finish. And yeah, I think we're super fast in the dry, so I hope we we can be there at the end of the race. And do you hope that it's dry, or you just play the conditions to what it is? Yeah, it's going to be what it's going to be, mate. If I say one thing, it'll probably be the opposite. So um, we'll wait and see. I think we can be fast in both conditions. So yeah, bring it on. It should be good fun. I'll go well. I'll just point out there's a couple of uh, familiar faces here. We've got Marty Short, who's Brock's engineer, uh, normally in supercars. And over here, Andrew Edwards, who was Shane Van Gisbergen's engineer. He's going to be engineering Will Brown this year in supercars. He's a data guy down here this weekend. So all hands on deck in Triple Eight Garage. Pretty overqualified data engineer, <laughs> isn't it, Andrew Edwards? <laughs> so here's Maxime Martin up the escape road, and then the brave decision to turn across the gravel trap and come out the other side. We all took a sigh of relief when it came out the other side, and so did Rob <laughs> Feeney, and he might have to race that car later today as well. So now, so, uh, uh, he, He's going to claim he'd seen that earlier in the weekend. No, Max Martin, isn't he? He's going to say, I saw that a little bit. Just in case that happens, uh, I thought I, I might need a bit of purchase somewhere on the outside of that. <laughs> He'll claim it. You drivers have always got an excuse for everything. I know you have. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, an exciting... A period of time that we've just had. We're into the last third of the race. We've had uh, continuing problems for the Janetta, but um, uh, that is back out. No, it's not. It got trailers back, didn't it? So that did that can't have gone back out. So that one's disappeared. Uh, we lost the Mark car number 91. Uh, we lost the BMW number 32. Charles Vert hitting the wall really hard. The Vortex uh, has dropped a lot of laps, but it's still showing on my screen as running. Uh, most recently, we've had problems for Jazz Mostert in the McLaren Artura. And speaking of Jazz, <laughs> and that's why that car is in the pits right now. Thank you very much for paying that one off for me. Our talent in the truck. Talent's always in the truck, mind ourselves of that. And uh, let's pay a tribute to our camera operators as well, who've had all sorts to deal with this week. It's, uh, we talked about how it takes an army to run the race. Uh, there's a fair few people involved with the TV production as well, who've had an awful lot of work to do this week, particularly as we started a day earlier with the world stream and thank you for all the nice comments that we've had from the for those of you around the world who have been tuned in and are still with us at what three o'clock in the morning near enough in the uk four o'clock in the morning on sunday morning in europe we've already had plenty to talk about <laughs> that's fair that's that's fish up and ridges. Get out. Fish in his element. Yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay. Take a bow, ladies and gentlemen. Loving your work. Loving your work. Well, this is our camera that took some time out a little bit early on <laughs> when the WRT BMW made the fence there and actually took out the camera, cabling the, on the run up to the exit of the Audi Sport Cutting. Great new camera angle looking down onto that really shows the elevation and how tight that corner is. And thanks to the riggers who got it back up again you know uh, these things who would have thunk that we would have had a bmw take out uh, some of the infrastructure at that point these are the things that you can't always plan for much like a motor racing team you have to the key word is pivot react and pivot uh, good good work by everybody so the rain is back 
Oh, do you know, I've said that and it's nearly stopped again on the straight. Have you not learnt yet, John? <laughs> <laughs> 13 years ago, coming here. I know. Fantastic. Just fantastic. So still behind the XM safety car with, once again, a Porsche at the head of the race car field. It's the scene of Mount Panorama. Did you see the fantastic men and women of the Australian Army walking through Harris Park adjacent to our commentary position and I feel like these are conditions appropriate for their support. Let's jump down to Blank Shade. As you can tell by my hair, the conditions are very windy at the moment and especially blowing through the garages, but it has gotten quite cold as well. And Maro Engel, this is not what we expect from a third of the race to go. Normally this is where stuff's heating up. Do you think this is going to help keep cooler heads prevail? <laughs> I don't know if the heads are cool out there for, for the guys that are driving at the moment. It's pretty crazy conditions, but um, yeah, in Bathurst we know that uh, you know the weather can play a role. Uh, Many years ago, I think there was a finish uh, or close to a finish with uh, with with a big thunderstorm as well. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's kind of cool because it it uh, obviously mixed the race up a little bit. And uh, with the change in regulations that, that have been made to this year and even during the race, uh, otherwise, I think it would have been a bit boring. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Mercedes in particular. Every time that there's a pit stop they come in, they, they spray out to try and help with overheating. These conditions are definitely predominant to help cool cars cool. Is that going to help all of the Mercedes in the field? Yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, it helps keep everything cool. Um, be the same for every every car out there at the moment. But um, yeah, right now, I mean, it's uh, it's it's on one side survival, but the fight is on because we all know that once once it dries out, it's extremely difficult to pass on track. And as, as mentioned with the regulations, the way they are strategy wise you almost have you have your hands tied you have no chance to do anything really you guys are in a very strong position though and with this amount of time to go time behind the safety car are you minding that or are you okay that things are staying calm it's good it's uh it's up and down i mean uh it's it's a challenge we're we're, we're probably not the quickest out there we're you know for sure it's it's a it's a challenge we're not you know fully fully happy with the pace but um you know we're hanging in there trying to do a good job and uh, let's see where we are at the end good luck the rest of the way thank you So uh, let's just basically shuffle the pack again and <laughs> play in a few more variables. But what we have got after all the trials and tribulations for the Manti EMA number 912, the Grello Porsche, and then the uh, 992 type, the new shape car, back at the head of the field with Matt Campbell behind the wheel. Make a point that what this lengthy safety car is doing is helping car 911 yeah, with yeah, Yasser Shikin and Massive. car 88. 88 with Jeffrey Ibrahim behind the wheel. So they've got to do that one hour of bronze driver time. So they got into those cars with four hours and 25 minutes to go. There's three hours and 49 now to go. So there's a big chunk of time that's been used up behind the safety car. And look who's in third position, Ross Gunn in the heart of racing. Uh, AMG by SPS uh, and that car has got only pro time to go to the end of the race and they will be spitting feathers that they haven't been able to reel those guys in and put a gap on them before that time's elapsed but that's I'm afraid that is the way the cookie crumbles. Played a smart move the 27 AMG Mercedes getting that time done as early as possible. With Ian James, yeah. With Ian James, and um, we saw the pressure that Yasser Shaheen was under in that safety car restart about 25 minutes ago where the entire field came on by, but he survived that, and the more safety car time here is using up that one hour that they need to get done in the second half of this race. Uh, the We've just had a bunch of cars go past the XM, which would be a lovely place to be in it, uh, with its all-wheel drive. And we, th as that car is still out, that means they went before being told by race control. So that is they, that is punitive penalty when you do the wave by. Uh, and it's uninitiated. We'll wait to see what race control makes of that while Chad reports from the pit lane. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, furthermore, it was actually um, 
<clears throat> it was Shea who was straight onto the, the, the strategy that they were trying with Ian James. And I just wanted to really sing his praises because at the very beginning of the day, he was the only bronze-ranked driver in the entire GT3 field who started the race. What a huge amount of pressure. So it's almost disappointing that they're not being rewarded for that right now with the other competitors getting a bit of a free kick here with the rain. For them, I'm saying it's disappointing because they did all that hard work and he did a really good stint in the pitch black conditions this morning to get his uh, first part of the driving done today and then he was completely done by about hour seven of the race. So they played their hand perfectly, but the rain did not fall their way. Fans of Craft Bamboo might know that their mascot, Lucky the Dragon, is at the track and he is back once again last year he was their secret to getting heat in the tires by dragon's breath by keeping a little bit of extra up the sleeve well he's been here right here all weekend and then the rain started and the mystery was well where did lucky go don't worry i found lucky lucky is still here and he's dry most importantly so for all the little kids around the circuit wondering where the giant red dragon is we put him in the cage but he'll fly again don't worry Shay, I don't think that's going to fit into your carry-on for the trip back to the United States. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I don't think you can... I think Daryl O'Young, the team boss, will know it's gone missing. <laughs> <laughs> that's an extra seat he'll try. On the Delta flight home for, for Shay on Monday. That's good back to Utah. I'm telling you that now. <laughs> that, that is... That is the fluffy toy of all fluffy toys, isn't it? Just to revert back to the point that we just touched on before we jumped into the lane about the cars that went past the safety car. So there is a note that's put on the race timing system around the circuit, basically saying what cars are eligible for the wave by. So I wonder if they've seen that note and go, right, we can go. Whereas the wave by itself takes place the moment before the lights and the safety car right. go out and the restart commences. They did it in the right place on the circuit, it's just the safety car um, wasn't coming in. I also think the race director says that it's clear for the wave by cars to go. So you effectively wait till you're told and then you can go. So it may have jumped the gun, so we'll keep an eye out for that one for any potential ramifications. The only other thought I had was that the safety car was on the side of the road, so yeah. it peels across two drivers yeah, right. Yep to let them go by. So unless it was a directive from race control. And the cars that went by, 47, 19, triple one and 20, it's now saying on the timing monitor, not eligible for yeah. wave by. Oh, they're gonna get beat. Well, because they've just gone past us now yeah. on the front straight. So their, their advantage by going early while the rest of the field does an extra lap under safety car is they'll effectively get Thank to the back of the queue. Safety car is so at turn 18. I'm sure that won't All go All cars up. for wave by, proceed drivers left. All there cars not so eligible so to maintain drivers right. That's, that's when they're meant to do it. Yeah. So put these down on your bad boy bingo card. Uh, cars 47, 19, triple one and two zero twenty are all going to get a big ping. So here comes one of the Method Motorsport GT4 McLarens who did listen to the, what the rules were. Yeah. I think they're the only taker left to uh, get a lucky dog on this one. So it's Tom McLaren behind the wheel yeah. of that car getting back one of the three laps. He is in arrears of the red Mercedes AMG GT4 which leads the GT4 class that number 19 with Mark Griffin behind the wheel. It's actually heads up for a brand new race team to instruct their driver, no, no, do not go with those others. Wait and go when we tell you. Oh, yeah, because one person goes and race and, drivers oh, and are race, like, We are sheep. sheep. Yeah. We go. <laughs> we absolutely go. I, I have message race control about that. I'm not expecting an answer anytime soon. <laughs> They've got a bit on. think they're not busy? Well, with this restart, so the lights are out on the BMW XM safety car. It will peel off to pit lane. And for about the 18th time today, it will be pick the point where car 912 gets on the throttle. And it's as early as Matt Campbell possibly can to get the power down and go back to racing. So we're back to green flag conditions after another safety car in the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. Three hours and 43 minutes to go with weather that could still go either way in this fight to the flag. And it's busy behind between these two once again. Shulgunon trying to put a move on Felipe oh, Fugger. Looks oh. on the inside, looks on the outside. No room there. Mick Grenier behind, trying to take advantage. And Fraga sliding around it, it opens the yeah. door and Sun Energy 1 goes by. Fraga got up on the curb at the exit of 1, it broke into wheel spin, and that was the only invitation that Jules Gunnar needed 
to get by on the exit of one. Gunon did like the double fake. He went inside, outside, inside again on the front straight. So I wonder if Fraga just got a little bit lost. Of attention all teams. The stewards imposed a pit lane penalty with a two minute stop to the following cars. 47, oh, well. 19, oh. triple one and 20. That is a pit lane penalty with a two minute stop to those following cars, 47, 19, and 20. Well, oh, James can ignore that WhatsApp message I've sent him because that answers the question. Meanwhile, these cars are just struggling to hang on, and Mick Grenier has had a series of very oh. small moments and a big <laughs> one for Fraga at Reed Park. The car's dancing around as they try and get tyre temperature up. Jackson Evans watching on for Phantom Global. Kelvin van der Linde's in this as well in 22. Matt Campbell's pulling away out in front in the lead in the Porsche. Maxi Goat's trying to go with him. All of these cars still in the mix. There are 16 cars still on the lead lap of this race. Campbell's been impressive on this one. He skipped away two and a half seconds up the road while the rest of the field battle it out for the scraps. Grenier leads Jackson Evans through Forest Elbow. Jill Gunon has set off after Maxi Goats. So, Campbell, Goats, Gunon, Fraga, Grenier, Jackson Evans, Kelvin van der Linde, Maxime Martin. That's your top eight. David Wall has done a mega job in that car. And when it all goes sideways, you need a real steady hand in the race car, and it doesn't get much steadier than David Wall. So, while all the superstars are trying to beat each other to death, <laughs> David Wall has just let them do that. Going for the last man standing strategy, and it's working well so far inside the top ten. Just a reminder why he's such a highly regarded driver. Still runs a very successful race team, Wall Racing, TCR champions a couple of years ago, running cars in GT racing in Carrera Cup as well, but still gets behind the wheel and absolutely delivers as he is now, following Maxi Martin. Have a look at the moments all of these yeah, cars were having. Braga. Both ways. Fast times there from Fraga. Martin is very good in the wet. Oh, very oh, good in the wet. Oh, Still the the current. Yes, thank you. Will do. On you go. Young Tom McLennan's behind the wheel of that car. This will be a massive baptism of fire for him. He's pretty fresh after a year or two in Porsche Sprint Challenge. And he's going to step up into Carrera Cup this year, but. Wow, what a, an experience this will be for a young guy in his first Bathurst Enduro. I've just realised, by the way, one of those cars that were called for the team of the penalty was the leader in the GT4. And that is going to, uh, yes, correct. That yep. is going to help Tom McLennan. He got one of his laps back um, on the wave bike. He's going to get an, at least one more back because standing in the pit lane for two, two minutes, minutes is effectively another lap. Plus the transit time. Yeah, so exactly right. It's closer to that's two, gonna, minute, two that, and a half minutes. That that's going to really close up the GT4 battle. Yeah. Uh, we should have had 17 cars in the lead lap, but uh, the number 47 is another one of those cars. That's the um, Superbike supermarket car with... Uh, John Webb driving, that's another car who's going to lose another lap here. This has come up on our timing screen that car 44 has a mechanical black flag for a non-operational rain light. So that oh, car, oh, that's, oh, the, yeah. Yeah, that's second place in the silver class, the Luke Yildon, Valmont uh, Motorsport Audi, they'll have to come back to the lane and get that rain light working before they can go again. Meantime, in Pro-Am, uh, we have now got a new leader in that class, as we thought we might. Ross Good uh, using his experience to power past the two cars that were ahead of him, Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim, and uh, it was Yasser Shaheen who was leading that class. And Ross Good now on the outskirts of the top 10 in that number 27 AMG by SPS. That's the heart of racing car. And side by side, AMG actually oh. on the front straight again. And the, <laughs> the Sun Energy One car comes off the worst again from the outside angle. These AMG guys have seriously got to sort it out because Matt Campbell was two and a half seconds faster than them on the previous lap. So while they're arguing over bragging rights, who's the fastest AMG driver, the guy in the Porsche is disappearing up the road. So 
Maxi Goats and Jules Gunon arguing over real estate at turn one while Matt Campbell's enjoying the view at the top of the mountain. And they're going to end up with a big freight train stuck up behind them. So Fraga, Grenier behind for National Storage, Triple Eight, and then Evans in the Phantom Global car. Well, there they are. Evans just showing the nose. There's the first of the, well, the only remaining BMW, Maxime Martin in 46 behind the wheel. Still very much a factor. At this point, any one of the top nine, I think, are genuine contenders for a race win today. So further to my point about how far Matt Campbell's going up the road, the AMG guys fighting over who's going to be second. They lost 1.4 seconds in the first sector while they were arguing down at turn one, trying to have each other off. So unless they sort that out and get their head down, because if it stays wet and they keep fighting like this, Matty Campbell's going to lap them. <laughs> and then it won't matter. No. <laughs> No amount of track position will change that. <laughs> They'll all need the lucky dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. And knowing this race, it'd then go green all the way to the end, wouldn't it? Evans. So Evans in the Porsche is looking racy as well. So Porsche John made the point earlier when it was fully wet that this is Porsche 911 weather, and it continues to be Jackson Evans, who's done a lap or two around here in a Porsche and in the wet, so he knows his way, working over the back of Mikel Grenier. The Triple Eight National Storage Mercedes. It's Evan Sender. He's having a look. Grenier opens the door and does doesn't quite let him go. Contact. Evan so close to going around. So I actually thought that Grenier had opened the door and let him go. And I think Jackson Evans was the same. And that door was slammed promptly in Jackson Evans' face. Grenier might have had a, had a little more grip actually on the outside there. As he punched through between the two parts of the chase there. So he's defending, defending. Then and then here, to the right. there. Oh, I've let you through, mate, on your goal. And then... Oh, I've changed my mind. No, I haven't. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> uh ha, -huh, fooled you. <laughs> you leave a window open and the wind picks up and it slams the door in your house yeah, yeah. and it catches you unawares. That's what happened right there. Another two seconds on that lap. 22-4 plays a 2.24-2 for Maxi Goats and everyone else in the 24s and 25s behind them. Maxi Martin's got good car speed yeah, at the moment in the yeah, Stimmer. 223.6 last time around. So they're the two quickest cars on the track. The car leading and then the one in seventh position. Max is a rare maester. He really is. He's got such... I mean, none of these guys are bad in the way. Let's, let, <laughs> let's just make that... It's a relative point. term. <laughs> yes. But I've seen Max Martin do some stuff in cars down through the years that you, you would not believe. Places like the Nürburgring, Nordschleifer among them and he's this is his element and he's in it now repco bathurst 12 hour continues three and a half hours to go here's how we've got to this point <laughs> what are the last lot of highlights going to tell us at the end of this still so much more to play out hard to believe these were the conditions bright and early this morning and that that car ended up stuck in the gravel truck and brought out the safety car massive impacts such a shame for the pole sitting BMW. Pole winner hasn't gone on to win the race since 2017 now in this race. It's been a long time. He claimed the Alan Simonson Pole Award to convert. Big penalty went the way of the Audi for feeding the Superglass Racing IRC GT into the fence on the run into the dipper. Feistiness occurred on the outside of turn two. Picariello was looking really good in the Porsche. And then the two Mercedes AMGs were punching on for a couple of laps. And that has basically been the theme of the day between the AMG products in this race. Martin had a huge moment. He wanted to go and visit the main street of Bathurst. He went so far down and then managed to drive himself out of the gravel trap. And then the rain returned. So to the lightning, Cam Waters was a passenger at the top. Everyone peeled off into pit lane and Jack LeBrock incredible moment with a full 360 over Brock skyline and pretty remarkable that it didn't end up worse than it already was it's been in the pits half an hour getting that car fixed up and cycling back to the lead crazy Matt Campbell he's having a great time of it at the moment AMG's side by side for second and third hmm. I've seen we've said that before <laughs> and Gunon gets there this time finally clears the Caltex Craft Bamboo car. 
the, so the Superglass car back on the racetrack for the third, third time, time today, yeah. having twice been deposited into a concrete fence or a tyre bundle. Full props to the Matt Stone Racing team to getting that car back out. I did get a message from Techworks as well. The, their IRC GT has had a significant front repair and has also returned to the circuit. So Paul Tracy currently scored in 24th position. So there's been some heroics going on in the many pit garages here at Mount Panorama. Might be a few more of those stories over the day. Let's see what Jules Gounon's got now. He's got a little bit of clear racetrack in front. Can the Sun Energy 1 AMG match the Porsche for wet weather performance? Because over the last seven or eight laps, nothing has got close to the young Queenslander in that Grillo 912. And the gap's got out to 10.9 seconds. And that's not safety car affected or drama affected. That's pure pace from our race leader, Matt Campbell. Porsche and Mercedes AMG lead the way on the mountain. Matt will test the FIA World Endurance Championship this year for Porsche Penske Motorsport, plus the endurance races in the IMSA Series in the United States. Pretty cool that he's worked his way up through the Porsche Pyramid to become a factory driver, driving not just for Porsche Motorsport, but Roger Penske as well, <laughs> just for good measure, and performed incredibly with that team at Daytona a couple of weeks ago big season ahead. It wouldn't surprise me if they end up somewhere near the front in the 24 hours in France a little bit later on this year as Laurent Vanthor watching on. So Lawrence is going to have some work to do at the end of this race. Matt Campbell's completed 70 laps of the 189, so he's had a fair chunk of drive time so far. But I think what they've proved in this car especially is that all three of their drivers very evenly match because yep. Ayankan Guven's been pretty spectacular yeah, on his back early. debut. Wow. Mega job early on debut. You know what Lauren Van Thor can do around here. So this next lap is a telling lap for Gilles Gounon. It's the first clear lap that he's had after he got around the 77 Craft Bamboo AMG of Mercedes that now Felipe Fraga is queuing up behind along with Mikael Grenier. Jackson Evans continues to run in sixth. At the moment, Gunon released instantly into the 22s yeah. and was 1.6 quicker than Goat's last time by. So it's paying off for car 75. Well, Matt Campbell's doing 21 and a half. That's and the problem. He's absolutely just knocking them out metronomically in the Grello 912 Porsche. The crossover time accurately predicted by Garth Dunker some time ago is about the 16, 2016. So they're still four, five, six seconds away from that. There's a, oh, a lot Fraga. Wow. This car's not happy, is it's it? Super loose. It's hard enough to a driver or the car. <laughs> True. But it's working because he's got speed. Certainly has speed of a Maxi Goats, who really looks to be the cork in the bottle, to use one of your terms from earlier, Rich, in this AMG train. Problem is, you've got the same engine, same gearbox, same diff ratio, same gear ratio. So when you put your foot on the gas, they accelerate at the same speed. So it's hard to get on by. So that's why they've been boxing on so hard, the <laughs> AMG guys. The back of that is the blue and gold Porsche of Jackson Evans in sixth position. I think if, if Jackson had clear air, he'd be faster. Than oh, I was just about to say that. Yeah, I totally agree. He, he dragged up to those guys pretty easily. Seriously, great. Still drizzling of rain, but it's a testament to how good rain tyres are from Pirelli that there is a, a lighter coloured line on the racing line, and they're starting to use a more conventional racing line again now, but it hasn't quite stopped raining all the way around the circuits. OK, lap time check. Jill going on, first clear lap not in behind traffic. 22-4 for Matt Campbell, 22-4 Gilles Gounon. So he's matched him. Problem is, there's 11 and a half seconds between the two cars. Still lots to do. Great duel for the lead in the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. This is the Pirelli leaderboard, 11.4 seconds. Matt Campbell and Gilles Gounon last time by set identical lap times to the hundredth of a second. A thousandth of a second. Correct, <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is incredible. So they're pushing on out in front. This is just so you can see where your favorite driver or team or brand may well be 
in the running order. And for some of them, you might have to look a little bit further down because there's been some really challenging days. And you can see by how many laps down some of these cars are, how tough it's been. But some of them still circulating. Like the car in 26th place for Superglass Racing continues on. Uh, the leader in the Invitational class through all that drama, Grant Donaldson for MRA and Triple One. Remember that car was pinballed up at the elbow hours and hours ago in this race and had quite a lot of damage. So they ended up in pit lane for some time. Mark Griffith leads the way in the GT4 category. Silver class being led by David Wall in the Lamborghini and doing a really good job. Still well inside the top 10. Chad Nolan, this one still incredibly hard to pick. Yeah, hard to take your eyes off the screens with what's going on on track right now. They're slipping and sliding. I'll try and keep one eye on that. I'm going to try and keep one eye on the Pirelli pit bunker to give you a little bit of a form guide for how this is tracking along. So they're ripping their way down Conrod Strait. And inside the pit bunker, I want to bring up a few points down here at the moment because if I go diving into the world of strategy, I'm just going to keep a little bit of an eye on these two dueling down Conrod. Okay, good. I'm going to pick it up now. So if we go into the live driving stints, which we were talking about earlier in the day, this part here, that is the very moment I gave up. I was like, no more. This is impossible <laughs> to track from this point onwards. The strategy right now, it's easy. If wet, go on wet. If dry, go on dries. What does matter though, guys, at this point of the race is let's start projecting when the finish is. I can tell you it's obviously three hours and 26 minutes away. What does that mean in laps? We are on for a very slow race this year, but boy is less more this year. Last year was a flat out sprint. This one's more of a crawl, somewhere around what we saw in 2018 when the race ended early, and then Audi back in 2012, which won it with uh, 270 laps. We're on for the moment, guys, at about 272 laps for a final race distance, which means if you go back from 272, 32 laps gets you to 240. Go back another one, that gets you to 208. Can you get to lap 208 and make that next pit stop? From there, you should be able to get home with just two as these two rub doors on the way up towards turn two. Now, the oh. reason why that's important is because it's been a bit of a group effort down here. So Shay's realised that Matt Campbell's got 15 minutes left in this stint. And Jack Perkins told me that he's probably not going to be able to finish the race. So that car is sort of half a stint out right now. I'm not sure that they can get to lap 208 with Matt Campbell still in that car. They might have to sort of do that weird half stint somewhere in the race that might come to them somewhere in a safety car. But it's a very unusual situation. And plus, they're not going to have their big hired gun in Matt Campbell to finish the race. So it's looking good for them at the moment, but just keep that in the back of your head. That 12 second lead, they may have to make one extra stop than the rest of them. If you can get to lap 208 for that next stop, you should be able to do it in two. And Chad, that's where that 12, 13 now seconds of track position may well help them a little bit later on if they do have to roll the dice with an additional pit stop or a, a short sort of half a stint somewhere. Nicely summarised while all of this was going on and there was, I think, a little bit more contact between it. Jackson Evans had a really big look up at the cutting trying to get through in the Phantom Global Porsche. So it's hard to pick what we call critical lap in a timed race because you've got to work to a time to get to 12 hours. But when you can sort of guesstimate where the race is going to go from a duration point of view, if it goes green all the way, you've got to get an idea of what it will take to get to the end of the race on one stop and then two, and you work your way backwards from there, which is how we've played the last couple of years out. But it looks like while they're in a good position at the moment, Manti EMA are going to have to work pretty hard to get themselves in the mix. So this did for Matt Campbell, 41 laps he's been behind the wheel, but remember a lot of that's been safety car. So they haven't been able to maximize Matt's driver time by using all of that raw speed he's got because he's been running behind the safety car at 80 kilometers an hour. But, but that does mean they can do more than their 32 laps because they've been behind the safety car. So. It's, it's Matt's driver time that's the problem, time. rather than Correct. the laps on the car. They may have fuel in the car, but it's that 150 minutes that we were talking about. And with these rules, with the 85 seconds mandatory pit stop time, that's the difference, is that you're, you're racing to driver time in the car rather than your pit stop window, chat. Yeah, sorry, you were asking me a question. I went back to my Excel uh, earlier. You, that figure that I gave you for the Porsche, that's sort of assuming that we're going off 32 lap stints. Now they've been able to go much longer than 32 laps. Legally, if they're able to do that in the race, that would become a big question. Good point. I, I, I've, the been sitting that here, I've been fact. sitting here listening to your theorise about strategy and, and things. And that all is 
if everything remains the same. Correct. Which and if we have not learned anything over the last <laughs> eight and a half hours, it's, it's not going to remain right. the same. <laughs> There's something's going to happen based on the, what we're seeing on screen for the last three or four laps between these guys. There's something will go down. I don't, can't tell you what that will be. And then it'll all go sideways again. And to use one of your words from earlier, John, they'll need, all need to pivot. Yeah. It's how well they pivot with the yeah. time that they have left is who comes out on top. <laughs> Bathurst has taught us anything over the years, whether it be this race or the 1,000. There's always a twist in the tail. That's why it makes this place so special, is you can have all the Excel spreadsheets in the world, but that doesn't take into account the human element. But you can't take away anything from Mansai EMEA. They're in the best place possible. Yeah. They're leading. Ultimately, that 14 odd seconds that they've got at the moment, as Creelsey said, you know, that gives them a little bit of wiggle room. And yeah, the longer it stays green, then it looks like they're able to hold on to that. Uh, Shilgun on matching ish Matt Campbell. It, it, traffic dependent. It's a, it's a tenth here, a couple of tenths there. But those two guys are pretty much the same pace with everyone else around about maybe what a second or three quarters of a second slower down the line so they are gradually easing away from the back but relatively staying about the same distance yeah, between each other the drive time that chad alluded to is the you can do no more than 150 minutes continuously yeah. in the car at any one point so that's the little criteria that they need to look to for that to make sure that they don't get penalised because the penalties are quite significant if you extend that. And then he has to be out of the car for an hour minimum before he can get back in. This is for position, by the way. It's Kelvin Vanderlinde in the Audi chasing Maxime Martin and got some other people in the mix as well, namely the number two car of Marcus Winkelhoff. The other point is, is that so... At that point, Matt had about 15 minutes of driver time left. Let's say it's 10. That's four laps and a bit, probably. At the moment, the rate they're pulling away from everyone that isn't Jogun on or Maxi Goats, <laughs> it could build 25, 30 seconds. Yeah. So it it just gives them a nice little buffer that they can play around with things a bit later on oh, in the race. Oh, track position will still play a role in this. And if the more of it you've got, the better it's going to be at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the best strategy is to drive fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's very simplistic. Was that, what was that that Chad had in the Yeah, Pirelli that was the car 30 uh, strategy. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, pace. 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 Yeah. That was pace. Pace. Carlos Parche, <laughs> apparently, for those with long memories. Yes, pace. That'll do it every time. Yeah. Certainly the 912 has plenty of pace, whether it be wet or dry. They've shown that all day. They feels like, other than the first stint, and that little period where they had to serve their drive through, they've led nearly every lap. So, what have we done? 193 laps. I feel like they've probably led 140 of those. So, that car in these conditions has done a beautiful job so far. But there's still a few strategy issues that they may have to overcome. Just paying off a couple of stories. Uh, Chas Mostert's. McLaren back out. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Excellent. So the only car that we still have in the pit lane is the oh. Jack LeBron. As car. you spoke, it left pit lane. Uh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> See you're good, John. Uh, <laughs> <-da>. <laughs> I turn your mic off. You're not going to do better than that today. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind a mic drop. It's a headset <laughs> drop, isn't it? Just throw it all out. <laughs> that was... Okay. So we've got them all running again. Just under three hours and 20 minutes to go. Matt Campbell leads the way of the margin, 15.1 seconds, which is about all-time high of the race under green flag conditions so far. Wet weather pace on a drying racetrack. This car is clearly the quickest at the moment on Mount Panorama, and he has built a considerable margin over Jules Gounon, who gets within almost the final three hours of the race, having won the last three, and he is second. He is irrepressible here 
as into pit lane comes the 88, 88 Johor Motorsport car. So this is now a key stop for this team because they've ticked the box for Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim from driver time in the second half of the race. So it will be either Jordan Love or Jamie Winkup now to the end. So that car becomes an all-pro car yeah. to the chequered flag. And they will try and chase down Ross Gunn in the 27 car. Yasser Shaheen has yet to vacate the number 911, the Shell Porsche, which is a 911 as well. I, just thinking about that and that strategy that we were, we're talking about. Yet to see, really, the Gunon pull the plug on that car, but he's still there or thereabouts. And at, at this stage, they'll go pro pro all to the end of the race. Matt Campbell, if he gets out shortly, will have to take an hour off. So he's going to have, let's say he gets out before it's uh, three hours to go. He, he could still do two hours to finish that car off if somebody does one stint. That would be within the 150. So he could potentially still do that, so long as he hasn't done too much time in the race and he's, his teammates have done enough, and that's the calculation I need to do on the back of a piece of paper. Shay. How close are we to that crossover point in lap time? Because we are getting both of the Manthai EMA Porsches into the pit lane. Both cars will be getting sticker wet weather tires. But I have a feeling that we're not too far away from the point where we could use the Pirelli slick tires once again. And as I say that, there are raindrops falling on my head. Never fails. I, I think she, the, we're still a little ways off. It, 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 it looked like it was drying and it's just still drizzling yeah, in certain it's parts. Consistent drizzle. Yeah. They're still doing 21 and a half. So that's previously we saw the last crossover was around the 16th. I think Matt Campbell got down to a 14.9 on, uh, on a wet tire on a dry track. But it was around the 16s was the crossover point. But you can certainly see the track's not drying like it dried earlier. No. There's no drying line yet. because There is that persistent drizzle. Here and comes no the 911. So Yasser Shaheen, this is that same pit stop that we saw for the trip for the 88 car come in with Prince Jeffrey Ibrahim climbing out. So now Yasser Shaheen has fulfilled his 60 minutes in the second half of this race. He'll climb out. Try enough for a little screech of tyres on the uh, pit apron. Onto the jacks and that car will stay on the jacks until the fuel hose comes back out. Front fill on the Porsche. They're struggling. I think yes, has stopped pretty short because it really looks like they're struggling to get the fuel connected. And you can see how tight one of the fuel hoses is, and that'll be the feed hose to the car. The second hose that hangs down will be the vent hose. So here comes our race leader, Matt Campbell. He didn't get to lap 208 as Ch Chad was theorizing. So, Campbell in, Gunon goes round. And this, this is to time rather than fuel for yeah. anti-EMA yeah. for Matt Campbell. Yeah. So the interesting one now is how much further does this car go for Jill Gunon? Big, big stint. He's got a lot of laps, but in time for Campbell. And he's already out of that car. He's rocked the same helmet for most of yeah. his career. And there's a cool list of names on the back of that of people that supported him in the early days. So young Turkish driver Ayan Kanguven jumps behind the wheel. Talked a lot to Nick Tandy about young Chan, and he has nothing but praise for him. Also, really fun to be with as well, and that is so important. You spend a lot of time with your teammates. For some of the teams, of course, this is a, a one-off set of drivers, but they'll know each other and race together. And we talked earlier, Garth, about drivers who like the car set up roughly the same way, if they like a loose car or a pushy car, understeer or oversteer. But being able to have some kind of relationship, friendly relationship with the guys, if you are on the tour, as it were, if you're doing IMSA or if you're doing the World Endurance Championship, you, 
you spend as much time with those guys as you do with your family. Well, sometimes, probably more time yeah. with your teammates than you do with your family, given the jet-setting lifestyle that is GT racing that takes place all around the globe. And if you are one of those factory drivers, you're in the same pool, and uh, you do end up spending a lot of time together. So it is important. It is important to fit in. It is important to get along. You do need to work together for the improvement or the betterment of the team, for the manufacturer that you represent, and ultimately, so you can get results and win races. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Results-driven game, absolutely. The other thing that that forced stopping away from Manti EMA is, is that if the track continues to dry, we might get closer to that window, the delta between crossing over to wet to dry. So it just gives a bit more flexibility for Sun Energy 1, for Kraft Bamboo, who are second, um, for Group of M who are third. So the Mercedes AMGs now one, two, three, and four. They've just found themselves back in front, but there is still light rain falling, so I don't think that's going to play a role. And the brand new wet weather Pirellis on Guven's car, I think, are definitely the choice at this point in time. Oh, got a spitter at the coming down the mountain at the. Schick asses. Yep, coming out of the dip of the run down to Forest Elbow. That car is pointing in the wrong direction. Threw me out for a moment. <laughs> and I'm thinking, that's not right. I don't remember the <laughs> Something track wrong with this there. picture. Yes. Well, <laughs> the lesson today is don't lead the invitational class because that is the invitational <laughs> yes. class leader pointing the wrong direction again. So, Donaldson trying to do the right thing. One, get out of the way. Two, figure out how he's going to turn this car around. I wouldn't go too much further down the hill here because you'll find yourself on the apex. Yeah, there goes another invitational car. You don't need those running into each other. Do you think he's dead stick? I, I, I'm not sure the engine's running on that. Oh, this is not like this. So we've gone, we've gone yellow. <laughs> gone yellow and the Donaldson doing a nice job, I have to say, of reversing it down the hill, but on line around a blind corner. He does it nicely. Now, has he got fire in this? Is this a full course yellow? This is our first full course yellow. I can't see a Martian supposed to see what boards they're hanging on, but it's safety car. It does have fire in the motor, and he's pushing it. That would have been a good opportunity for a full course yellow. Yes, it is. Yeah, they've there gone. Go. Yeah. So full that's course a yellow. great call by yeah. race control. Yeah. Great call. And that's what it's used for. And so the whole field has to reduce to 80 kilometers an hour within 15 seconds of it being called. So we are under full course yellow at Mount Panorama. It should be a brief interruption to proceedings. Uh, he hasn't got away from that unscathed, has he? But I don't remember the sort of nose up look on, the, uh, on that mark car. This will tell us. He's had some contact. Oh, oh yes. has he had a help? Yes. Oh, he has he's had, had help. Had a help from the 47 car. Oh, man. John O. Webb at the helm of the 47 full course Super yellow Supermarkets. Ended. And there's the a full course. Uh, green flags displayed. Green flags back displayed. Green. Yep. That's why FCY is so good. We haven't had to pack people up. We haven't had to do roll around. Busy. Who gets quick? Who gets on the throttle quick? Yeah, and that's what we're seeing here. And it's who it's is Kelvin it? Vanderlander. It's Kelvin Vanderlander. Of course it is. He's, oh, and there's a couple off down here. Grenier is going to go around. Does he keep it off the track? Oh, oh. Big moment in the race. This is a contending car. Fourth outright. Canadian driver in his second 12 hour start on the rejoin down there. How about the hairy Kelvin? part of the road to do that. How about uh, Kelvin von der Linde having to go to the dirt to get round the recovering car? We'd already had Jackson Evans had made up a position uh, and got in amongst those AMGs because he was quicker on the green flag. Team, I'm sure, counting him down. And then Carnage in front of him. Well, van der Linde was in front of both of these cars. He zigged and he should have zagged when Grenier came back on the racetrack. So Brock Feeney sitting and waiting. He's going to climb aboard that car. So here we can see van der Linde's got in front of Evans and Martin. And up the road, the two AMG Mercedes, just for something different, run into each other. <laughs> and then Mikael Grenier comes on the grass, then van der Linde goes to the grass to go around the back. The other two will go around the front, stay on the tarmac. So, oh, we've seen that oh. video before. The van der Linde will spins it up on the grass, and there goes oh. Evans and Martin. Oh, wow. oh man. What a video game. <laughs> well, 50-50 chance, and it didn't quite work. 
the toss of the coin that time for Van der Linde. He survived it. Well, there was the key. No shock among anyone that he was the one making the moves when we went back to full green play conditions after a very brief full course yellow. So that's the new system. That's why it's great, because that could have been a full course safety car procedure, which would have taken several laps. You've got to reel to the field. You've got to do wave buys. As a result, we get a very brief pause in proceedings. And we go back to racing flat out for minor incidences like that, that drivers are allowed to recover from on their own without needing any outside help, like Grant Donaldson did, who has gone to pit lane, by the way, in car triple one. He's still leading the invitational class, though. The, the key of that is making sure that your team is right across when it goes back green. Because you can find yourself at a part of the circuit where you, you've just passed a, grid, a flag post or you can't see quite see where the next one is. You've got to have the team help you out there because two cars back, the guy might get a jump on you as soon as it goes green. Yeah, the countdown to green is critical to get right in Van der Linde who's used this system plenty of times in the past, yeah. right on it. That's how he got around them. But ultimately, there was an obstacle in his way when he was leaving the chase that time. So plenty of excitement. Oh, Evans wide. Plenty going on here. Race control attention all teams. Stewards have imposed a pit lane penalty with a one minute stop to car 47 for a driving infringement. And that was the contact with car triple one that brought out a very brief safety car infringement. So it's the second time we've seen a penalty like that applied today. A faster car turning around a slower one. Big wrap on the knuckles. This is a really fast, intense battle between Jackson Evans and uh, Kelvin van der Linde for fifth and sixth position. And the BMW of Maxime Martin now up into fourth place through all the drama down at the chase. Chad? Guys, I love the opportunity to dive in and grab some car, bits of cars that we see. Not in the garages, but certainly not on any of these cars either. So Patrick from uh, Mante EMA has been nice enough to pull out some KWP suspension to show me exactly what it's all about. And he's been with the team for a very long time, won the 12 hour here with Matt Campbell back in 2019. Patrick, can you tell me a little bit about the suspension that you're holding here? Yeah, we're having the KW V6 uh, racing damper. It's the latest product we use since the 992 GT3R generation, so since last year. Uh, luckily, we had uh, a first version of it already on the uh, 2022 race of Newark in 24 hours, where Dembos are still a bit free, so we could already gain experience there. And yeah, it's a very, very unique product, and we're very happy to, to have it with us. How has it performed for the team, particularly tracks like the Nürburgring and Spa, all the famous circuits here at Bathurst? Uh, very good, actually. The, the nice thing about it is that it's uh, very easy to use, having a very nice cartridge system to be able to exchange uh, the um, damper valving, so yeah, change between multiple options, and also um, the adjustability in terms of range is very, very high, so it gives us a lot of flexibility to adjust the damper to the uh, different uh, scenarios we face on different race tracks, which you just covered. So we race, we race this product from, yeah, more or less everywhere, from Nürburgring to here, uh, street circuits, uh, very tight circuits. It's, uh, yeah, the whole range, and it's covered very well. Perfect. Have a little look at the uh, amount of bump and rebound settings on this car. It's amazing just how much technology goes into this KW suspension. Coilovers and these dampers are getting more and more technology placed in them. I just want one of those up on my shelf at home. They are absolutely brilliant. Patrick, thank you. Good luck for the rest of the race. Thank you very much. First to watch now the KW suspension. Chad Nolan's stewards have imposed a pit lane penalty for car 130 for a driving infringement. That's so, the third place car, Philippe Frager. Well, that might be news to a guy that joins us from pit lane now, and that is the driver of the 912 Porsche, Matt Campbell, who has had a fairly adventurous time of things. Matt, I'm not quite sure where to start with your most recent exploits. Let's start with the weather. What were those conditions like, and how were they to manage? Yeah, I mean, certainly towards uh, the second safety car period when it was wet, uh, very sketchy up top of the mountain, a lot of aquaplaning, so very hard to just keep it on track. But, you know, luckily we had the track position uh, and we had clean air. You know, we didn't have any spray. We didn't didn't have any, you know, slow cars or anything after the restart. So uh, this really, really helped us. Your car looked like a jet in those wet conditions and that track position you were able to build over Jules going on, really valuable for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially after what happened, you know, about an hour and a half ago with the drive-throughs and everything like that. So uh, really, really happy with the car performance, uh, especially in the, the wet, but, you know, also the dry, we're very, very strong. So uh, can't be happier. Uh, we're still working for our run plan for the end of the race. 
but uh, you know it's looking good and, and we're really happy with the weather car right and, and most importantly now we have track position and hopefully we don't make any more mistakes but it's hanged off in the booth um, what did happen with that drive through miscommunication or a misunderstanding of the regulations I think it's a bit of a combination of both, to be honest. Um, I was told one thing and then we checked and obviously we were in the wrong. So we mm. served the drive through penalty the first time when we thought we could, um, but unfortunately we had to go through again uh, after the safety car came in. So luckily we didn't lose too much track position uh, and then it worked in our favour in the end as well with the boys doing a fantastic pit stop yeah. going back to the wet tyre. So uh, hats off to them because they got to stand in front. Uh, what caused that drive, uh, the original call, was you, you blew the 85 seconds. What was going on there? Because it, it looked like Chan had to come back and, and re-plug your radio in. What, that, what was the cause of that? It all seemed a bit un -Manti like to be honest. Yeah, a little bit of a mistake. I mean, uh, yeah, Chan didn't plug my radio in, and then I was told to go as we were only doing tyres. Uh, but in the end, I think we actually did fuel. And, and with the regulations and everything like that, we should have stayed in a full pit stop. So a uh, bit of a mistake on the, on the you know, us, but uh, nevertheless, we're able to get it back and you know now uh, about an hour and a half later after that initial uh, mistake we're back in the lead so that's the most important thing maddie you mentioned earlier that you're working through the run plan for the rest of this race do we expect to see you back inside the 912 porsche i'll definitely be back at some point don't want to give too much away to our <laughs> come on mate you can tell us we won't um, tell anyone <laughs> but yeah, you know, larry will be jumping in uh, let's see what the weather does as well obviously now looking as outside it's starting to come down with rain again so uh hopefully we'd, we'd prefer to have one driver in for the transition phase and not a new driver jumping into wet weather again so we'll have to play it by by the hour at the moment uh chain's doing a great job and and let's see how the end of the race goes from here was the timing of that pit stop a challenge for you because it had to be on your driver time rather than fuel? Uh, it wasn't too bad in the end. I mean, we were pretty quick in the pit stop uh, and we got the job done. So, uh, yeah, it was close for sure, but uh, we didn't lose too much. Uh, happy birthday for yesterday too, by the way. Yeah, keep that one on the radar, didn't you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> He's pretty happy about you bringing that up, Rich, by the sound of okay. <laughs> He's going to mention the Richard Creel Fun Club any second He's now to get you back. Marty, thanks, mate. It's been a great few weeks for you. We've had some great entertainment from you. Uh, drive well for the rest of the race. Go well, mate. Yeah, really appreciate it, guys. Nice nice yeah, good. Yeah. And that car with that pit stop, by the way, has dropped down to 12th position. Uh, just under 90 seconds away from the lead with Chan Ai Chan Gurman uh, behind the wheel of that car, who is uh, rapidly getting towards the top of my list for driver of the race, actually. I think he's done an absolutely spellbinding job. Gee, that's big a big list. discussion. It's, it's, a big, it's a big list and there's a lot of names on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not worried about that margin, the 90 seconds you talk about, because they, they are out of sequence from a pit right. stop point of view, so they've come early for this next round of stops that we're expecting reasonably soon for Jules Gounon, Maxi Goats, the race leader. 130 yet to serve that yeah, well, penalty well, as well. Just getting to that because that penalty's been given for a while now, so you'd expect that that car will have to come to the lane somewhat shortly. Here it is, so there you go. Richard Quayle asks. Felipe Fraga delivers a pit lane penalty for this car, and I think that was for what we saw with Mikel Grenier down at the chase. Is that how it works? You ask for something and the race delivers. It seems to be I mean, really that's what I've learned over the last couple of years. I really love a McCafe flat this ride. This is about your race. I reckon we can make that happen for you. Do you have to click your heels three times for that or something? Is that, no, Rich, is that what He it just is? puts his hand up. I don't have that someone, much dexterity someone. either. Uh, Triple Eight into pit lane. Mick Grenier with a fairly eventful stint in the national storage car peels off as well. So this is the start of the next round of stops. We're going to see a big group of cars in very, very shortly. It's still not dry enough for slick tyres, no, so they're going to have to put wet. So that slightly mitigates them a potential, uh, not disaster, but certainly a little bit of a disadvantage for the 912 who had to come in earlier. Yes. It's raining again. Um, Chan Given is not quite up to the speed of everybody else. He's losing about a second and a half or two seconds a, a lap to the cars ahead of him but don't forget he's just got in that car and he he's finding out about the pace and the grip out there so I, i'm going to keep an eye on that but I, i'm i'm concerned but not worried yeah. if big, i'm a porsche front of them what did you call the really big raindrops earlier big ploppy drop oh. yeah that's what's happening right now <laughs> <It's great. laughs> so brock feeney climbing aboard the national storage amg mercedes sort of steering column adjustment yeah. there shows you the adjustability in these cars plugs his cool suit in as well 
you're right. The uh, steering column fully adjustable, just like your road car. You can adjust the pedal box as well, so you can move the pedals backwards and forwards uh, on a hydraulic or air ram, depending on the manufacturer. So that can all be fully customised. We saw when Mikel Grenier got out, he took his little seat insert with him, and Rockfini inserted his own. So gone are the days of having to make compromises in the cockpit. Make it your own every time you jump aboard a, a GT3 car. I think six months into that Ooh. stint for Guven is that it's oh, pretty fast There's fill. something flapping on that car. Have a look underneath it's that it's car. I heard it when it yeah. left pit lane, and you can definitely see it. You can hear, forget a rear shot of this car leading to... Is it, to, is it one of the jacks that's not gone by? Nah, it's a flaw or something, but it's significant at speed. I, like, the first thing that got my attention was the noise. There you can see it under the car. So... Speed, so got it up mountain straight for sure. So is that being forced down by the air pressure? One of the under trays. There you under go. The car, that's exactly what it is. Sort of front under splitter. The splitter I, thought, I yeah. thought front splitter, but then maybe the rear, f the floor or the diffuser. But certainly something not as it should be on the aero underneath this Triple Eight National Storage AMG Mercedes. As remember, this car took a, a run across the infield, and it went backwards across yeah, the infield, across the curb. So, potentially more than meets the eye, damage-wise, for this car. In the rain, it's not such a big issue, as long as it doesn't become dangerous and flap around, because you don't need the downforce, because you're not generating the corner speed. It's Martin Short watching on from the Triple Eight garage, Roland Dane looming just behind. We've got all their engineering stars here this weekend from both their GT program that's had success in Asia in the Asian Le Mans series recently. In fact, they just missed out by a handful of points on winning the yeah. GT class and getting an auto invite for the 24 hours of Le Mans. They did everything they needed to last weekend. Correct, two wins. The so bizarre thing about that is if they had done that, they wouldn't have been allowed to do it in the AMG. Yes. Oh, they would have found a solution. You hear it in the background. Even with the ARC car going past the mic at the same time, this certainly... Oh, there you go, the in car as well, so... Big damage to this one. So that will certainly be hampering performance for this car. And as it builds speed, that noise will get worse. There it is. About fourth gear, it seems. Oh, it was so slippery in the braking zone down into the final corner. Brock Feeney was nearly off to downtown Bathurst there up the escape road. So plenty going on inside the Triple Eight car. There's also plenty going on in pit lane. Yeah, just tracking those fuel numbers at the moment for the leaders. So the 75 of Gunon, the 77 of Maxi Gertz, and the 46 of Martin, plus the 13 of Evans at the moment. So the first four cars in the field all stopped on lap 177. Now, they should be able to get to 210 on fuel at the moment. That's 33 laps, which they will be allowed to run by the rules at the moment because these are not normal driving conditions. And from there, they'll be able to get home, guys, with just the one more lap, uh, one more stop from there as the 46 comes in. So they're not going to get to lap 210 in the 46 car. So that may leave them slightly short with a projected ending on 271. So the 75 comes in. Now, they haven't gone the full 32 that they could have gone then. They did this last year, remember, where they... Yeah. they pitted to basically their own strategy rather yep. than the full extent of their fuel calculations in that car. So Jules Gounon brings 75 in, Maxime Martin, 46, and Jackson Evans, this car for Phantom Global. And a driver change going on there. I've got a question for you that's coming in on the socials. Hashtag B12HR. Uh, we've got the 47 Superbarn entry into the pit lane for a penalty for contact. It was a stop and hold for one minute. Earlier we saw a similar offence uh, being given a two minute penalty. Why the difference? I think it's to do with the driver rating of the offending driver. So Ricardo Fella, a factory driver, he's a platinum rated FIA driver, so he got a two minute penalty. John o. Webb was the offending driver in the 47 car. He's a silver ranking. So a semi-professional driver, right. if you like. So my thinking, without checking the SRA table, is that he's less professional, therefore less of a penalty. Yeah, got you. Still um, not encouraging no, any no, contact. That doesn't make it any course. less bad. No, <laughs> that's <laughs> not what it is. So the cars that pitted leave pit lane. There's Anne Chen Guven. 
getting around the 46 and the 13 up Mountain Straight. So, so they're eight laps different on fuel and pit stop between those cars. The Porsche stopped eight laps ago on lap 196. We're working lap 205 at Mount Panorama. Porsche has tyres that are up to operating temperature and pressure and a mm. driver comfortable with the conditions. Let's see what it will take for Raffaele Marciello to get up to speed. He's jumped aboard 46. Bastian Boost, who did a super job earlier in the day in the 13 car as well. And Lucas Stoll's back behind the wheel of 75. But Sun mentioned to the number nine Audi, the hallmark Audi with Di Priori at the wheel. That's for position. So that car was laps down and through that safety car period where we had three or four safety cars back to back they've used the lucky dog admitted these cars have pitted and the nine audi hasn't but there is no chance that two hours ago we would have been calling the number nine audi inside the top 10. so they've done a nice job a nice recovery job then fiore lee holdsworth and mark Sini in that number nine hallmark audi we saw chan Cooper getting ahead of uh, lello raffaello Mark Cielo in the BMW, I've got to keep reminding myself of 46. They, they did nothing wrong in the pits. Their pit stop was 85.3 seconds from line in to line eight. So WRT, fine, fine margins there. So that that was a really good turnaround for that team. They have eaten into the gap that Matty Campbell had before that stop. But even so, they, we've still got track position for the 9-1-2. And Aya Chan Kuvan. Down the inside. Christian Bruce. It was a thought. He was definitely having a thought. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got the Hallmark car yeah. right up his rear spoiler. Is the Hallmark down. car is on warm wets. These two cars effectively on their outlap, coming to complete their outlap. Marciello defends the inside line. Bastian Bruce now has to actually worry about what Dean Fiore is getting up to behind him in that number nine Audi. Certainly much wetter on pit straight than it has been for the last five or seven minutes. So rain continuing to fall here at Bathurst. The 27 AMG Mercedes part of racing comes to the lane. That car was in fifth spot before it came to the lane. So another one doing another fine job flying under the radar. This car in the Pro-Am class leading at the minute. And remember that strategy right after the halfway point. They got Ian James in to do his half an hour, uh, to his 60 minutes, excuse me. So Alex Riveras and Ross Gunn could go all the way through to the end of the race. Didn't get quite the advantage that they were hoping for with all of the safety car in the middle of it, but they got some good advantage. Now, Porsche versus BMW heading up to the top of the mountain in filthy conditions up on the top there and the BMW for a moment gets a little bit of breathing space as Raffaele Marcello has Bastian Bus up and coming German driver right on his tail more pit stops he's Fraga this will be for the penalty that they have been assessed so expect this car to go straight past his pit third position car having to do a drive through Richard Crail he almost went in no, he has got to come in because he's got to stand the, the stand for a minute no, it's just a drive through penalty for this time oh. have they actually served that already though oh, I don't think they have yeah they have yeah no they have they've ticked that box so this is a scheduled pit stop for this team so they had cycled back to the front of the leaderboard okay through the pit stop sequence so this is Scheduled, so a lap later than 75, and... Audi Spock cutting again. Yeah, another IRC GT. This time... Man, invitational class. Oh, what a challenge well, it's been. I think this guy might be able to tell us a bit more about how challenging it's I been. I came to Australia for the for the beautiful weather. Welcome back, Paul Tracy, uh, who had that same 
challenge a little bit earlier on whilst leading the class ball you said you guys would just want to get in the front you were out there as the red first start to fall side by side action Porsche in, in, in turn one and hell corner is very wide and it needed to be there and that's not a position gain it's going to be a position lost here it's Dean Fiore in the red and black Audi on the left hand side of the track has got position at the moment, but up the inside, it'll be the blue Porsche of Bastion Boost, who has the shorter line to the apex of the corner. Neither of them want to give way here. And Bastion Boost holds on to it, a little mistake as he was going for position. And that's let the BMW get up the road a little bit. Raffaele Marcello with a bit of a cushion. Actually, that's a bit more of a cushion in the context. That's more like a three-piece suite, to be honest. Paul Tracy, what happened? Well, it's you? just every corner out there is hell corner. Yeah, right that's now. true. So that's the the truth. conditions are changing non-stop. That was actually the first time that I've ever driven a GT car in the rain on wets on the, one of the toughest tracks in the world. So, you know, just the car got away from me. It slid out in the rear, and I just nosed into the wall. And uh, it pushed the splitter back into the front tires, and I couldn't. I, the, ah. it, it locked the front tires up. I couldn't go anywhere. So that's what it was. We had to uh, get the car back here, uh, get it up on the stands, pull the front splitter down, pull the front clip off, and then put a new one on. Uh, still going. I did a full stint that time, but I tell you what, the conditions are just absolutely brutal because it's it's changing all the time. It's the rain stops, it starts to get a little bit grippier, and then it starts to rain somewhere, and then it, it then it changes and it moves somewhere else. So it's it's worst case scenario right now for these guys. Who'd be a tire? Well, I suppose you've only got the uh, the choice of wets or dries as well. That's the other thing. No intermediate. It's not good slicks here. Yeah. Well, I don't think there was no no possibility you could go for an intermediate in this in these type of conditions. So the track is uh, it's extremely treacherous, and uh, I'm amazed that there hasn't been more yellows than for, for the, how hard these guys are running in the conditions that there hasn't been any any more major crashes. We've had less yellows since it's rained than it did when it was dry. It was actually more slippery when it was just damp. It oh, was really? like it was greasy. Once it rained a little bit and the wet tires could work, but when it's just that wet, wet, uh, damp condition, it's it's like it's like grease on top of the pavement. And it's, it's actually more slippery like that. Interesting. Interesting. I, I'm going to ask this question now. I shouldn't really be waiting until I was 46 minutes and 8 seconds. Have you enjoyed it? Though? Well, I mean, it was it was fun that I, I made it all the way through the stint, but it's just, it's about as much fun in those conditions as sticking hot pokers in your eyes. <laughs> well, you've had some challenging drives down through the years. I remember uh, an Indy car race, champ car race at Miami. When wow, surf, port, surfers, surfers, oh, we had a giant wreck on that, the start. That's right. Yeah, where, where you couldn't see five feet in front of you, but I mean, the conditions are good, you can see, but it's just extremely slippery out there. So, I, I mean, are you feeling more like a rally driver than a circuit race? Are you feeling for grip all the time and having to react to it? Yeah, I just I just tried to get through the whole stick without making a mistake, you know, just get through it. Guys are starting in our class. Oh, here's here's another one in our oh, class. Vortex, so yeah. Damage, damage is starting to happen. Guys are making mistakes. This is so, Lionel Amarouche behind the wheel, and he's done the front end of that little bit sport racing car from France with the big V8 mid-mounted engine, and this is coming down the mountain as well. Now, this is is this another oh, push? Might or have push. might have been yeah. the STM car as well. Looks like he gave him a little push from behind and just turned him around. That was like a Daytona bump drafting in the wrong spot on the bumper there. Yeah, and that will not go down well at uh, race control. And it's a very slippery part of the circuit, as Bastian Boos has just found out down through the Schick Hydro S's and did well to hold on to that. Oh, is that going to be wall? Not quite. That was the car we saw sideways uh, earlier on, just before Paul came into it. And Bastian Boos not getting that car stopped down at Hell Corner either for the pass on the BMW with Raffaele Marcello. Yeah, once you see once you see that the rear goes, there's no stopping it. You yeah. can't catch it. It just it just slides out from underneath you, uh, underneath of you, like you're on, uh, like you're on ice skates. Uh, don't forget, you can join in the conversation with us here in the Global Broadcast Centre. Use the hashtag B.
12 HR, B1-2 HR, just on two and three quarter hours still to go. Pass for position. No, it's a pass to put someone a lap down. As the Mercedes no, car was excuse great. me, no, that uh, is the Caltex car. So that was a pass for position. And Matt Campbell's car, the 912, now in the hands of Ryan Jan Guben. And now making back his way back up to third position. Third position for that car. Paul Tracy in the booth with us. Uh, Richard Crail as well uh, at the Rep Corps. Bathurst 12 hours for 2024. Well, Richard Krill, it is treacherous and listening to what Paul Tracy has been saying there, it seems that it's the lack of consistency, really, that's causing the issues. Well, th not only that, the guys are starting to push now, too. So you can see they're getting more racy, the positions are being fought harder. So we're coming down to the end of this thing with only a few couple hours to go. So guys, are, you know, they're, they're starting to push a little bit harder. And when you do, it, it just jumps, the rear of the car jumps out on you very easily. Is there anything you can do to mitigate it other than, I mean, you've got no traction control in your car. So uh, we, we have traction control in, in the yeah. car. So, I mean, I had it on full wet mode, right. uh, ABS and traction. Uh, it's not as near, not as nearly as sophisticated as what, as what the GT3 cars have. They have a lot better systems in the car for the ABS and the traction tool. The cars are three times the price of yeah. the Mark cars, so it's a lot more sophisticated. But you can see these guys are hanging on for dear life out there. You can see the Lamborghini there running wide, or there was Audi running wide in the corner there. This is the this is the business end of the race now, Paul. Let's let's imagine you're at the sharp end of the race. From what you've seen while you've been out there, is it a Porsche? Is it a BMW? Is it a, a, an Audi? Is it an AMG? What, what do you think? Who do you think's got the advantage, if anyone, at the moment? Take slide there from the Shell Porsche, but I, I think the Porsche, the, the uh, Mentley Porsche, the green one, looked really, really consistent and fast, and I, I think he's probably the guy to beat. Yeah, we've got to, we're still trying to work out if they've got their driver times all sorted out. And krills he's been scribbling away frantically. I'm um, not sure we've got an answer on that. Uh, crunch the numbers. You, you, you're giving me that look that means that you're not quite happy with no, what we, you found out. We think they're OK for driver time. It's, they're 20 minutes out of sync with their main yeah. rivals from a pit stop point of view, which, if you remember last year, was exactly the same not an issue because they won the race. It was the same situation that Sun Energy Run found themselves in last time by. How did you find the, the changing conditions, Paul, and adapting to that as that rain came Might down? Might get a yellow with that big splitter laying yeah. out in the middle of the track because that'll cut a tire down immediately if somebody runs over that. So this could full cause a full yellow. course yellow. Yeah, that would be another perfect opportunity for a full course yellow. That's heading up uh, the mountain straight, isn't it? Yeah, the changing conditions just make Full it course up. yellow. Just come out 15 seconds to get on the limiter now. The moment, the moment you start to get some confidence as the as the, a dry line starts to appear, and you, you see the, the the rain tracks, you follow the tracks, and there's there's good grip. It'll just start to drizzle more, and that'll all fill in. And then the next lap you come around, it's it, what you did the lap before. Next time you're in a slide. Yeah. So perfectly timed, John pit stop for Tom Randall in triple two. So oh, he ran over that. The Lamborghini ran right over that splitter. So I think it's a boot lid. lid. I think it's a trunk lid, Paul. I think that's Belmont Racing Audi. I'm going to throw a dart and hope it lands. Um, Triple Two was at pit entry when that full course yellow called. So they're bailed into pit lane. So this is a really well timed pit stop for them. While the whole field's doing 80 kilometers an hour, they get this 85 second time pit stop essentially for free. And we saw that that actually had a big impact earlier on in the race at Creelsea because uh, at the time, the car that came in and went out didn't lose the lead. At the time, that was the number 911. Correct. And these guys have looked a lot better in the wet than they have been in the dry. They were complaining that the triple two car wasn't perhaps as effective as some of the other Mercedes products, but in the wet conditions, rain can be the great equaliser. And a good stint from Tom Randall. has got them in track position. They've got a, quite a substantial margin. Mm -hmm. 
over Goofen, who's going to cycle back towards the front of the field. So the 9.12, that Grello Porsche that Paul Tracy was just mentioning as looking like a pretty racy car, there it is, heading down into Murray's corner right now. And the triple two is going to leave pit lane, having ticked off a free pit stop under a full course yellow, in a really good position and will retain the net race lead yeah, out of that. Correct. Yeah, I really feel, having seen him go by me at, this, at the rate of speed, that he did, that car looks the, the most well-balanced and the most grip of, of all the other cars that I had a, a good bird's eye view to watch how they go over the mountain. Got one of the VW Amrock uh, pickup trucks, recovery trucks there to get that. As soon as that clears, we'll go back to green. We'll take the opportunity uh, to say thanks very much to Paul Tracy for coming to see us. And we'll head to Jack down in the lake. Yeah, thanks, John. Having seen the loose floor section on Brock Feeney's Mercedes, I thought it was a good opportunity to come into the team garages and have a look at the spares that these teams carry for these long endurance races. And they're not just spares, they're ready-to-fit spares. So here for the 912 Porsche of Matty Campbell, they've got a spare set of front guards, so a left front guard and a right front guard, headlights ready to go. We've got a driver's door and a passenger door ready to go. If we wander our way further back into the garage, they've got a whole rear bumper bar assembly with the tail lights ready to to fit. This is a front bumper bar and it gives you a great shot of the front under tray. And then if you keep wandering out the back, there's more spares. So we've got a full intake section here. And over to my left, we've got another front bumper bar section, a bonnet and lots of spares. So critical for endurance racing. As they say, you can't go racing without your spares. I just wanted to really ram home what an advantage that was for car 222. They were due to lap a pit somewhere around 210 anyway. So not only did they get that, but that gets them to 243 on a 33 lap stint from there, which will get them to 276, as well as we've just gone to a full safety car. So it will mean Tom Randall leading on the restart. There was a chance there, guys, for the Grello car to get in and essentially take a free pit stop. So they must feel like surely they're OK. But by my numbers, if we're only doing these 33 lap stints, which apparently is what their limit is, right now that would only get them to lap 261 so they would need this race to really run short towards the end and the folks from supercars and their data is telling me that it's likely to run dry in the last hour which would mean more laps at the end of this race so if anything it's advantage to the 222 obviously they're leading the race but in every strategy box that have really ticked it and that was just an even bigger advantage being able to do it for free yeah great chad and it's a massive free kick but what they probably didn't want was this to be elevated to a full BMW safety what? car. 30 seconds but track has position it? margin. Has it? Because I'm still seeing FC whiteboards out. So, uh, so full it, course is, well, that's good, it is still a full course yellow. Uh, still a full course yellow. Uh, let's remind ourselves how we got underway all those hours ago. Nine hours and 22 minutes and 12 seconds, starting in the darkness. The one of the unique factors of the Retro Bathurst 12 hours. Yashet Shaheen dumped unceremoniously out of the lead of the AM class. And then one of the big shunts of the day at the Audi cutting the BMW, undoubtedly one of the favourites for the race, out and took no further part. Been a bit of impatience on the part of some of the GT drivers. And these contacts with the but other class cars have seen stop and hold penalties being laid out. The mountain, Garth Tander has claimed one or two victims. Once the rains came, it certainly caught a few out. Jack LeBrock on the top of the mountain got caught out with some aquaplaning. And then the AMG Mercedes just went to war with each other. Another one where one of the faster car turns around. The leader of the Invitational class, that was Darren Curry, at the time, that brought out a full course yellow. Then more AMG on AMG contact down at the chase, where Michael Grenier just came across the front of Kelvin van der Linde and hostilities return. Number 20 IRC car had a bit of a moment, and again, the Vortex got caught up right in front of what is now our race leader, Thomas Randall, who this team have done a beautiful job from a strategy point of view. They dived in under this full course yellow, got one of their stops done, and now enjoy a near on 30 second lead. And you might think, hang on a second, we're, we've, 
we've utilised it. Why how, isn't everybody packing up? That's the point of full course yellow. It's effectively a code 80 kilometer an hour. That's how fast you can go. There's no overtaking and it freezes the field. It neutralises the field. The times will look a little bit odd in terms of the gaps, but once we get back to green, that the, the, the idea is that we go back to where we were before we had to neutralise the race to get that piece of Audi bodywork off the mountain straight. So keep an eye open for your favourites and the Bazell class leaderboard sees Thomas Randall for Scott Taylor Motorsport leading the pro and overall Marcini in the Hallmark MBC there. We've just gone back green. Grant Denyer for Wall Racing in uh, the 15th position overall and leading silver. GT4 and Chris Tadulu for Prestige in there. AMG and the invitation class, which it seems to be a bit of a poison chalice at the moment when you're leading. It's Cedric Sprazzoli in the IRC GT number 20, sitting in 20th first, 21st position. I unfortunately don't have in my record book a statistic for the longest surname to lead a class in Bathurst 12-hour history. Right, We've got two of them now, I think, though. Okay. That, that invitational class. Oh, wow. Mate, oh, don't don't want to be that. leading that thing no, to the last lap. Absolutely. <laughs> So this now is a big challenge for Thomas Randall because he has been handed a decent race lead in car triple two. A full course yellow pit stop, the whole field doing 80 k's an hour. They timed it to perfection. Potentially more good fortune than good management, but you've got to take when you can get that here. And he was able to peel into pit lane, complete an 85 second pit stop and return to the race lead. And the margin at the moment showing 11 seconds. We'll let them get around to the start finish line for timing to fully synchronize once everyone's back up to racing speed. But so it's triple two leading nine one two. Ian Kanguven behind the wheel of that Porsche. And Maxi goes third. Kraft Van Berg seemed to have spent a good chunk of the last three or four hours of this race just hovering around the top three. Just creeping up on it. And that Audi of Kelvin van der Linde, I'm not ruling those guys out. They are looking in a really decent position. Another car that's just been floating around the top five for the last couple of hours, Jack. Yeah, really interesting. I've just been down into the Triple Two garage to catch up with the engineers running that car and a couple of old supercars guys in Merca De Rosa and uh, Brendan Hogan. And they're claiming that they're not actually sort of as lucky as we may feel. They've been leaving hot, wet tyres on every stop because they've been noticing it takes four or five laps to get the pace up. And at the start of each stint, they've been gaining multiple seconds. We're talking 10, 20 seconds on the field. So they're in a comfortable position. They don't think it's a fluke. They think they're going really well. Certainly not a fluke. You, not don't, a fluke. you don't float to the top of this field in a fluke with two and a half hours left to go in a 12-hour race and there are some very big brains in that in that garage and some very fast race car drivers driving this car and they've driven it beautifully they rolled the dice earlier with cam waters when yep. he was driving when the big downpour came they hoped that it wasn't going to be that downpour and cam we reported at the time that that cost them 49 seconds yeah and they went back to 10th or 12th They've played themselves back in nicely here. But you don't get that for free. Yes, you leave wet tyres on and you keep them nice and hot. You can do that for two or three stints, but eventually you will wear them out and they will lose performance. And uh, Chen Gubin is coming back now at Thomas Randall. And the problem with that is if you look at how much spray is being thrown up now, for example, down Conrod, and also actually just to my left, uh, down the start finish straight that's us that is standing water again and we've seen far more spray the rooster tails are going higher and it's a, a bigger cloud of spray behind all of the cars right across the top of the mountain some opportunities for fantastic photographs uh, particularly with the car silhouetted on the skyline drop with that big cloud of spray chan is pushing on here He's, he's got his confidence levels up. He was, remember we said he wasn't gaining on those cars when he first went out there, Creelsey. But whatever he's found in that car, or whether he was bringing the wet tyres in maybe carefully, it's raining really heavily on Conrad, and now he's found he's found some performance. Well, in the, and I'm just checks notes, 108 litres of fuel they're allowed to put in that car, they've burnt half of it. So the car's, the weight's coming off the car as well. So performance increasing. They need to go. They're still in a slightly uncomfortable position because they are out of sequence. And the first of that 
leading group of cars to stop as we try and work out how many pit stops there are between, well, they stopped on lap 196 and between wherever the end of the race is. So their next stop, if they go all the way on fuel, should be somewhere around lap 228 to 230. The next group of cars, which includes 75, Sun Energy 1, 46, the BMW will be about 236, 237. STM could go all the way beyond 240 laps now in this race, which takes them a long way towards the final 90 minutes. And that starts opening windows for getting to the end on one pit stop, potentially. Yep, the triple two car, whilst it's got track position and at the lead of the field, it is going to suffer some pain in this stint because they're full right now, full of fuel, and the team have admitted to us they're on a wet tyre that is not the newest wet tyre on the racetrack. And the last lap was a pretty graphic example of that. Thomas Randall did a 24-9. Ian Chinguven a 22-9. Maxi Goetz a 23-9. Kelvin van der Linde a 23-2. So of the top five, the leader was the slowest. I'm just getting my accordion out again yeah, here. Exactly it's well. starting back. to close yeah. again. It's that slinky that Craig Lowndes had earlier on. It's all just taking him back up again, that sprint. There was that little bit of contact as well, let's not forget, between the STM AMG and the Vortex. They put the Vortex in the wall. Not heard that uh, of anything resulting from that yet. Uh, I would say that uh, Motorsport Australia Race Control have far more angles than we have on that. They will have looked at it, or they may still be looking at it. They take all of the uh, incidents in chronological order and in fact i'm now being told it was reviewed there was no contact they had a view that there was uh, nothing on the snicker and uh, there was clear daylight between the back of the vortex and the front of the stm so it was looked at and reviewed so those of you watching those highlights those repco highlights uh, a little while ago seeing that it was reviewed and there was no contact so no further action required and it's a race car that people have to lap especially if we get more restarts like we've seen where those slower cars have been so challenging to get by and it compresses everyone when they get them at the top of the mountain silver class Bathurst all racing fast, Bathurst fastest game show host correct Grant Denyer at the wheel of this car and hasn't this car done a mega job through the day earlier it felt like it was 45 minutes ago or so David Wall was beside the top 10 battling it out with Raffaello Marciello and Marcus Windlock this car continues to lead, lead the silver class it seems odd it, the car is so bright but they've kind of flown under the radar and just gone quietly about their business and just made sure that they've stayed out of trouble and then turned their laps so they, that, you know that's not the worst strategy is it david wall stinks in that rain oh that was hours impressive. ago were really really huge in the context of the race grant denyer watching on he sees himself on the big screen that's up at the chase there but he's driven very nicely this weekend and this is a guy that started out a race car driver first yeah and then decided that he needed to find a way to pay for race car driving, so went to become a TV presenter. Found a job doing TV. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. That bit turned out all right for him. Absolutely, it has. And of course, calls Bathurst home now. Tony Delberto's been in this car. And we really need to applaud people like Adrian Dietz, who has invested in a brand new Lamborghini Huracan Evo 2. They're going to run a couple of rounds of GT World Challenge Australia this year. Lamborghini dead serious about supporting Adrian as well. They sent out their chief GT3 engineer and data engineer out from Italy to support that squad this weekend to help get them up to speed. A couple of test days. Um, this is the first major test for that brand new car. First one in the Southern Hemisphere as well. So it's beaten all of GT Asia as well. So really cool. Well done, Adrian, for that investment and bringing something unbelievably cool to GT racing in Australia. Pretty handy data gathering exercise for Lamborghini. Oh, I do. Yeah. Should they need that in the future? Might rock up oh, with the factory team at some point down the road, potentially. Mm. Well, just, you never know what might happen. Time to stroke my chin thoughtfully. Hey, how about how many people from other manufacturers have been wandering around? Some under the radar, some yeah. not so much this weekend. I had a blast around the, the mountain in a Mustang Dark Horse and plenty of people with a blue oval here all making noises about next year as well. We think it's good now. It's not going to get any worse next year. And I'm hearing as well from the event organisers, there's big news to come relatively shortly once we get this uh, Superfest finished about the future of this event. Really looking forward to hear what it is. Uh, 
I did say, oh, you made yourself a problem, you know, guys, because how are you going to top this next year? And there was a knowing look <laughs> at me. And I thought, OK, I'm staying away from that. I'll just, I'll go about my business. Shane Rattis, the event director, and Paul Martin, Supercars Head of Motorsport Operations, went to the total 24 hours of Spa in June last year. And the vibe in the paddock there is that everyone wants to be here. It might still take a year or two to get them all back, but they're all keen to be at Mount Panorama. So as I said earlier, we almost had Garage 59 and their McLaren 720 GT3s, which are awesome things. So we hope to get them back. Hub Auto, unfortunately, with the shipping dramas, cost them a, a start this year. But yeah, the world is interested. And you had your ride in your Mustang. I had one in a Corvette. So that's GT3 next year. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's pretty cool. Bortai versus, uh, Bortai versus Blue Oval. Oh, my goodness. Added to the European exotica that is already here. American muscle versus European style. We've heard that somewhere else before. We are in a truly golden age of endurance in sports car racing, right from the World Championship uh, through to GT3 class racing. Well, the fact as well that you can now run most of these cars in the 24 hours of Le Mans yeah. is incredible. That is such a carrot at the end of the stick and Triple Eight and Jahul Motor Racing went and did the Asian Le Mans series and almost got themselves an entry to the 24 hour. This is a hairy little moment. The Hallmark car just jumps out the way. Mark Sini behind the wheel. Mark's doing a great job. 13th outright. Melbourne businessman. Races Carrera Cup full time. Hallmark Property Group in his business. Michael Mochisano and your other partners. They've been passionate motor support, motorsport supporters for a long time. And Mark and David Russell equal on 12, the most number of starts in the GT3 era of this race. Yeah, Mark Cini, big supporter of this race, and much like Adrian Dietz, funds that car for the rest of the drivers. So plenty going on here. The gap, first to second, is starting to shrink. Can Randall hold on? Part of racing. Front and centre being chased down by the race leader looking to put them on lap down. That team touched on earlier raising money for prostate cancer research in Australia. And looming in the background will be that bright green and yellow Grello Porsche of Anne Kanguven, who's now three seconds behind Thomas Randall. And significantly heavier rainfall in the bottom part of the circuit here. Whilst why that is critical is because the tyre, the wet tyre that's on the lead car, they have admitted to us that it is a used tyre. They've been double and triple stinting that tyre. So the more water that sits on the surface, the more worn out your tyre is, the less that it cuts through the water. So Randall, his last lap was a 27-1. Anshin Guven, a 24-3. So three seconds now the gap. First to second is under three seconds down to 1.9 so that 912 Grello Porsche will be on the rear bumper of the triple two AMG Mercedes in a heartbeat and you can see as we make our way to the top of the mountain it is much murkier oh. up here oh out on the outside that Solman that have dropped down to Reed Park two I'm commentators one I've got there. my eyes closed and the other two have got their hands in their head <laughs> My goodness, this could be R-rated. This is incredible stuff. Right on the ragged edge, going past traffic, trying to find some gap, trying to see through the spray. And there's there's only one line at certain parts of the circuit, and where they are now, coming down through the record dimmer is one of them. Bastion Beast would love to put a move on Lucas Stolls, and he's been in GT racing for some time. Bastion looking to make his mark in top flight GT3 racing. Try and cut back and get on the throttle a little bit earlier as the KFC Audi number two in the pit lane. So Marcus Mickelhock was behind the wheel when they peeled in from 10th position. Keep in that car, just doing some checks to make sure oh, everything's really good. And this is massive. Bastion Boost looked one way and then the other. And they're going to go side down. by side through the kink and he gets it done. Big, 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 big move. And the Porsche goes forward and just gets it stopped. <laughs> and just keeps it on the island. So it took some hard in the mouth moments to do it. Did he get a bigger 
did he get a bigger tool than he was expecting there? Guys? Well, he committed either way, and we go back to the battle for the lead. Actually, there's two battles for the lead going on here because the outright leaders are right behind the two leaders in the Boysell Pro-Am class. So Harry King in 911 and Alex Ribeiris in the 27, the heart of racing car. They're one and two in Pro-Am. So they're not going to be in a hurry to hop out of the way for the nope. outright race leaders because they've got their own battle to bash on with. Oh, the number two Audi is in the oh. garage. Big drummers here. Marcus Winkelhock's out of the car. Lots of head shaking going on there. Let's find out what's happening with that one. Brad Schumacher's dream of an outright Bathurst win may well be slipping away. The battle for the lead is well and truly alive at Mount Panorama with just over two hours and 18 minutes to go in what's turning into a Bathurst 12-hour sprint race. Thomas Randall. A bright young rising star of our Repco Supercars Championship scene is holding on from Ayankin Goob and a bright young rising star of global GT racing. This was particularly huge. Casual 265 odd clicks through the kink. And Bastion Boos manages to get his car pulled up and stopped and passes Lucas Dolls. So this is busy stuff. A couple of Mercs and a couple of Porsches all battling for their class lead and indeed the outright lead of the race. Unfortunately, the issue with the number two Audi began this morning. They discovered that two bolts within the breaker toe link were not secured. They tried to tighten it during a pit stop and then sent, as it was at the time, Brad Schumacher back out on the racetrack. The problem has gotten worse and worse throughout the day, and it resulted in Marcus Vinkelock driving with the steering wheel at a very odd angle to try and hold the car straight. The problem has just manifested itself to the point where now the crew has said the car is not safe. They brought it into the garage. They are going to try and fix it, but at this point, any chance of any decent day is gone for this car. All hopes rely on the sister car, the number 22. Yeah, we saw them with one wheel off earlier yeah. on in a pit stop, yep. and they were under there. And, and I actually, that's just jogged my memory because someone came in on the socials, hashtag B12HR, and said they could see that the Audi was a little bit uh, wonky on the steering, a little bit cockeyed. And uh, something else happened, and I forgot to mention it. And that, that is all falling into place now. Good eyes once again by our collective knowledge out there across the globe. Fairly low risk manoeuvre for Goovin getting past teammate Harry King to put them a lap down. But more to the point to put a car between himself and Thomas Randall who he passed at the chase or on the entry too. GT4 McLaren just doing the right thing, he's jumping very, very wide. The Audi Sport cutting to let the leaders go through. So Rivera's the next person that Goober needs to pass. And this is how it played out. Run up Mountain Straight. One older spec Porsche and the newer one driving by. An older car still has been Hugely effective today and very much in contention mm. for the Boysell Pro-Am class. They're not too worried about an outright result there unless that opportunity was given to it. But there's a class victory in endurance racing and it still means to stand on the top step of the podium. Uh, this could be big because this is the leader behind the Pro-Am leader in the Heart of Racing SPS AMG. And then right behind there's Harry King. So Alex Rivera will not want to be holding the leader up too much and chance his arm, but then again, he does not want to lose too much ground to the car behind him. Bumped into Alex, met him for the first time early in race week. The Hub Cafe down in Keppel Street in Bathurst, and uh, he was telling me the story of how he was out in New Zealand during COVID and actually got stuck there, couldn't get home. So, places to get stuck, correct, Venice. lovely part of the world, and decided just to set up part of racing New Zealand office, basically, and ended up racing in the North and South Island Endurance Championships over there. But he did say that he'd sit there knowing that he was only two or three hours away from Mount Panorama and frustratingly he couldn't quite get there while we were all having fun at this place. Well, so he was thrilled to be able to get that opportunity and come and race. You were talking about S SPM all the, uh, earlier on with the prostate cancer. Um, you know, our teams in this part of the sport, great social responsibility, heart of racing, formed by the chap 
are up in Seattle for Gabe Newell and they race and raise awareness for the specialist cardiac, a children's cardiac part of uh, Seattle Children's Hospital and to date well over 12 million dollars US dollars uh, raised for that charity and they are absolutely 100% committed to that and to go racing they've had a heck of a few years winning championships uh, all over the place and of course heavily involved in the development of the Aston Martin hypercar the Valkyrie Gabe Newell um, has one has a road car and that car Adam Carter from Aston Martin uh, performance was telling me on, on Wednesday that the the first mule has been running. Oh, was, actually, no, it was uh, Ian, Car Ian, wasn't it? Ian James was telling us at uh, Tractor Town. The, the car has run in a mule form format uh, on an Aston Martin Valkyrie Pro, which is their track car. So that's another big prototype coming to the World Championship uh, next year. I said before, we're in a golden era of of sports and endurance racing, uh, more manufacturers realising what they can get out of their road cars and have these fantastic races all around the world. Fully in time to be in this part of the sport. Ferrari doing sports car racing more successfully than Formula One at the moment. <coughs> well, if, if they stop doing their strategy by a magic eight ball, do they farm their strategy out in the sports car team? <laughs> Yes, I, of course, <laughs> that turns out they're very good. Uh, yeah, Amato so, Ferrari's lads are pretty good, no relation, correct. I should say. They, they, they know a bit of sports car racing. We'll give you a contender check. Mm. When we get into the final two hours, we generally like to run through who's where and who's got a realistic shot at this. But look up and down that top ten, and there's a whole heap of cars that can still win this car race. Oh, yes. That's the point we want to make. So nine cars still on the lead lap of the race and with the heart of racing car just being lapped by the leader Goofen and I think they're all in pretty good shape so Porsche leading Mercedes AMG second and third at the moment Vandalinder in the Audi next and then Bastion Boost in that omnipresent Phantom Global Porsche and Lucas Stoll's in 75 so Sun Energy 1 uh, within sight of the final two hours of the race and they're only 13 seconds away from the race lead so, for the third year in succession, Garth, that team have engin engineered themselves to be in at least a position to challenge for another Bathurst victory, which is a huge accomplishment. And then the BMW will be an interesting one for mine. Hasn't set the world on fire in the wet conditions. Raffaele Marcello running seventh, 27 seconds behind the leader, and then with a couple of drive-through penalties. If it goes green, 90 seconds from the race lead, David Reynolds in Group M Racing. That's a big margin. They might need a little bit of help to get themselves closer to the front. And since Aichan Gerber caught and passed Tom Randall, he's now pulled out seven seconds. And that, there is that that you were talking about, Garth. That's, top, that's not Tom going, oh, I think I'll ease off a little bit. That's him on warm tyres against Aichan Gerber. Uh, on tyres that have done probably a, a maximum of half the work of the Pirelli wets that's on the triple two. Yeah, and look, it's still a net gain, the strategy for the triple two. Oh, yeah. Remember, when Cam Waters was in the gravel trap at McPhillamy and came in and got wet, that turned into a 50-second deficit. Yep. So to be only nine seconds off the lead, it's still a massive net gain for this team. And I mentioned earlier, they will take some pain in this part of the race, but take a little bit of pain now you still have over two hours left to go in the race so still if we do know this there will be a twist in the tail. something will happen you bolt cam waters in that thing somewhere near the front of the grid and he will have a crack <laughs> he's come up short in the 1000 so many times by so little that he won't let it happen in this car so <laughs> yeah he'll He'll unpick the secret iRacing shortcut at some point to get himself to the front as Maximilian Guts peels the Caltex car off into pit lane. So 77. Where were they in their pit stop shuffle? So this is their 13th time in pit lane. So two hours to go. This stop plus one more, and they should be all right yeah. to go to the end. 
Car 911's getting a bad sportsmanship flag for displaying blue flags. So Harry King has been very much eyes forward in the shell car, trying to keep his position in that pro-am battle. So a driver change down at Craft Bamboo Racing. Great stint from Maxi Goats. This car's been floating around the top three for a good chunk of the second half of this race, having worked their way forward. See the team there blowing out the radiator. Had a couple of AMG Mercedes, particularly in the dry part of the race, suffering with overheating. So the team leaving nothing to chance and blowing out the radiator while the driver change takes place. He's our race leader, continuing on his merry way. Anchin Guven, now that gap first to second, near on 10 seconds. <laughs> so marching on its merry way as it has for the majority of the race in the lead of the race, this car. Had a few things thrown at it, drive through penalties, miscommunication, uh, an extra Campbell. drive through. Yeah, Matt Campbell was very honest about yeah. that. Right? Yeah. When he spoke to us, and you know, it, it's hard nowadays to be anything else because we've sort got of eyes and ears everywhere. Yes, exactly. And the lead changed in traffic, in spray. It was a tremendous run down Conrod Strait, out to the outside. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> it sums it up, doesn't it? <laughs> and that was much less of a lift than it ought to have been going round the outside into the chase there, following in it's behind the 911. That was when they were catching up with that battle. Remember, they were catching up with Harry King, who was chasing down uh, at Riberas for the lead of the uh, Pro and class. It wasn't so much the going around the outside of Tom Randall, it was the commitment to do it before the King with lap cars in front of you, not knowing what they were going to do. This is Bastian Boost. Big. Thought I had a look, thought about it, and then eventually Kelvin van der Linde turned down. This is the battle third for fourth. The Mante EMA Porsche has proven how good it is in wet conditions. This Phoenix Global car has shown us as well from time to time how good it is in the wet. Boost has got a good run off turn one for the run up Mountain Straight. And you get the job done. Under brakes. Into turn two, using the toe. Van der Linde sticking to the inside. He's not going to give him an option. Does Boost swing to the inside? He thinks about it. Van der Linde saw him coming. Shut that door as quick as Boost had a look. So Van der Linde not going to let Bastion Boost through. They continue this battle for third. And there's second not far up the road. So that's why Van der Linde's boxing on. Because he knows he can get himself up into second. Thomas Randall just ahead. I like where this car's at. Car 22, the Audi. They've just been creeping up on it. This is the best an Audi's been late in a race for the last couple of years. They were probably outgunned last year. But Van der Linde's been so good in that whole combination. Liam Talbot did a nice job early contact. Grupa M down the inside of Triple Eight. It's four position. Brock Feeney and David Reynolds. They'll be boxing on in a week's Brace time. Control, attention, all teams. PLP penalties to cars 130 and 77 for a breach of BOP. I wonder if that's stint length. Yeah, well, I wonder if that's stint length. Saying it is confirmation. Car 130 and 77. So Daniel Uncadella behind the wheel of that Kraft Bamboo car. We just saw them in pit lane. We'll have to do a drive-through penalty. And this guy too, David Reynolds. It's not been Grupa M's day today. <laughs> this was fun though, for us. Perhaps not so much for Brock Feeney with a couple of wheels off under the bridge. I've got a button here for these kind of things. AMG on AMG. AMG on AMG. Oh dear. Much like the flasher button on the steering wheel, that button would be worn, worn out. Worn out by now. <laughs> yeah. Every time we pick up a shot of two AMG cars near each other on the racetrack, they inevitably run into each other. This time it's a couple of supercar superstars having a crack at each other. Dave Reynolds and Brock Feeney. They'll pick up hostilities in a week's time when we come back for the first round of the Supercars Championship. As it stands right now, Feeney gets through. That's the battle for eighth, but as we heard, Reynolds will have to come to the lane and serve a penalty for a breach of the balance of performance regulations. So, so that's that 150 minutes that we were talking about early on. 
I think it's laps in a stint. Oh, it's the 32 right. lap number. Okay. Got it. So, right. so I wonder whether the teams have interpreted wet weather running as not usual wet weather or not usual race conditions and thought, well, we could stretch it here because we wouldn't use as much fuel in the wet. So Chad might have more. Yeah, it's for going too many laps between refueling. And Ooh. the reason why it was hard to see on the numbers was because originally they had been in as we got a car up yeah. and they hit the wall. Hit the wall, that's rear suspension damage, toe link damage on the 77. So they've got bigger issues than the drive through penalty now. Hukadea has done something that he seldom does. It looks like there's been a mistake there. And that car has been in the wall. Rear axle or rear left. I think it's a toe link. Job. Yeah. There's also some damage on the right front as well, Garth. Yeah, so I wonder he got, maybe got, got pinched on lap cars somewhere and ended up against a wall. So, okay. Here we go. So he's by himself here, Junkadella. This is the run down to the grate. Oh, yeah, it's gone. You can, I can see it. Oh, it's broken. Yeah, it's broken on him. Something's happened. So whether he's made oh, contact with it. the wall somewhere else. But the inside rear, the unsighted rear tyre is already moving and that's why the car got away from Danny Yunkadella. Wow, and what a probably scare. the scariest part of the racetrack to lose control of the race car. How fast down that the great. Well, in the dry, it's 220 plus. So I think it's probably around the 180 mark. Yeah, you see that's gone. Yeah, there it goes again. Yeah, as soon as so he gets back on the yeah, throttle. Yeah. gone as he jumped down. So I think it's a toe link or rear suspension arm. They had been side by side a couple of laps ago and and you think, all right, side by side, how does that happen? Well, the wheels and tyres aren't straight up and down. They're cambered out, which means the bottom of the wheel and tyre sticks further out uh, from the bodywork than the top. He's done a good job to get this back. There we go. Oh, this is there. Oh. We go. So there, contact with the outside wall. There we go. Once again, our replay crew doing a smashing job of tracing that back. So heavy contact with the outside wall at Solomon Park. Results in the 77 car. They were having to come to pit lane to serve a drive-through penalty, but that does not matter now. As Danny Yunkadella slowly drags that car back to pit lane. I went digging, Garth. I have news of a penalty nature. So we saw the drive-through penalty for this car, which is now obviously redundant, but also for the 130, which is a, a key contender in our race. And it was for... Uh, failing to adhere to balance of performance and one of the balance of performance regulations is the length of a stint which started out the day at 32 laps now they were given grace to run 33 because of the changeable conditions uh, those two cars that were penalized in 36 and 37 laps respectively so quite a significant breach doesn't include safety car laps as well so i wonder if that's where they got a bit muddled because they did spend quite a lot of time under yellow ah, during that yeah. period but 36 and 37 so it's a clear breach of the balance of performance regulations that's why they're getting a drive-through penalty and that's why it's going to cost them big time and that's why all the other teams will be paying very close attention to how many laps they've done Detective Inspector Richard Crail there coming up with the goods. Nice work. Yeah, yeah. Crail. Good investigation. Coming down to two hours to go, gentlemen. Uh, now, dog tyres looking. Well, they're the unused <laughs> communication, so you can tell. So, uh, radio issues for one of the Audis. Let's see which one that was. See if we can work it out from the I want to see what he says on the other side of the I board. I think it as was well. Mark Sini, the number nine. So, and what does it, it say? Crew members saying, I don't know if he saw it. So, what does it say on the other side? We, we hear you. you. The dog will be, For lucky dog. if there's a safety car, yeah. a lucky dog, because they're within shouting distance of their Pro-Am rivals. So, they've actually played a really good race. Hallmark Property Group and MPC, as the Caltex car is sadly going to be pushed back into pit lane. Truly. This pit stop won't count as their drive-through penalty, fortunately not. <laughs> so, but should they fix this car and get going again, they're going to have to come do a back penalty. in again and do a yeah. drive-through penalty. That's more but, cruel. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. The result's gone now. Hunkathea has had an awful couple of weeks. Didn't even get to drive the car. He was meant to be racing uh, in the Asian Le Mans Series finale. Uh, didn't get into uh, that at all. And here, 
that's a very uncharacteristic mistake from Danny. That's a hell of a save, though, to be yeah, fair. It is, it is. Rear, rear wheel steer, not where you want it. No, but not the first car to meet the concrete on the outside wall at Selman Park. It's happened many, many times in the past. Such a high commitment part of the racetrack with absolutely zero room for it to go wrong. It, it's the team not, going to work to try and fix it. It's not a, not a long fix, because Hukadea is staying in the car, yeah, but it's going to take matter. them out of contention. Doesn't matter. Shit. Well, and the best news that I can give you guys is when they put the car up on the air jacks, the wheel didn't sag, so the piece that is broken is a singular piece. It's not the entire uh, conjuncture of the A-arm, but rather one piece that has gone a little bit uh, flim -flam. and it's, it's hanging where it shouldn't, but it shouldn't be that long of a fix, assuming that they decide to fix it altogether. Yeah, I would have a good look at the rear of that car, though, because totally it was a great. pretty significant impact with the wall, given that they'll lose a lap or two here. You don't want to lose a whole car as a result of hurrying to get it back out on the racetrack. So, importantly, Anton Guven put the 130 Gripper M AMG Mercedes a lap down there. So, after their drive-through penalty for Dave Reynolds, he loses a lap. So that is an important little note to make as strategy starts to play out and this goes on. Headlamp flash button. Firing off. It's now up towards the leaded skies above Mount Panorama. Just add water for excitement. Don't really need to do much of that normally at the record bath is 12 hours but this has been a very different looking race for 2024 added a lot of variables in supercars season 2024 a lot has been learnt a lot has changed and we've got a lot to look forward to it starts with the Bathurst Superfest. Following the Bathurst 12-hour, it's time to kick off the new season at the thrifty Bathurst 500. Brace yourself for another great race, Australia. It is showtime. This year, a new champion will be crowned. Take your pick. It could be anyone's. Who gets the job done today? Ticket information can be found at supercars.com. Supercars, unforgettable. That's next weekend here at the mountain. Two 250k races, two shootouts as well. Think of it as two completely different race meetings. And if you can't be here, if you don't get your tickets to supercars.com. Uh, and if you're one of the internationals, don't forget the Supercars Super Pass. Do like Shay and I do. We can follow it all around the world. And all the details are at supercars.com forward slash Super Pass. Watch it live, watch it when you like. Superview is a great Super thing. Fish, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll have that. I can't believe you're not staying to see a supercar race at Mount Panorama. It's a, it's a bad piece of logistical planning. Yeah. I know you've got to go to the World Endurance Championship oh, in poor Qatar. Excuse, poor so hang on, next weekend, it, it's Superbikes at uh, Phillip Island. Yeah. It's Prologue at Qatar, a track I haven't been to at LaSalle, and here for supercars. And I really wanted to do all three of those. But well, Chad wouldn't love me the jet or the helicopter. Two of those are in Australia. We can get Chad's jet. You can do Saturday at Phillip Island. You can do Sunday here at Bathurst. Yeah. Supercars forward slash super few is uh, what I was trying to get my uh, mouth around there. It's a fabulous service. All the details are there for you. Watch it live or watch it when. Here's the top three in the Pro-Am class. Linus Stern, this is all for position. So, Alex Ribeiros, Harry King, Jordan Love. Linus Stern battling it out. Yeah. Oh, Luke Yildon, Valmont Audi, just a little bit wide. Does keep it on the bitumen. It's a Craft Bamboo team. Continue to look at this car and the rate at which they were repairing it has slowed up somewhat. Yeah. So. It well, you was called it significant off. contact with the wall. I think Alex Ramirez is just staying in there because he doesn't want to face the team. So, 
I, you know, you're looking at potential drive shaft issues straight into the yeah. gearbox. Yeah. Uh, you know those yeah. cars very well. They're pretty sturdy. Yeah, but that, that was, was a, a big, big hit. hit. Yeah, yeah. And for somehow, like all concrete walls are hard, but that one seems excessively hard. Yeah. I don't know how, but any car that goes in there is serious, serious damage. Yeah. Uh, and this on the socials from Kitch. Thanks, Kitch. Uh, hashtag. B12HR. Anyone who thinks that Mount Panorama is Panama, Panorama, isn't that hard. Uh, Danny Hunkadea is an example. Numero uno that it actually is. Such a lot of experience for Danny. And again, small margins, big consequences. Yeah, unfortunately, it was pointed out to me that's two years in a row for him at this place as well. So that's going to sting. And that's why he's still in the cockpit. Yeah, he doesn't want to talk to anybody. Now, the reason Manti EMA are looking reasonably active down in pit lane is because they're very close to a pit stop. Could well be this lap. 31 laps in this stint so far for Ayankan Guven. Now, they will be good. You would imagine to go to the end from here with one potential pit stop, depending on the pace of this race. And this is the problem. If they're handing out drive-through penalties for going longer than the stint distance, you are going to have to be really confident that the last time you pit is 33 laps or less away from the chequered flag. The problem is, this isn't a lap count race. No, it's a timed race. That's when you have lap-based strategy around a timed race. Correct. So that's where it's you have to be laps. so, so careful. So another number you need to remember is you can't do more than an hour and a half driving time continuous. This pit stop's taking place with an hour and 52 and a half minutes left in the race. So you need to be a little bit careful of that one. Still a few regulations you need to jump around. So you leave? Minutes. So oh, 150 yeah. minutes. In minutes. So that one's fine. Yes. Tick, tick. So it's over two. One less. Yeah. Tick. One less box to tick. Which will be a relief because they're the way they've spread their drivers out. So are you leaving Chan in here? Are you putting Vanto in here? Are you? Matty's hasn't been out of that car for an hour yet, has he? So he can't quite get back in. I think it's Vanto, and you're making your final stop probably with well, it's going to be an hour, isn't it? 32 laps. You're making your final stop with about 50 minutes to go, and you're throwing M. Campbell at it. It's a nice luxury to have, isn't it? Yeah. You've got Lawrence Van Thor and Matt Campbell available to you. We'll find out what they've done when it triggers the timing loop at the end of pit lane, and there's a little RFID chip in the driver's helmet that will tick over and tell us who's behind the wheel. So, Goven out. I'm actually, I tell and a lie. In. Yeah, I, te I tell a lie because of the slower lap times, that's been all, well over an hour. That, that stage. Yeah, I did so, wonder that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking back to two minute ish laps. Yeah. And uh, what it, would it be enough? That was nearly an hour and 20 minutes for Chan that time around. So I, I think they'll be running this last one to time. Yeah. On the basis, as long as they know they can get to the end and it's not 33 laps, because they're giving them a lapse grade brace on that stint time because they're, they're not normal conditions. So. So this is Pro-Am, is it? Or is that, that's our leader around the Gripper M car. So for a minute there, the Gripper M car was unlapped because Anton Guven came to pit lane. But now the new leader, Bastian Boos, has got around Dave Reynolds in the 130 AMG Mercedes. So if it's not one Porsche leading, it's the other Porsche leading. And this car <laughs> has been in the front five for the majority of the race after qualifying deep well out of position for that car. They've got themselves back in the game. But the Vortex is back out as well after its trials and tribulations. That's another team who uh, don't know the meanings of the word give up or possibly go to pub. Let <laughs> me say that in French. Allez au pub. So we don't expect to see Bastian Boos in the lane for Probably 236, so we're 229 now, if not a little bit further down. So that last stopped on lap 204 of this race. So where the EMA Mante car is at a little disadvantage, their windows in this last hour and 50 minutes are very tight. Correct. So with the Bastion Boos Fan Phantom Global car going deeper into the race, it opens the windows in the last part of the race. So strategy for Mante 
They've almost got one hand tied behind their back a little bit. There's only so much that they can do yeah. within the boxes that they're constrained by. And the driving car. time, fuel economy, time to go. The car with the biggest operating box is triple two because their last stop was on lap 210. Yeah. So they've yep. got another four laps up their sleeve, pushing right into that final hour of the race. And then they can dictate when they make their final stop and who they tool up to drive that final little stint to the flag. Actually, bizarrely, for the car that has been in the, the lead so much, the 912, a little bit of full course yellow or safety car even, where the lap time is longer, that actually helps them out. Yeah, well, that just changes the whole context of the race again. So, so many variables still to go. Just under an hour and 50 minutes left in this one. And at no stage in this race would we have thought that the triple two Scott Taylor Motorsport AMG Mercedes was actually looking the strongest no. of the AMG fleet. Correct. So he said that they'd done a great job strategy-wise. They'd played themselves in, they'd floated to the top. They're taking a little bit of pain by triple stinting a wet tire. But ultimately it's going to work for them should it play out as we think. And they'll be right in the game into the last round of stops. I still think if it runs green, 9-12 is in the best position, but they'll have they'll have the least amount of stuff underneath them at the end of the race if it comes down to a, an all-in battle like it so often does here at Mount Panorama. So they should still get track position. They'll be the first of all the cars to pit. So they'll shuffle back to the front, but then they'll be chased down by cars that could be lighter on fuel that could have better rubber beneath them as well. Chad? Yeah, the biggest issue for car 912 that I've got is I've got them getting to lap 261 uh, as their next pit stop. And that would happen to be probably about nine laps before the finish. So it's cars like this one on screen that are somewhere in that window being able to get to that magic 270 marker, which is likely where this race is going to finish. We'll know a little bit more sort of as the, the laps tick by, but obviously. But um, I still don't see that 912 getting home. Uh, without making another stop, obviously, but there are others that can make it home with just the one more stop. So you guys remember way back when, when we had that flurry of safety cars and teams were stopping half a tank and topping off and running alternate strategies to each other, and we were saying, well, it's going to change the play of the race for someone somewhere later in the day, and it's played out for the 912 that one of those half stints somewhere in there it's made it things much more challenging yeah. for them yeah. here. Yeah. And that was, what was that? Seven hours ago yeah, when all that started. So you, you, you're constantly working backwards from the end of the race. You just don't know the decisions you make then, how they affect the race later in the day. And in terms of laps, you don't know where the end of the race is. still is yet, which That's is a, a moving target. A quirk of endurance racing. Uh, while we're unpicking race strategy and trying to decipher what's going on, Jack Perkins is busy out and about and patrolling the top of Mount Panorama. Back up here on the top of the mountain, and I've got to say there's a lot of fans around, but I'm keen to know who everyone is supporting. Now, who are you kids supporting? The Green Porsche. Uh, the Sun Energy Mercedes. Green Porsche. Green Porsche. Green Porsche here. Now, what about the adults up the back? Who are you supporting, sir? Lounsey. Lounsey, I can tell by the shirt. What about you? Yeah, Lounsey in the Merc, mate. And what about you, sir? Richard Crail. Well, what do you know, Krause? There's supporters up here supporting you, mate. That's bloody good. How much did that cost you, <laughs> Richard Crail? Like last year, Garth, I tell you, absolutely nothing. So you've managed to do a commercial deal. It's cost you zero to get exposure for your fan club. So that's it's, that's nice it's work. The fans. Do I fan get? Club. Can I get a discount on my merch? No, because all of the merchandise money goes to charity, Garth. The Childhood Cancer Association of South Australia. I'm glad you clarified that. It's not the Richard Crail Foundation. Foundation. It's not. No. Well done, Rich. We do have a bit of fun with you, but you do work your backside off for this event. Oh. And we give you a hard time. We know that it takes an army. It took to Saturday last year. I got 10 hours into the race this year for that. that we wanted so. to make you sweat for this one. We wanted to make you sweat for this one. There's no point doing it in the first hour. Let you sweat for a little while. Oh. I, I'm going to tell you now it was going to be worse because we were going to have the full merch set up with the cap and the flags. Don't give away what we're doing next year. We, could, <laughs> we couldn't do it, Grills, because it's sold out. Couldn't get any. Yeah. We're going to have to get organised earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's enough of this. Let's even, hear from Shay. Even Shay couldn't get any, could you, Shay? 
No, but I didn't try, guys, in all honesty. Um, last year, I spoke to Jules Gunon before the final stint of the race. Well, now we're in a situation where, again, it's getting close to the final stint. You and Luca and Kenny have all done a great job, and you're still in a position to fight for this win. Does it feel similar to the previous years? No, I don't think so. This is a, another crazy Bathurst 12-hour. Uh, These conditions are really difficult. Uh, a bit earlier, when there was a lot of water, there was a lot of aqua planning at the top of the mountain. It was really hard to stay on track. But now it looks like the Porsche are quite not on our range yet, but we will, Kenny told us it's all in, so we will, we will definitely go for it. We don't know who is going to finish because we are again really, really close on, drive, on driving time. I've already done more than four hours something, so we can't put, you know, it's very complex for us. So let's see, I see Luca is catching uh, quite well the second place car, so let's see what we can do. Good luck. Thank you very much. And there it is. There's that bit of mental arithmetic that has to go on whilst you also make sure the car is fueled. It's got the right Pirelli tyres on. Now, pass for position. AMG on AMG. There's that button again. I wonder if they can get this one done without contact. What's the over and under on that, John? <laughs> <laughs> Very small odds on that one, John. So. This is the... Oh, Lucas Stoltz locked the rears down into the final corner. So, not easy to drive, that car. It wasn't a very overly positive Shulgun on. Things were going to work out in their favour this time around. But that's not going to stop Lucas Stoltz having a go to get around Thomas Randall for second place. It's still not... I mean, it's not drying up at all, is it? There's a bit more... Showers that come through. Yeah. Heavy downpours that blow across the track and then disappear again so and it's funny i i entirely believe you're going on when he says we don't know no i, I, yeah, I totally. don't think they do often you get a bit of pr speak from race car drivers and teams at this point of the day where they keep the deck of cards fairly close to the chest but right now this is an incredibly difficult to read motor race and the complexities that have been added this year around stint length and that pit stop time of, as well have just added to the challenge of unpicking this race strategy. And what is the maximum amount of time a single driver can do, Krell? So you have in total look. for the entire race? Yeah. 340 minutes. Right, OK. So he's already done, he said, a little over four hours. That's 24, so he's probably all right to get back in. What we got left? We've got 100 minutes left. So 5.6 hours. Just over five and a half hours. And, and I will happily admit I had to get the calculator out for that. So a driver can do 5.6 hours. That's why this rule we've been talking about with Kenny Habul in this car, Liam Talbot in the 22, works. Because your two pro drivers can do 11 hours and 10 minutes. Uh, they can do 11 hours and 20 minutes of a 12-hour race. Yeah. So your third driver only has to do 40 minutes if they're bronze rank. But what it does, as Chad and I especially have talked about with the Pirelli pit bunker, is reduce your flexibility. And that's where they're at now. That's the problem, yeah. is that they don't know how much time they've got to play with before the end of the race with each yeah. driver. And that is the massive challenge. And if you go over that, you might get the chequered flag first, but you won't win the race because the stewards will clamp down on that very, very quickly. Coming around to pit stop time at the front of the field with exactly 100 minutes to go. That it is fairly easy to work out. Started all the way back in the dark at a quarter to six this morning in front of a huge crowd. As the sun came up over the Blue Mountains, we had some fantastic racing. Yasha Shaheen tipped into the bunker at the top of the mountain in the battle for the pro and category. The first big incident took out one of the real hopefuls for the race, the WRT BMW. And down in their garage, was, they were inconsolable. Been a little bit of uh, pro on arm action as well that's been penalised at various times through the race with the GT3 drivers being uh, less than patient. And then Mother Nature took a hold and played her hand. Lightning and thunder and well, a bit of contact at the top 
of the mountain as well. But in amongst that, some phenomenal racing. Oftentimes it's been EMG on EMG, but also that blue Porsche number 13 carving its way through the Phantom team, belying the fact that this is their first race. And then wondrous stuff at Australia's fastest motorsport corner. An uncharacteristic error by Daniel Hukatea broke the left rear suspension on the triple two car, and that, wow, guys were not happy about what was going on there, on the 77 car, excuse me. And that left the Porsches back in again. At the moment, it's Bastian Bus who leads from the triple two car in second. And here is the tail of the tape with the Pirelli leaderboard. Just under 20 seconds, the gap between first and second with Lucas Stoltz just menacingly sitting there. This is the two-time winners in the 75. Uh, good results for some of the pro-arms, getting well inside the top 10 uh, for the leading cars now. And that's going to be a decent battle to the end of the race as well as they've now got all of their pro drivers to do the last 98 minutes or so. And now uh, Bozell, class leaderboard, has Bastian Boos leading overall. Pro Am Jordan Love at the moment for Triple Eight GMR, but my goodness, has he got some competition right behind him? Wall Racing, Tony Delberto with the beautiful Lamborghini in the red and white colours uh, leading there in GT4. Uh, Daniel Beliski in the Mercedes number 19. That's been uh, out a long time. And the invitation class, uh, well, that one has, as I said before, been a poison chalice so still communications issue clearly there Garth from the guys with their makeshift boards um, that is not a class that I'm familiar with here two wheels and two stroke but that looks too much fun yeah. you know where that is that's the inside of turn two there's a motocross track on someone's property up there. It's a great <laughs> looking race. Every track, track walk, yeah. when you come back here, you have a look at that track and it's getting bigger. <laughs> so yeah. Clearly, the, the kids are getting older because the jumps are getting bigger and more brave. It's something that's very cool to check out every time you come to Bathurst. So, yes, still radio issues down there at Audi. I'm still not exactly sure which car that is, but it's a nervous sign that you hang out when it's box next because you're never sure whether they actually see it. So they're trying real hard to get their attention. It's the Cini, Mark Cini Hallmark car. There yeah. it is. So you can only do that so many times before the car runs out of fuel. So you certainly hope that the driver has oh, seen pack. what you need to see. Let's hear from Jack in the lane. Thanks, Garth. Just an update on Jules Gunon's driving time. We've got confirmation from the officials. He has an hour and 40 driving time left, and it's just clicked over to one hour 36. So he's right to get back in and see it through to the checkered flag. And I also tapped Matt Campbell on the shoulder and said, hey, mate, are you getting back in this car? He said, absolutely. I said, can you tell me when? He said, uh, sometime between now and then. <laughs> yeah, that's a good race car driver answer. That's the kind of answer you'd give, Jacko. So an hour and 40 to go. Well, that's good proof. So that's unpicking one piece of the puzzle. So Lucas Stolls will hand over Sun Energy One cars. He's got two laps left in this stint right now. So the triple two will run longer. They've got more laps up their sleeve, which gives them more flexibility. So you can put Jogun on in car 75 from now, and he'll get to the end on driver time. You have to stop again. Yeah, and then you've got to make sure you don't breach the 32 lap stint time distance as well. So that's where the window on the triple two car comes in. And they can go a bit deeper in this one, and it gives them much more flexibility for the last stop, whenever that may fall. Because you, as you get closer to the end of the 12 hours, you can project more accurately what length that last stint is going to be. By my reckoning, Lucas Stoltz will be coming in this time or the next time around, as he's already on his 32nd lap since he was last in the lane so there's frantic calculations going on here in the booth um, fortunately we have pieces of paper so we don't have to take shoes and socks off that's uh, would be pleasant in front of the field now 20 and a half seconds the gap between Bastian Bus Porsche young driver won the shootout at Pont de Mal on the Algarve Southern Europe at the back end of last year, three days of uh, testing, racing, running. 
PR. Uh, and that has been oh, a door open to a career for many drivers in the past. Traffic playing its part again here, gentlemen, and nicely driven by the Vortex 701. Philippe Bonnell, who is Vortex, but that has led to a closing up. Stoltz was coming anywhere. He's going to come to the pits shortly, but he still wants to maximise where he is on the track. Both of these drivers need a little bit of race smarts here because they are in slightly different car races at this point of the afternoon. So we're a pit stop from this car very soon. Tom Randall can keep lapping. Race smart, hopefully, at the kink. Will he get down the inside? Uh, Randall's going to not let him through there. Does Randall pull it up? Yes, he does. Nice job. So Thomas Randall more than up to the task as our race leader, Bastion Boost, comes to the lane. So this is an important stop relative to Randall who comes to the lane. So that's got us by surprise. We expected Randall Whoa. to go much deeper into the this stint than Lucas Stoltz. So Stoltz now with clear air and will assume the lead as the two leaders come to the lane. Well, I, I reckon this is Stoltz on his 33rd lap now. Yeah, he'll be in this lap. Yeah. And in theory, we'll hand over to Shulkunon, who'll be good to go to the end. So another massive day of workmanlike stints from Lucas Stoltz. He got to qualify the car yesterday, their, their previous two wins. Luke has done a lot of the grunt work in the middle of the day and all the hero stuff was done by Jules Gounon. So Jules, just an incredible display of teamwork and mateship between them, said, no, it's your turn. You go and qualify the car, Luca. He did a really solid job yesterday. And uh, he has been spectacular today in really challenging conditions. So STM go to work. They were scheduled for somewhere around lap 242, 243. So they've come in a little bit earlier than anticipated. Tire changing crew on that team haven't done much work for the last three pit stops, so they would have had to wake up. They've triple, <laughs> triple stinted those wets to get them in the position they are. So battle guns, where did we yeah, put those? A bit of a refresher course for the <laughs> tire changing crew. Here's a battle for the lead. Porsche on Porsche. Net race lead, and Bastion Boost will return in front of Ayanka and Guven. That is critical. That's big from Boost. That's massive. Yeah. So that stint has been huge for the blue Porsche. The Grello oh. one's got hot tyres and a hot driver fired up, ready to go. And he gets oh, it very big wide. Idea. And it won't get off here, it'll spin up. Yeah, through. Goobin will go, he'll go. No, not oh, yet. Boost not it's yet. Oh. And still not yet. Boost is not going to give him the inside line, but eventually Goobin around the outside. But there's a little window into Bastion Boost about what he is prepared to do when it comes down to it. Newest Porsche young driver against established Porsche works driver with Thomas Loudenbach, head of Porsche Motorsport, down there watching in pit lane. I think that was all right. No, that, that was good hard racing. There. Hey, they didn't even touch. No. So that was good hard racing. Not EMG like yeah, that. <laughs> Really enjoying what Bastion Boost is doing in that car. And now Lucas Stolz peels off from the race lead. So one lap lead for 75 added to their tally. And he should hand this car over now. It's 116 of the 237 laps in today's race. Lucas Stolz, a very, very busy boy. He said yesterday he does the grunt work. Yeah, all of there it. you go. All 116 of laps of 237. May as well be half the race so far. What do you want? Chan, Chan Kuvin's done 110. Yeah. yeah. And he's still in the car and going again. How's oh, great stuff? Racing room. When we talk about racing room, it's a, a fairly broad concept, racing room. That's racing room. Yep. Yep. If you want to know what racing room is, then clear that bit of tape. See how much of the throttle Anshin Guven had to get out of it at two and wait for Bastion Boost to collect his car on the cold tyre. Couldn't clear him at the kink, had to hang on the outside. Couldn't clear him at the cutting, had to go all the way around the outside. And the warm tyre worked for him and gave him track position. Good hard racing between the two Porsches. And look how there's the gap. Out. That's warm tyre versus warming tyre. So whilst Bastion Buse did lose the race lead as a net gain, that's been that's worked well for the 13 car. Five seconds he's pulled out in the space of uh, that lap. Now here comes. Shilgunon out of the pit lane. A 
it's not Shield Guno. So Lucas Stoltz scored still in that car to finish the race. So we talked about Lucas Stoltz, Garth, being given the honour of qualifying, and it looks like he's going to do at least... We're going to need to check his 150 minutes on that. He's, I don't think he's going to go to the end. He's still got one more stop to go. Uh, Lucas Stoltz? Yeah. Yes. No, they, they will stop again. Yeah. yeah. And I would um, imagine that's when Jill Gunon will climb aboard. And the 75 Sun Energy one, AMG Mercedes. On that driver point time, Jack Perkins has just pointed out that Tom Randall's stop was to driver time. Yeah, OK. Not yeah. fuel. Yeah. yeah. Which we saw with the leading Porsche early on when Matt Campbell was in the car. He was getting close to that 150 minutes of consistent driving. Remember that once you get out of the car, you've got to be out of the car for 60 minutes, one hour, before you can get back in again. Now, for most three-driver cars, that doesn't matter. But for these guys who effectively have got the arm driver out of the way... Turn themselves into a two-driver car. It effectively yeah. becomes a two-driver car from, yeah. from whenever that arm driver's gone. At the end of the day, we said earlier, the best strategy is to drive fast, and this <laughs> has been the fastest car. Doesn't matter if it's wet or dry. And they continue to find themselves at the front of the field. So, still feel like they've got one more strategy curveball. They've got to get themselves around, just with where they fall, being slightly off sequence with the majority of the field. rain for a little while so <laughs> just you know often we sit here and we wish we wish rain to come yeah, it's clear saying, we got over there yeah, the saying. weather doesn't come from over there yeah, john blue <laughs> skies and our commentary box we know <laughs> and that's all that matters it's just it's, it's just not about due south <laughs> it's not drying rapidly though no. they're still doing 220s and if you're with us early in the day, we're talking about that crossover time being somewhere around the 2 minute 15, 2 minute 16 range mm. when you get off the wet weather tyre and put a slick on. Busy behind, BMW versus Mercedes AMG. Raffaele Marchiello fending off Brock Feeney for 7th and 8th position. These two cars still on the lead lap of the race. They'll need some help to get into contention to win it. But every position counts at this stage of the day at Mount Panorama. And Brock Feeney gets a good run out of Turn 1 and will draw alongside with the help of some aero assist. But as you pointed out earlier, Garth, that BMW's got some engine in a straight line. Yeah, straight line handling in that BMW is pretty good, isn't it? So it climbs the mountain very, very well. And also we think this 888 National Storage AMG Mercedes has got a bit of bodywork damage, so that won't help its straight line efficiency through the air. Uh, guys... Uh, I'm looking at the Nats off timing, which you can get on the internet. You can watch it. Just see. So this is for position. That's Christopher Haas are getting yeah. past Cameron Waters. I, I to think that car's got a car to play as well, actually. The 22 Audi. Uh, Lucas Stoltz's pit stop time, line to line, was three tenths of a second too quick last time around. The scene at Mount Panorama overlooking Brock's skyline and delighted to confirm that the official attendance, 47,333 people over the three days. It's the second largest attendance across three days in Bathurst 12-hour history. Wow. So well done and thank you to everyone that's turned out. It was a record number of camping sales yeah. for the event this year. So the campgrounds have been absolutely pumping since Wednesday from one famous endurance race to another. The Nürburgring 24 hour will be part of the Intercontinental GT Challenge later on this year. So just over 47,000 people. This is now one of the premier events oh. on the calendar. Give Speaking yourselves a big round of applause. Yeah, outstanding. Speaking of premier, let's go down and catch up in the Triple Two Garage with a guy who's done a huge amount of work today. We've got the headset on young gun, Thomas Randall. Hello, my friend. Good afternoon. How's your day been? Yeah, good afternoon, boys. Uh, a baptism, baptism of fire was probably the best way to explain it. I was pretty happy when Cam was out in the wet and then Brendan, our Brendan and Merco, our engineers, said, 
uh, you're in next, and if it's raining, we'll deal with it. And I said, well, I've actually never driven a GD3 car in the wet before. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty tricky, obviously, never driven this wet tyre and, and just trying to get used to the ABS and just trying different settings, um, playing with the TC, the, AAB, um, the, uh, the brake bias. And, you know, the intensity of the rain just kept changing throughout the whole, well, uh, double two and a half stints. I mean, we, we triple stinted the wet tyre then, and... Um, yeah, I guess it sort of worked for us. I mean, I think my fastest lap was like my last lap and pretty cool to be racing good on there at the end. I think we had a pretty nice battle and to get the car, well, yeah, to be up, I think we were P2 when, when I pitted, I'm not quite sure, but um, yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle for our car this weekend. Our um, strengths aren't where we want them and our weaknesses aren't where we want them, but um, <laughs> the rain, I think, has sort of leveled the playing field a bit. I mean, the Porsches, I think, are probably not as strong over the top, but they're very strong in a straight line and that's something you need here, um, and I think that's where the wet weather has helped us, using, utilising the car's strengths. I mean, yeah, just a phenomenal job from the whole team at Scotty Taylor Motorsport. Ash Seawood, who runs the car, it's been an amazing program with, with Cam Waters, Craig Lowndes. Um, I've, I've had a blast. We've had so many laughs, and I guess the weather station, the, uh, you know, the spider, the snakes and ladders all have come in handy. And what will you take away from this then? Uh, you know, whatever happens at this point, let's not talk about results because I don't want to jinx anything. Cam's in the car now. The car's sitting in fifth. There's some pit stops to, to happen ahead of you. Um, what will you take away from this, win, lose or draw? I think just the experience. I mean, I've never done a Bathurst 12 hour before. You know, I've never properly raced a GD3 car before until today. The boys let me start and, and this morning in the dark, which was uh, an amazing experience. The visor was a bit loose, kept, kept coming down, which you don't want when it's dark. Um, but yeah, just the experience of it all. I mean, like I said, got to thank Scotty Taylor for, for letting me drive his car and uh, everyone putting the trust in me to drive it. Um, yeah, as I said, it, it's been a blast and fingers crossed, uh, yeah, I could do more GT racing in the future. Tom, I don't know if you've got a screen here, but your car's in the middle of a pretty good battle with Raffaello Marciello right now. Hey, tell us about that triple stint on the wet tyres, especially when the rain was coming through and it was raining quite heavily. You would have lost a lot of tread there, so was the car difficult to manage in those conditions? I mean, I think, well, uh, Brendan was saying that people were putting new tyres on and actually going slower. They couldn't activate the tyre. The, the I'm not sure why. I mean, but it seemed like the, the used tyre was OK, and I think because it kept raining, it kept the tyres cool, and we had a couple of full-course yellows in there as well, which kept them cool. I mean, I certainly wasn't cool. We had, unfortunately, the helmet there left us uh, about an hour and a half into the race. Um, and, yeah, so it's been bloody hot in the car. But, um, yeah, as you can see, I've utilised a fair bit of uh, physical strength. Um, yeah, I only had COVID a couple of weeks ago, but, um, yeah, look, no excuses. Uh, look, as you said, whatever happens from here on out, um, you know, it's been, it's been a blast. We, uh, we started 13th, and, yeah, we got up to second there. Cam knows how to drive in the wet. He's, uh, he's a master around Bathurst, and he does a lot of dirt racing. So if someone can handle the wet, I reckon it's him. You see into the end now? Can't take that. Oh, you can't. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Oh, it's just stop. us. It's only us, and then everybody <laughs> listening on RSL and around the world, that's I'm all. I'm going to leave you boys guessing. Oh, you tease. Hey, uh, Thomas, you've been raising money for Prostate Cancer Foundation. As this team has done so superbly for a long time. I, I know it's affected your life, not necessarily prostate cancer, but just talk to being part of that program and this great initiative that Scotty and his family and Rebecca and um, Craig and Lara have been behind so heavily over the last, well, three years now. Um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I, I think our sport, uh, there's so much opportunity to do stuff like that. And, you know, this is something that Scott's been doing for a couple of years now. I mean, one in five men, uh, die um, by the time they're 85 from prostate cancer. You know, I went through a cancer battle myself. It wasn't prostate cancer, but in that region. Um, so, yeah, something close to my heart. And look, i got to thank everyone who's donated across the weekend. We've been going pretty hard with the uh, with the, the coin bucket and, and uh, Lara Lowndes has been on the card machine. So whenever someone says they don't have coins, we've got the backup with the FPOS machine. Um, and, you know, we've been having a blast. Every time someone donates, um, I was playing the harmonica and, and Scotty was playing the, the slide whistle. So... We've been having a blast. Um, yeah, that, I think that's the main thing. Uh, and the awareness side of it, you know, get checked. It's on the rear wing because um, not enough men get checked early enough. Where, where's the harmonica come from, mate? And do you have one handy to play us a little? Uh, you play us out? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't actually carry it on me in the car, but um, it was actually from a shop. I think it's called the Pear Tree Cafe. And I, I mean, I just bought a whole chunk of stuff. And I think Scotty was looking at me like, you know, I'm this 
six-year-old kid, you know, I've wandered to the other end of the supermarket. Um, and, uh, but, hey, he was pretty encouraging. And, um, you know, like I said, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. We're looking forward to seeing you next week in the Thrifty Bathurst 500 for Tickford Racing in the Castrol car. But uh, congratulations on your Herculean effort today, mate. Well done, and hope the rest of the afternoon goes well. I appreciate it, boys. Thanks for the chat. Well done, man. He's a great young character, yeah, one of the future superstars of our sport, I think, and already some great results coming his way in the Repco Supercars Championship, and he'll be on the grid this year. They produced a very cool promotional video, Tickford Racing, yeah. launching their liveries for the year. And it's alarmingly good at the acting thing as well, Tom. Multi-talented. He's done a little bit of commentary with me in the past, and he's frighteningly good at that too. He put us all out of a gig one day. Next week, 23, 25 of February, head to supercars.com to get your tickets. And if you're overseas, you can sign up for Superview as well to watch it online. That's next week. This is now. We've got an hour and 18 to go in this one, and Shay is busy in the lane with one of the drivers who, if you had started off at the beginning of the day saying to Kelvin Vandalinder, all right, we've got just over an hour to go, your car's in the top five, you got a shot at this win, would you have taken that? Yeah, I really would have, to be honest. I think um, in the dry, it was very difficult to overtake early on, so we were struggling to make strides to the front. Um, and then the wet came, it looked like we had a bit more options, a bit more ways to play, and uh, yeah, got into the top three again, but unfortunately, yeah, just missing that outright pace at the end now. It would be kind of poetic to have the two brothers, one get pole and one get the race win. Uh, Sheldon, obviously, his race coming to an end a lot earlier on. Has he been supporting you throughout all of this, your race now? Sorry, just say that last bit again. I didn't quite... has, has Sheldon been supporting you in your race now since his is over? I think he's probably in the room somewhere in the hotel just uh, drowning his sorrows, to be honest. I'm really sorry for him and the, and the team, obviously, they didn't deserve that. Um, I was right behind following, obviously, saw it happen. And it was so unnecessary so early in the race, but... Uh, yeah, that's racing. It's happened to all of us at some point. Um, we keep fighting. I think we've got a sniff at the podium. Um, really depends how the how the rain plays out. You know, uh, so many factors to it. But uh, just great to be back here at Bathurst. I think my brother would have said the same. It's every year an honour to come back. And despite him having a bit of bad luck, he, I'm sure he's uh, really happy to come back. This has now become a race where there is no wiggle room in the regulation. So you just have to win it on the racetrack. That puts a smile on your face, I know, to go out and make the driver make the difference, doesn't it? Yeah, I think on, you, you can see it either way. Obviously, we've lost a couple of our strategic options, which we had in the past in Bathurst. We, we had the fuel saving and uh, a couple of things we could do in the past. Nowadays, it's outright speed, and if you can't overtake, then you kind of follow in the pack. So I think today the rain has spiced up the race, but I think if it was dry, it would have probably been a bit of a, yeah, just driving along in the train. So I'm happy the way things worked out. I think the, the fans hopefully had a great time watching. Um, and yeah, still just over an hour to go, so still lots to happen. Good luck at the trophy. Thanks a lot, guys. Just over an hour to go, and now it's 16 to go. And the times are coming down, particularly at the front of the field. Under 2.20 now for Achan Guven in the leading Porsche, the 912 Grello car. We reckon about 16s is where you are. The one thing I would say is a lot of the times are coming down when you're staying on line, Garth, this is not like it was before where there was enough heat in the day and enough heat in the track to be able to dry out the whole track. It's just on the racing line. It is a one-groove track if you were to go on the slicks right now. Ah, it certainly is. I've been noticing and keeping an eye on the times that they're starting to drop under the 220s. Anton Guven, last time around, 290, so the lap times continue to drop. But you're right, John, it is not drying out at the same rate which it dried out this morning, where the track was so much more radiant heat in it from the sun and the heat of the day. That heat of the day is gone. It's much, much cooler now, a cool breeze. And the wind is actually blowing from the opposite direction than it was yeah. this morning as well. So a much different weather pattern across the circuit than what we had in the midpoint of the day. But should it not rain again, we will go to slicks at some stage before yeah. this race, and that creates a whole other issue around when do you do that, when's the crossover, how does that fit into your driving time, how does that fit into your fuel strategy? So lots of interesting options available from a strategy point of view. Brock Feeney in the 888 AMG Mercedes comes to the lane. That looked like... Michael Grenier, suited and booted, ready to jump aboard that car. And I would say he's bringing that car home. It's Grenier. Yeah. So remember, this car's got some bodywork damage. So I'm curious to see whether they dive underneath and have a bit of a look at that. Because when Brock Feeney left pit lane, we heard it. And it was pretty significant. So 
They'll do the normal service straight away. Driver change gets underway. Fuel rig connects. And you can do remedial work whilst the car is up, so long as you have the solid safety stands, safety yep. stands yep. around the jacking points. Uh, it, it, well, they're not looking at the front. Not yet. They haven't offered tyres to no, that car either, so they're the, learning as well. They learnt from the triple two yep. team, whether they stay with the warm tyre. There's the team car, the 88. That's got some sparks, and has that got some issues underneath Same as well? Place. In the mid part of the car, and that car was off earlier with uh, Prince Jeffrey behind the wheel. As we circle back to our race leader, 10 seconds the margin. But a reminder, this Porsche is slightly out of sync with the other key contenders for the race. And the big question mark now is, can they make it to the end on one stop or two? And they will be the first to roll into pit lane. That's the big question mark with Ayan Can Guven leading the race. Jack? Yeah, guys, really cool to be down here with Valentino Rossi. You didn't drive the car in the wet, but with just over an hour to go, P5, potential for the podium. Yeah, it's a great shame for the, for the, for the rain, uh, also for all the fans, because they take a lot of water, and, and also for us, uh, because uh, I, I, I cannot do my, my third stint on, uh, on, uh, on the wet. Uh, we prefer to let uh, Lello and Maxime continue to drive. And also for our potential, because on the drive we can fight for the victory. So, but uh, you know now, uh, if uh, the condition remain dry and we can put the slick, uh, it's not over. It's uh, more than one hour, and uh, usually if we put the slick in this condition, our car is very fast, so we can try. Have you put your helmet away, or you may jump in at the end yourself? No. Uh, uh, Maxime will go. So for me, I think that is uh, is finished. But anyway, I enjoy a lot. I make uh, more than two hours uh, on the on the car, and uh, I improve a lot of my pace compared to to last year. And I can fight with the, with the top guys. So I'm happy. I have to ask you, what do you tell your friends about Bathurst when you get back to Italy? Uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a very famous uh, racetrack in uh, in Europe, uh, because especially because we we play a lot with the simulator, you know, <laughs> and. Uh, it's a great weekend uh, because of a great atmosphere, a lot of fans, and the track is fantastic. Would you like to come back in October and race the Bathurst 1000? Yeah, uh, no, I think that I will come back in next February with, uh, with, uh, with the BMW. Perfect, mate. Thank you for your time and thank you for coming out to Bathurst. We love having you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ciao. Ciao tutti. Ciao. Hi. Ciao tutti. <laughs> he's been an absolute superstar in everything that he's done this weekend. Well, we know he's a superstar out of the race car, and I think today he proved he's a superstar yeah. inside the race car as well. He said, I'm happy, I'm happy with what he did. Yeah. Man, <laughs> he awesome. should be very yeah. happy with what he did because he's made the point that he went with the fast guys, and the fast guy that he went with was Gilles Gounon, who won this race the last three years in a row. Front splitter on the 88, so that was the... Yeah sparks that we saw on a replay earlier and that car came to the lane and they've got the got the bond on it 100 mile an hour tape you probably need 200 mile an hour tape for these cars but i'm not sure that that's going to do what they need it to do now you see colin white down at janetta would have had a couple of metal brackets uh, on that and the rivet gun straight through it he, he would have had that sorted in about 25 seconds i kid you not did a, did, a, did a fencing wire and chewing gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cable ties. Absolutely MacGyvered that to the hilt. The, the, the 24 hours at Sebring that we had a few years ago where the Janetta was there, it was all kinds of different colours uh, with tape and all kinds on it. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to stay together, particularly when you get into an hour and 10 minutes. Still a huge international audience. Hello to San Diego and Randy Sherwood watching us in the uh, on the west coast of the USA. Thank you for joining in with the conversation, all of you. It's hashtag B12HR, and there's still 70 minutes to go, and we're still scratching our head there. I'm not sure we know who's going to win this quite yet. Chen Guven making his way down Conrod Strait and starting to look for the wet edges of the racetrack. He 
been starting to tease out whether slick tyres might become an option towards the end of this one. And the crossover lap time, last time we went from wets to slicks, was just under a 2.16. And last time round, the fastest car on track was Lucas Stoltz with a 2.16.4. So we're starting to get back towards that territory that a slick tyre might be the tyre to be on. But you made the point earlier, John, that the dry line is a much narrower dry line this time around than last time when the track dried out. And you can see right there, Mikel Grenier turning in and losing the rear on a cold, wet tyre. So should you go to a slick, you need to make sure you stay well within the tram tracks. That is a dry line around the racetrack. And I know we've lost some cars through reliability and, and contact. There's still enough traffic out there even accounting for the fact that one or two might come back as walking wounded in the last hour to take the check and flag whether or not they're officially classified there's a, a whole other uh, bit of calculation to do to to make that but people would like to come out and take the check and flag so you're going to have to go offline and people are hunting yeah for the for the wet now you certainly have to i mean there's enough of a dry line for it to be overheating the wet tire so any chance that you can, you go looking for some standing water to cool the tyre. But given what we know about how long it takes to heat up the slick, when it, even when it was warm, much warmer than it is now, having to go offline to pass someone and lose all the heat out of your slick that you've assiduously built up, Ah, it's going to be tough. So what was also interesting, just tracking those lap times, it went from 220, 220, 220, 219, bang. 16, <laughs> yeah, 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're not far. So they're they're all just running now until that next pit stop, yeah. where they can hopefully put slicks on and fuel, and then just get to the end. The reason that that happens, Rich, is the track. It almost opens up. You can see it go from dark grey to light grey when the dry line actually opens up, and it opens up rapidly once it starts to dry out. So you can actually see down through the S's and the dipper there. It was actually still quite wet because it's shaded from the trees through there. Lucas Stoltz up the inside into Forest Elbow. So, although we're starting to see the lap times for the crossover, I'm not sure the conditions are there yet, but they're coming. They are certainly coming, and you do not want to bowl a wide right there. And Bastian Boos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right on cue. So that is on cue as far as staying in the tram tracks, and that's on a hot, wet tyre. So, we're still some time away from a slick tyre, but will that line up with the next round of pit stops? Fascinating strategy-wise how this is going to play out. 67 minutes to go as the AMG heads into pit lane. And that is... Oh, that's going to be tight to get to the end from here. They might just have to make one extra stop. It'll all depend on the how quickly this dries up. But it is drying up now here at the mountain for the Repco Bathurst 12 hours 2024. If you're planning your next getaway, why not select this part of the world? Bathurst is a sensational place to come and visit. Perfect scenery. There's great shopping in the vicinity as well. Farmers markets. You can go gold panning, believe it or not. The river just near Safala. The Macquarie River's got some great cycling trails nearby. Adventure Playground. The Abercrombie Caves aren't far from here. And plenty of natural wildlife too. In fact, on any given day of the week, if you go for an amble, Around the mountain, you'll see plenty of Skippy and his fairy friends. It's a great part of the world. We're thoroughly enjoying it in a captivating Repco Bathurst 12 hour, which delivers us somewhere in the vicinity of six or seven contenders. And we're not sure which one of them will come out on top in 65 minutes and 30 seconds at the end of this race. Raffaele Marciello has just gone under the two minutes 16, a 2.15.7. So, there's that track development, that track improvement, and the speed and the performance coming back to the BMW number 46. Remember, it's not really got that hot today for the BMW with the turbochargers. It's still quite a heavy atmosphere, so that car is loving that. But I'm still, I would be very, very careful about going on this thing. Some of the passes we saw just a few minutes ago when you go offline down into the elbow on slick tires, that would be treacherous. Well, the track might be ready for slicks, but from a strategy point of view, not quite. So they're playing the game right now and trying to extend this stint as long as they can into the race to get to that final pit stop 
to fill the car up to the end, to put a driver who's got driving time up his sleeve to get to the end, and then put a slick tyre on for that last stint. Yeah, I think that's a good point. If this was a heads-up race, someone would be in and on a slick yep. tyre if they didn't have to do an 85-second pit stop as part of the reg. So they have to take all that into consideration and try and line everything up from a strategy point of view. These two cars now, Christopher Haas and Raffaella Macchiello, the two fastest cars on track at the minute. So Stoltz just did a 15-2, so everyone now starting to find lap time. And a cracking battle, by the way, still going on at the bottom end of the top 10, 9th, 10th and 11th for the Pro-Am podium. Alex Ribeiris with about six seconds on Alessio Piccariello, Mercedes versus Porsche, and then another, well, barely a second further back, Jimmy Winkup in the 88, chasing them both down at the moment for the Brazil Pro-Am Cup. So, both a race. Christopher Hasser and Raffaello Marcello looking for as much wet track as they can find, but they're starting to run out of it. It's yeah. actually in the, down Conrod and up Mountain Straight, down Pit Straight, where you traditionally go to try and cool the tyre. They're running out of wet stuff to run in. So then you start hanging on a little bit wider here at the exit of the turn two for the run up to the cutting and you start to put your car in some stranger positions simply to keep the tyre cool and yeah. run it through the wet and you might say well, why would you go off the dry line and into the wet line but the wet tyre actually works better like that yeah. we heard from Paul Tracy saying earlier that it was actually more grip in the greasy it was trickier in the greasy conditions and you're better off to run the car in the wet yeah. than you were Correct. in the greasier conditions so you just step the car off line in a few strategic positions to keep the tyre cool. It looks like a road tyre because it's got grooves um, around the, on the circumference, so lateral grooves, and they, the ones that run across are called sipes. They're the or seats. Channel the water, yeah. yeah. They channel the water away. You don't get, it's a common misconception, you don't get the grip from the grooves, you get the grip from the bits in between. Yeah. That's what's touching the ground, and you're wearing that away. And the construction of the tyre and the compound of the black stuff there's very little if any rubber in it now it's some synthetic materials in in tires that is what gives you the, the the grip and it's very different from what the slick tire is because there's more of the slick tire on the road you can do different things with it so when it goes if you get too much surface temperature and overheat the carcass when it goes a uh, 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 wet with the tire goes you can't get it back you just can't get it back. And you live hard up. Yeah, oh, yeah. And around here, it is hard work because it's high speed, long, constant radius corners. In comes Raffaella Macciello. So what tyre do they stick on this car? Slick. It has to be a slick tyre. It has to be a slick tyre for this car. While we're waiting. Two, two, so two. There you go. Oh, I feel oh. like... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh. That's, uh, that's bad. <laughs> Cameron. That that's now banned in uh, iRacing, I cooling your tyres down in sim racing world. It's banned in Australia too, because there was a, a guy that used to race in supercars called Shane Van Gisbergen that was doing it at Sydney Motorsport Park. And they said, no, no, can't do that anymore. I don't think Cam was trying to do it. He just forgot that he's in a left-hand drive car. <laughs> well, he's been racing on the mud all summer in clay and sprint car right. racing. So... Uh, wanted to feel at home. So slicks are going on car 46. This is the first of the outright contenders making a stop, theoretically, to get to the end of the show today. And, and the point, Rich, you make a good point there because they did have to come in now. They were only 13, 14 laps into the stint. So this is now back timing yeah, to working. time. And they're going, right, we're going from here. Here's the roll of the dice. We think we can get an advantage by going early. In this first part of the race, people staying out have the advantage, but they're going to have hotter, slick tyres when everybody else comes in. And if it doesn't rain again, this might be a strategic masterstroke from Vincent Voss and the rest of WRT. So and that car, as it's dried out, has had some serious pace coming back into it. So it wasn't great in the wet, that front splitter, so the repair did not last very long for Jamal Motor Racing Triple Eight. We were watching Alex Riberas earlier. He's actually just stopped and was leading the Pro-Am yeah. class. Uh, Alessio Picariello now leads that in the Manti EMA number 911, and ninth outright for that car with Harry King and Yasser Shahin. So that's a fascinating battle. That is far from decided the Pro-Am fight going right down to the end. 
So here we go. We are into the last hour of the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. And boy, have we seen some magic moments here at this mountain in this final hour of the race. You couldn't believe that a 12 hour race always comes down to the finish. So let's just quickly recap the history here and some of the incredible things that we have seen late in the race. How about this one? 2015, Godzilla up Mountain Straight in the hands of Katsumasa Chio, passing it felt like everybody on that restart, the heroics in 2015 to win that race. Let's move forward to how about this moment? 2017, Wing Cup versus Shane Van Gisberg and Wing Cup with his wheels on the dirt as SV Tree tried to defend. Ultimately, the STM car crashed out on that day, and uh, we heard the amazing interview with Maro Engel. That was 2017. Happened to the last hour. This was a shocker, wasn't it? 2018, the red flag came out, ended that race early, with the WRT Audi leading at that point, and they were smoked on their strategy, ultimately winning the race. Thankfully, both those drivers were in time okay. We move forward to the very next year, hopefully. There we go, 2019. One of my favourite moments ever at the mountain. Matt Campbell, the heroics to the inside of Jake Dennis, now a Formula E world champion. Down the inside, at the elbow, getting Porsche's first win here in the 12-hour with some true Matty Campbell heroics. You bet that was in the last hour. And how about this one from last year? The two AMG Mercedes. Maro Engel trying desperately to get to the inside of Jill Gunon, spinning him around, redress the position. Gunon goes on to win that race. So many amazing moments have happened in the last hour on a drying track with seven cars on the lead lap still. Jack Perkins, you get the feeling that last hour is going to turn it on once again. Absolutely right, Chad. The stage is set. Young Matty Campbell ready to go. Is he our best chance for Australian victory? The truth will come in the pit stop strategy. When he gets back in the car, can they make it home on just the one stop or will they have to stop twice from here? So victory for Porsche and an Australian driver may lie in the hands of young Matt Campbell. Or it could lie in the hands of young Jackson Evans, Matt Campbell's roommate, when the two of them first moved to Stuttgart, Germany, to pursue the dream of becoming a factory Porsche driver. It is Jackson who is being tasked to take the number 13 Phantom Global Racing Porsche to the checkered flag. And if you look over my shoulder, there's a man whose name is Timo Bernard. He has been helping out this team to try and adapt to racing over here. He has been one of the reasons that this team has done so well. And why, you might ask? Well, because Timo Bernard's won every major race that there is for Porsche as well as for Audi. Nice little scene setter from our team down in pit lane building up to the finish of this race with 57 minutes to go. This is the moment where Sun Energy One engages Jules Gounon mode and plugs in the three-time winner of this race into 75. Chris Haaser will be behind the wheel of 22. He's in the lane now as well in the Audi. So second and third on the road. I tell you what, there's some people that are going to be properly stressed if this comes down to a fight between Jackson Evans and Matt Campbell at the end of this race because they've basically grown up together in motorsport here and indeed in their journey overseas. So that could be a particularly interesting thing between the Porsche boys. So curious to see where this car pops out relative to Maxime Martin because Martin was the first car to take slicks of our front runners. So did the overcut on the hot, wet tyre yeah. work better than going onto the cold, slick tyre in these tricky conditions? Cam Waters has already been in and out and taken a slick tyre while we are getting that scene set up from pit lane and our crew. So the 75 car has dropped and waiting for his time. Here's Maxime Martin. He has a bit of traffic. The times are strong on this lap, but it's taken a lap or two to get the temperature where he needs to do it. And there's an example of having to go offline and get the pass done in a on a wet line before he has to turn into the chase. Gunon's done. He's up and out and up mountain straight. Here comes Haasa in the 22 Audi. And Max Martin was three seconds quicker than the leader in the first sector last time around. And he's now up to temperature or thereabouts with those Pirelli slicks. Certainly it's much nice more and tight. Much more temperature than Christopher Haas. So yeah. Haas has come out in front, but he has a cold tyre. Whereas Martin has three laps of temperature in the tyre in the WRT M4 BMW. So whilst Haas has the lead right now, he'll have to stop the car to make a turn here at two. Does Martin try and go around the outside? Does he switch back? Oh, now he has to go offline. Haas is not going to make it easy for him. Does he have enough run to get around the outside before the kink? Yes, he does. That was critical. He had to get it done there because if he didn't get it done before the cutting, a single line across the top. And uh, that was purely temperature and grip. There that so gave the undercut work. Yeah, it did this time. 
It did this time. That's amazing. And that, I mean, it's brave, but he had the confidence in the tyre. Quite clearly, that's a performance advantage then for that number 46 and for Maxime Martin. So anyone else pitting ahead of him, and we'll now have to see where they come out in relation. Have WRT played the blinder by going early? You've got to ask the question, can he get to the end without stopping again? Because he was the first, Rich, to go down the lane and put the Pirelli slicks on. Stopped with around an hour to go, so I'd expect that they should be able to get to the end from there. So change for car 13, Bastian Boost out. And as we heard from Shay Adam, Jackson Evans in to finish the race. There's M Campbell. So Matt will jump aboard car 912. So there, uh, Guven's been 24 laps since he stopped. He's done 126 laps today, Anken Guven. <laughs> <laughs> Carry the back of Manti EMA. Gonna come this time. They, they, they're gonna, they do not want to leave it any later. And here he peels off left handed into the pit lane. In the meantime, so this is the pass. Martin on Haas. Just has to wait, wait, wait in the middle of turn two, then gas it up and hope that you get the drive off two and get around the outside because you do not want to hang around the outside at the kink in a drying track with a narrow dry line. And got the job done, did Martin. Fair to say he was having to work on his throttle application <laughs> there. So, crucial stop now for Mantai, EMA, and Matt Campbell. Reinstalled. They have to nail this, no errors. No little one percenters with a breach of regulations. Nail the 85 seconds maximum or minimum time in pit lane from pit entry to pit out. Take an extra second if you need it because they had a little bit of track position. But this could be the car race right here. Blowing out the dirt from the radiators there. That's a, uh, an air exit that channels air up over the front of what would normally be the luggage compartment in a and a 911, but that's full of gubbins under there, including cooling radiators. So they're gonna set Matt Campbell off on stun. Gets a bit of wheel spin out of the box to put some heat in the rear Pirelli slicks. And this is gonna be an important rejoin, Garth. So Gunon making his way into the chase as Matt Campbell makes his way to the exit of pit lane, so. Matt's got track position, but he's got cold Pirelli tires. tires. And the team car from Matt Naime making it a little bit more difficult for Gunon to get around. So there's Matt Campbell halfway up Mount Straight as Jill Gunon comes across the line. So 13-8 that lap for Gunon. And he has temperature in his tires. So Matty Campbell, although he has a reasonable gap over Jill Gunon, that'll close down yeah. quickly as the tire comes up to temperature for Matt Campbell. But I'd have to say that Campbell's got enough up his sleeve that he can bring the tyre in gently and still be OK from Gunon as it stands right now. And just the track evolution and also bringing the tyre in. Maxime Martin's three laps since he stopped. 2-14-1, 10-5, 7-5. Oh, I think saw mate. that. Yeah. yeah. So they're now it's so quickly back up to something resembling proper race pace in one of these cars. 65, Sun Energy 1, Jules Gunon in a reverse of last year. He's hunting down Matt Campbell. Remember last year, it was Grello doing the same to 75. So the same protagonists have found their way to the front, just in a slightly reversed order, 12 months later. Rich, when did Gunon make his stop? No, he's showing two laps. Right, OK. So... No real they, they, advantage or disadvantage there in terms of, of tyre and fuel. They should be good to go now, right to the end. And yeah. the only the only question mark will be is with that stint length we've been talking about. They have 33 laps in a stint. If this race, if they can do 33 laps in 50 minutes, well then the pace is going to be particularly hot. Yeah, I can't see that. I think I'm seeing 28. Seven. And in that case, 912's got two laps advantage over 75 because Matt just stopped. Gunon's already been out for two laps. 
Yeah. Give you a lap time check as they come round. So Campbell out on cold Pirelli tyres this time by. The margin 13 seconds at the elbow at the last timing intermediate. So Campbell across the line to start his first flyer. And here's Chilgunon now in 75, being chased by Phantom Global with Jackson Evans. Gunon on 11 6. Jackson Evans across the line now in third at a 13 0. So Gunon with those extra lap advantage in tyre warm up and preparation, showing the extra pace in the margin 12.8 seconds now. Meantime, the bottom of the top 10, the Moselle Pro Arm Cup for Jimmy Winkup, the leader. The 88 car has got, you see, oh, he's got a deal. That's opened up, hasn't it? That's uh, 20 seconds. Yeah, I think he's going to need it, though, because yeah. that car's in a world of pain with the front splitter. Yeah. Saw them trying to take that together, and you've heard from our effects mics, that thing is flapping hard, so that's not going to have the front downforce that they would expect it would. So And Ross Gunn is chasing him yeah. down. So Ross Gunn is the next car behind, like you said, John, 20, 21 seconds behind. Well, and then the next one in line is Piccarello in the Porsche. Yep. And remember what the Porsches did early over a longer run in dry conditions. Those cars were the strongest at the end of a stint before a pit stop. So in the push to the line, they could be in particularly good shape. Piccarello had a horrible last lap with two cars ahead, 220 against 209 and a 212. So I'm not sure whether he got traffic in the wrong place because traffic giveth, tra traffic taken away, of course, particularly round here. That's the battle for the Pro Arm, and we'll be celebrating them as well at the end. We said we wouldn't kind of talk to it until we got to this area. We're inside the left side of the last hour now, so a couple of little bits and pieces that change. Um, should it be required to have a, a safety car as the Vortex goes around New South Wales, because at New South Wales corner, I'll come into the restart. All the lap cars have got to go down the pit lane and get out of the way. And in that 701, it's Julian Gualio, the guy who started the uh, safety car this morning, the first safety car this morning. Now he's rolled so he can see back down Mountain Straight. And is he going to try and flick turn it? He won't have enough lock. Oh, put your foot down, you would have made yeah. that there. Over the bottom out here. It's exactly what's happened. It's absolutely exactly what oh, has it has caused. It's right on the apex of Griffin. This is New South Wales corner. It's just needed to put that. Safety car boards and flags. Safety car. All bets are off. All bets are off. Campbell, Goonon, Jackson Evans are going to be lying astern on a restart with no cars between them. And that Max Martin. Next up, then Chris Harzer. I've had a feeling about the 22 car. I said that earlier on, and Chris Harzer was looking well confident in that Audi earlier on. Cam Waters, Grenier, Maro Engel, and then Jamie Winkup, Ross Gunn, and Alessio Piccarello for the top 11. Uh, they're battling for pro -Am. Oh, my goodness, the drama. <laughs> the drama. Jerry Bruckheimer couldn't write this one. This is an absolute... Going to be an absolute run to the flag. Proper shootout. 46 minutes on the clock. Can I walk you through the last four Bathurst 12 hour winners? 2023, Jules Gunon. 2022, Jules Gunon. 2020, Jules Gunon. 2019, Matt Campbell. So the last four races between these two guys at the front of the field. You only have to rewind 12 months. It was these two guys In just the other opposite direction. So. Does Jules Gunon now have the chance to have a crack at Matt Campbell? He was the hunted last time. Yes. Now yes. he's the hunter. He might have to get aggressive. We know how good that Porsche is on the restarts and at the end of the stints. So all bets are off now. Strategy has got out the window. Doesn't matter. This everything's unwound. The stagger, if you like to use an athletics term, the stagger has unwound because everybody goes full rich, flat out, full send to the finish. Nobody's going to have any worries uh, about the stint lengths because we're doing slower lap times. Nobody's going to have any worries about their tyres because they're all on slicks and nobody has any worries about fuel either. So it's all coming down to however many laps we get and how much time we get once we get the Vortex moved from 
Griffith Bend. It's, it's even better than that, John, because there'll be no lap cars no, between correct. the two of them. Yeah, yeah, they've got to pull off. So they've got to go down the pit lanes. Heads up. Absolutely heads up racing. Oh, How many on the lead lap right now, Trilsey? Uh, wait till Mick Grenier crosses the line just to make sure that it's seven, isn't triple it? eight. Yeah, I think it is because the Grupa M130 was a lap down with their various maladies they've had today. So and, the equal and, most cars on the lead lap at the finish of this race is seven. It's happened three times in the past. Yeah, and importantly, no more lucky dog. That window's yep. closed. Yeah. So uh, no one else is jumping onto the lead lap at the end of this one. And also importantly, that means that they won't catch the lapped car or the lucky dog cars as quickly. So we'll have a green clear racetrack for a longer run before we get the traffic. So plenty of interest at this restart once we go green again. The, the interest for mine sits in third place with Jackson Evans and the performance of the Porsches we've been talking about all day over a stint and the pace that they have been having. This is building to a massive finish. There will be 40 minutes to go in this race and some of the very best drivers in GT racing in the world will be fired up, ready to go in a shootout to win Australia's international endurance race. And the two guys that duked it out last year in a different order will battle for the lead. Queensland's Matt Campbell and the flying Frenchman Gilles Gounon, who stands on the edge of history, potentially with a fourth straight Bathurst Enduro win. And that has never, ever been done before. This is going to be huge. If you're going to move now, do it. Do it because real quick. Get, get the kettle on, get whatever you need for the next 43 minutes because you are not going to want to go anywhere. If you've made it this long, wherever you are around the world, congratulations. But whatever you've got to get into, your, uh, into yourself, whether it's coffee or chocolate or whatever, to get you to the end of this race, make sure you do it now. This is drama for the leader in Pro-Am. This is the car that Jamie Wincup is aboard at the moment, and they've been having recurring problems with the front end of that AMG. And the, the racer tape is not cutting it, I'm afraid. They can't get enough, uh, can't get enough structural rigidity into that. As soon as the, that car gets up to speed, it just breaks the tape because that is what the splitter is meant to do, create downforce and pull the front of the car down. Question now, gentlemen, on the restart, who gets heat back into their Pirelli slicks quickest? It's a good question because we've spoken about the Porsche, how it's taken a few extra laps to bring the tyre in. The car that I want to watch at this restart is the car in fourth, Maxime Martin. Yeah. Because that thing up Mountain Straight has been electric. So Jackson Evans, who's currently third, better make sure he gets through turn one and gets through turn one well, because it doesn't matter if he, if Evans defends to the inside, Martin will just go straight around the outside. We've seen him do it already today in that car, and it's been so strong in a straight line. Well, just casting my mind back to another famous Bathurst 12-hour moment when a big <laughs> turbocharged front-engine coupe started on a late-race restart in fourth position and led by the time they got to the hump at Mountain Straight, 2015, Katsumasa Chio in a Nissan GTR. Not a completely dissimilar yeah. theory between those two yeah. cars as well with the M4. <laughs> I don't know if that car's got it in it, but... They will give it a good go. It's, and it's not quite GTR spec, not, the BMW, but, but it has had reminiscent some, of that for has sure. Some hope today. There's a bit going on here with the 911 car wanting the 20 invitational IRC car to maybe just get on with it because the queue has formed and Adam Hargraves is not. So whether he is still in the 80k an hour mode or well now he's starting to get going, but the safety cars on actually Mountain Straight, so it's holding up some of our Pro-Am competitors. I can't see race control waiting for them to catch up, to be honest. There's, uh, we're inside the last hour, and they'll want to get this back to green as quickly as possible. Lights haven't gone out yet on the well, BMW XM safety car. They, I think there may have been a miscommunication to Hargrove, perhaps, who was still doing 80 k's yeah, an hour, but they're, they're allowed to catch up to the back of the safety car queue now. 
We've seen that a few times today, actually. Yeah. The little clumps of cars that have been off the back of the queue. And I think that's the transition where we've changed to this all field slow to 80 kilometres an hour, maintained 80 kilometres an hour until the track is safe. Yeah. And then you can transition and form up so you don't then have to follow the 80k an hour rule set. So that's what they're doing now. But some of the Australian drivers just adjusting a little bit to that on the run. And you can understand that, Garth, because what you don't want is people trying to catch the end of the safety car trade while we've still got track yeah. workers pulling someone out of the fence or clearing up some debris. debris. So I, I don't have a problem. Yeah, and the idea behind that is that if the cars are all doing 80 kilometres an hour at all times, that means the workers can get out onto the track more quickly yeah. and get the recovery done more yeah. quickly rather than waiting for the field to bunch up and then only doing it in the gap at, in between when the field goes by. So it is designed to make a safety car period a much shorter halt or pause on the race, if you like. Under 40 minutes to go. We're behind the... XM, the BMW XM safety car, and it's all to play for. History in the making. Or an Aussie win with Matt Campbell. Find out in the next 37 minutes. It's been an incredible day on Mount Panorama. It always is. It's not finished yet. It's not. The Repco Bathurst 12 hour at 5.45 a.m. this morning. Another day full of drama. A key contender eliminated early in a huge accident on the run up to the cutting for Charles Witt. It was day over for WRT. It was day over, but they've still got one horse in this race. That was a big moment for the number two Audi. They would ultimately fail to finish this race as well. The thunder and lightning and pouring rain came and Jack LeBrock copped the full force of Brock's skyline at the top of the hill and pirouetted down. A brave run all day for Craft Bamboo Racing in the Caltex car. They were good, they were contenders. Daniel Yonkadella found the fence and all of a sudden they weren't contenders and Maxi Goats expressed the feelings of many in that team, I'm sure. The pit stop battle was well and truly on and the two Porsches have spent a lot of today trading blows at the front of the field. And this was a particularly intense battle with one car on good tyres, one that had already been out there and Grello went past on the run up the hill around the cutting. The battle was well and truly alive. And then Audi, who have just been grimly hanging on with car 22 all day. Chris Haas is behind the wheel of that car now. Was battling with Maxime Martin. And the BMW was able to squeeze past. And then a safety car was called with the Invitational Class Vortex, the French entry, making their debut at Mount Panorama. At Griffin's Bend brought out the safety car. 29-year-old Queenslander Matt Campbell leads the race. And this is how the Pirelli leaderboard looks for another Bathurst shootout. All the <laughs> way to the chequered flag. You and that was the 20 minutes of a qualifying race, Crailsey, for a 40-minute dash. And it'll be Matt Campbell and Kenny Habal who do it once again. Oof. Incredible. Let, let us know where your favourite driver is at the moment. Hashtag B12HR on the socials. We'd love to get your thoughts on who you think is going to win the race. Jump online and join the conversation. It's a huge global audience watching this one. Call and it now, though. We don't want you waiting till two laps from the end. No, that's I want to know. <laughs> There's a class leaders. So, Boysell Pro Am still led by 88, the Johor Racing Triple Eight car. Wouldn't that be a feat to win at Bathurst a week after winning two races back to back in Asian Le Mans in Abu Dhabi at Yas Marina? Tony D'Alberto, the Lamborghini, leading the silver class. And they've got a couple of laps up their sleeve, actually, over Luke Yildon. Adam Christodoulou continues to lead the way in Team 19 in the Mercedes in GT4. And Adam Hargraves on top in arguably the hardest class to win today, the Invitational class, because it has been a tale of woe for so many contenders. So the maths are simple. There are 35 minutes and 35 seconds until the final lap of the race starts. We're counting down to the final lap at 17.43 local time in the east coast of Australia. Matt Campbell in a Porsche leads. Jill Gunon in a Mercedes is second. They've won the last four Bathurst 12 hours between them. Jackson Evans is third for Phantom Global, a team that's never raced here before. Mm. And then a BMW sits in fourth place with Maxime Martin. And there are four brands in the top five because Chris Haaser in a very speedy Audi R8 sits in fifth position. And when we come back to racing, 
all of the lap cars will have to go down the pit lane. It's all come down to this. And these are the lap cars. So no wave by, there's no lucky dog in the final hour of the race. They'll have to go through pit lane and drop right to the very back of the queue to get them out of way. So it'll stack all of our contenders up nicely for this run to the flag. Expect one more lap under the BMW XN safety car. I'm just leaning out to, to watch these lap cars come through because in there is the Bazel Pro Arm yeah. battle. And there are cars between first and second uh, in that scrap. Uh, Jamie Winkup has got a couple of lap cars between himself Race and Ross control Good. to safety car. Uh, Race control. Race control safety car, maintain 80 kph. Lights out this lap, return to pit lane, please. James Taylor, Motorsport Australia Race Control, confirming what Richard Crail thought, that we will go green next time by, with all the main players lying astern. All the lap cars, all the traffic pollution is out of the way. Heads up racing with 30 minutes to go of 12 hours. That is the Repco Bathurst 12 hour for 2024. Creelsey asked for the audience and to give to give their thoughts. Is it Gunon? Is it Campbell? Well, I can tell you on the RWEC Discord group, it's about 50-50, so they know as much as we do uh, right at the moment. And they are they're on the fence as well. Well, they are a very well-informed yeah. group. It is our, our WEC, but they follow all endurance racing across the world. There's a, there's a lot of collective knowledge in that group, and if one man vote, one vote, it's about evenly split between the Porsche and the triple winner, Gilles Gounon, going for the fourth win in a row. Never been done before in any endurance race, and that includes the 1,000. That's incredible, actually. So, Peter Brock did everything at this place, never won four times in a row. Larry Perkins, Jim Richards, Jamie Winkup, Craig Lowndes, all won three in a row. Gilles Gounon has won three in a row. Nobody has done it four times in a row. It would be unique Mount Panorama Bathurst history. It'd be three in a row for AMG as well, of course, and it's two, uh, it's two core drivers. Well, uh, yeah, for Sun Energy, you want it would be an enormous feat. And Kenny Habal, Peter Brock was his idol growing up. He owns one of Brock's old race cars. So that would be an enormous accomplishment. But what about Porsche? What about the job these guys have done today? They've had penalties through pit lane. They've had all sorts of drama. They've worked their way through the field. And ultimately, it comes down to the guy that delivered Porsche their first ever Bathurst victory. Porsche had never won anything here. That, They'd that, never that won a major enduro. Really. It was the only box they had to tick in their storied history. And this guy did it in 2019. And now he finds himself in a position to do it again. And as I said, when we were talking to Matty in the pit lane, it, it wasn't the perfect Manti run that we get used to. There have been mistakes made, but they've battled through it. They've adapted and they've found the pace, P-A-C-E, when they have needed it. And now we go to war. These are the beautiful Blue Mountains. You pass by this very location, the Three Sisters just outside of Katoomba. There's a cool old racetrack there too, by the way. Catalina Park, you should check that out. Waterfalls, scenic walks, just about everything. Some great coffee shops just tucked away in the little villages as you cross the Blue Mountains via Bells Line or the Great Western Highway. And it leads you to this direction where we are set for a massive showdown once again. Bathurst has delivered us something incredibly special. And at the front of the field, two of arguably the best GT drivers in the world. You can make an argument for both of them. Yeah. Matt Campbell, a young Aussie who's forged a career overseas and is now driving for Porsche and Roger Penske. And Jules Gounon, who's won them all, but calls this place his most special racetrack and stands on the edge of Bathurst history, potentially potentially winning four endurance races in a row. There are 30 minutes to go in the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. It's all to play for with Porsche, Mercedes, BMW and Audi fighting it out for a win in Australia's international enduro. And look at the talent behind them as well. Jackson Evans, one of the up and comers. Max Martin, Chris Haaser in the Audi. 
Then Cameron Waters, Mickey Grenier, Engel, Mauro Engel as well. Jamie Winkup still leading the pro and category ahead of Ross Gunn. And Alessio Picardiello, here comes the AMG, drafting up Mountain Straight. A big front engine car with loads of torque. Is he close enough? I don't think he is. He'll show the headlights to Matt Campbell. Try and just disrupt the concentration of the young Queenslander. It's not worked. And now the Porsche, will the Porsche make its advantage tell as it heads more on over the top? The Porsche's about eight feet wide. The racing line's about 10 feet wide. That's it. At the moment, the key passing opportunities, if you put a couple of wheels out, you're going to be in trouble. It's still very, very damp off the racing line. So Matt Campbell's protected slightly from that, but you will never rule out Shukunon for making an attempt at this one. There's the Phantom Global Porsche sitting in third. Jackson Evans, housemate of Matt Campbell. They grew up together. They came out of the McElroy School of Porsche racing up in Queensland. The young Kiwi has driven superbly today with that brand new team to Mount Panorama. And then BMW, how about well. them? And even if Jackson Evans can't get by Jules Gounon and challenge for the lead, he might actually be doing his Porsche teammate, and they're not in the same team, but they're all Porsche at the end of the day. He might be doing them a solid here by holding Max Martin in that BMW, which is quick in a straight line. It likes the cooler temperatures, but at the moment, there's a gap beginning to form Garth Tander between the leader and this battle for second, third and fourth. One and a half seconds is the gap between Matt Campbell and Jules Gounon as they left Forest Elbow at the end of the second sector. So Campbell's had a blinder restart lap here on cold tyres. Has absolutely dropped Jules Gounon. Stewards have imposed pit lane penalties, cars 10 and 25. Breach of safety car procedure, failed to proceed through pit lane. So they're deep in the field, some of our lap cars didn't come through the lane as required late in the race. That won't affect what's going on at the front of the field. Matt Campbell, a 2.06.2, Jules Gounon, a 2.07.7. So one and a half seconds up the road goes Matt Campbell. And we tease that it might take the Porsche lap or two to bring his tyres in because it's taken longer than most to get the tyre up to temperature. But no one told Matt Campbell that story. <laughs> he's gone. Yeah, he's pulled away. He's nailed. In fact, all of the Porsche drivers, uh, when they've been leading the races on restarts, have absolutely nailed them. I don't think we've seen an overtake down into Hell's Corner, or indeed for the lead, even up into Turn 2 at Griffin's Bend. So everybody's been practising their restarts, and the Campbell is absolutely on a tear at the moment. This, this could be winning the motor race right here. Another two tenths in the first sector for Matt Campbell. So he continues to build that gap first to second. Not going to win it right here now, but you're going to certainly make it easier on yourself. The more gap you have, should you come across lap traffic, the more cautious you can be if you need it. So going fast now buys you luxury later. Look at the back of this view. Cam Waters just tacking on to the back of Chris Haser in that orange Audi. He's still in this. He's really good in the mixed conditions. They have played a blinder today. I think they've probably punched above where the oh, expectation yeah. was for Scott Taylor Motorsport. Huge performance. And then Mick Grenier is still in this as well for National Storage. Just behind seven cars still on the lead lap. Here's the BMW. Looked out for a moment on Jackson Evans. Drops back into line. They all close on Jules Gounon as they come down to the chase. The Porsche is so good on the brakes yeah. in the chase. We marvelled about that in qualifying yesterday. Race control, that was an example attention. from Jackson Evans teams, again here in the final corner. A pit lane penalty to car 27 for a safety car breach. Oh, that's Seven. big. Yeah, that's, that's second. Big. Yep. In, in the pro arm category, Ross Gunn. Uh, I, I presume that was speeding in pit lane and no. they had to come through the pit lane? No, I think there was a lapped car. Oh, so weaving we're hearing. So the Australian rule that we spent so much time training the international drivers, do not weave when the lights go out on the safety car, has caught Ross Gunn out. And he's three tenths of a second oh, yeah. away from Jamie Whitcup so, with that ailing yeah, aero on the front of the car. Absolutely, so in, come, in through the lane comes the 47, so that is not Ross Gunn. It's the Maduris Brothers Superbarn AMG Mercedes. David Russell behind the wheel third in the silver class, a lap back from Luke Gilden, who's second, the Lambo 
couple of laps clear in that inter-class battle. So over to you, Alessio Piccarello yeah. for uh, Manti uh, EMA. Could they do the double? He's only one and a half seconds behind Wing Cup. And we've said that Wing Cup has some drama going on with the front splitter. They put more race tape on it, but I don't think that's going to fix it. No. So Piccarello has been seriously impressive this weekend. And that 911 car has been fighting back. Talk about snakes and ladders. That car yeah, has yeah. had snakes and ladders today. And Jared Tupp would have wanted that uh, XM BMW safety car to be out for a, a long time. If he could have stretched that, I'm sure he would have. Probably thought about throwing some debris out the side of the car to do the old NASCAR trick. He's not beyond a bit of, bit of cheekiness like that. The other question I've got, and because I've run out of space on my notepad from the tally, how many drive-through penalties has car 130 had today yeah 50 12 it's been a lot um they're Evans still plenty yes they're still on the lead lap they're 20 seconds behind the lead they're quite a big chunk behind this leading group of cars but maro angles there now i'm not expecting miracles but if they finish there that'll be eight cars on the lead lap at the end of the race which has never happened before the previous record was seven so it shows you how competitive this field has been even though that team has had such a rotten day. And that is a change for position in the Voice Cell Watchers Pro-Am class. The Porsche gets to the front. So the walking wounded Mercedes AMG slips back to second with Jamie Winkup. And Piccarello gets himself to 10th outright. And what will be the class lead when Ross Gunn has to serve a pit lane penalty. Gunn still has not come to the lane. So he's stretching out that three laps before he must take it. You get three legs of argument time. Well, you can argue all you want, but once they give you the black flag, I haven't seen it change their mind in the past. It's it's not something you can really argue that there's there's degrees of certain things you can get called a penalty on, that where it's a subjective a decision. But you're either waving or you're not waving. You know, it's. But what he's trying to do is give himself the best opportunity and pull away as much as he can whilst he's got a little bit of uh, clear track wow. ahead of him. Yeah, absolutely. He's trying to get up the road a little bit, hoping that there might be another safety car to catch the train and get back on it. But this high-speed freight train snakes its way down the mountain to Forest Elbow. Gunon's found a bit of time in the last lap or so as he now the tyre sort of normalises for Gunon, so almost the opposite from what we expected where the Porsche would take a lap or two to get up the temperature. It's been Gunon taking a lap or two. Just on the previous lap, took a little bit of time back out of Matt Campbell. Let me just remind you that the Repcor fastest lap is in the hands of the 13 Porsche, which Jackson Evans is behind, a 2 or 2 9 in the race. So there is pace in that Porsche in particular. Is that the only car in the twos today? Yes, it is. Yeah. 58. That cool, crisp morning air when it was properly flat out. 4 9 for the leader. 5 2 Goon on 5 3 Evans. 5 4. Nice bit of numerology there for Martin. So much for much the second, third, and fourth. That Porsche again, Garth, in the final sector was four tenths quicker than Shield Goon on. So breaking for the chase, breaking for Murray's corner. He can't use that performance though whilst Goonon's ahead of him. So he, he, he's not been able to chase down Matt Campbell. I think there was a bit of traffic and pollution on that last lap in the last sector for second, third, fourth and fifth. So keep an eye on that one. The teams, the stewards have opposed a PLP to car 10 for crossing the pit entry blend line. That's the invitational class car, the Hollinger car. Seeing the GT4 leader in the pit lane, Adam Christodoulou. Late stop there. We are all the way to the chequered flag at Mount Panorama. The margin 2.5 seconds. Porsche to Mercedes AMG. The two drivers that have dominated this race since 2019, that duked it out for the win last year, are going at it again. And they're already back into the two minute and four second lap times as we fight towards the end. And four manufacturers represented in the top five. And 
Bathurst remains one of the most open races from a balance of performance between all the different GT3 brands. If that's not exciting for the brands that aren't here this year and the ones that are coming like Ford and Chevrolet and hopefully McLaren and all the others, well, this is the place where you can come and know that you're going to have a shot. Campbell negotiating some traffic. There's a bit of a story in the Invitational class as well, which has been really tough today because at the moment, just going out of the pit lane on an outlap to the chequered flag, Adam Hargraves is leading the class in the number 20 T2 Racing local search car. That was the car that was backed into the wall early in the weekend and had to borrow some panels from a car from another category that was racing here and the rear clip as well. So that's a bit of a rags to riches story. We always get them here at the Repco Bathurst 12 hours. There'll be plenty of column inches written about this one. Previous lap, Chulgun on, took eight tenths of a second out of Matt Campbell. Campbell came across a bit of lap traffic in an awkward spot in the final sector, and Gunon got the rub of the green this time around with a much cleaner run through the lap traffic. So, come to the end of the first sector on this next lap. What's the difference between the two? It's Matt Campbell, 50.8 versus Gunon, 51.0. So, Campbell has the speed in the car. That's the luxury of a gap. When you come to the lap traffic, you can be a little bit more cautious if you need to. Take a bit of the intensity out of the situation. Spare a thought for Laurent Vantor as well, the Belgian driver. This is his seventh attempt at winning this race. He was runner-up here in 2015 with Audi, doing all kinds of insane things at the end of that race, trying to grab a car that really didn't want to be there and wrangle it towards the podium, including a rather large send around the outside of the final corner on the final lap of the race to get himself onto the podium. He's been trying to win this race for a long time. He's got former pole position winner as well. Chad Stewart, good on, is bringing that AMG to life here. And he's just trimming again last time around that lead. It's down to just on two seconds. Took a eight tenths of a second last time around with just under 18 minutes to go. Mind, he's got to keep his foot in because he's... He's got a pack of hungry hands behind him. Jackson Evans, Max Martin, Chris Harzman are all there. And that's four very, very accomplished and talented drivers for two final spots on the box. The one thing we've been talking about all weekend is that near complete ability of Gunon. He just doesn't make a mistake. So he's so good under pressure. He will weather whatever storm Jackson Evans can throw at him in that battle for second place but he's got to be eyes forward and find a way to pick that 2.5 second margin back to the race leader time to remind everybody rich when this race ends but the countdown is the end so 16 minutes plus one lap so we're counting down to the final lap of the race so 17:43 local time 5:43 p.m local time Last one lap is the finish. Lap is two minutes, and that gets us to the full 12 hours. Lap traffic. Oh, Jackson Evans up the inside of McPhillamy, as is Maxime Martin. So now Gunon has to follow the GT4 McLaren down the hill. It's single lane through here. So this is killing Gunon. Yeah. And Jackson Evans has got right to the rear bumper. And now Gunon, does he get around? No, he doesn't. So he continues and he can't go too wide. Remember, it's a single lane because it's wet down there. So Gunon, cautious, smart. But now that's closed him right up. Look at Cam Waters. He's in the game right behind Christopher Harsler. So second through sixth, nose to tail, and seventh from Nicole Grenier as well. So now Gunon's trying to shake the draft of Jackson Evans. We know the Porsches are super late on the brakes here at the chase. What about Maxime Martin? We know that thing's straight in a fast in a straight line. Do they get it all through there? Yes, they do. So now it's six top quality drivers at GT3 cars for two spots on the box. But that's six seconds to yeah. the race yeah. lead. That one moment. Four seconds to four seconds. One second moment in the middle wow. sector. Yep. Has cost Jill Goon on a huge chunk of time. Uh, Mick Grenier was attacking Cameron Waters down at Murray's corner. And Chris Harza looking at Maxime Martin now. 
in the battle for fourth and fifth position. This is still very much all up for grabs. But if, but that, if that can happen in the favour of the leader, that could just as easily happen to bring this all back together. The advantage that Matt Campbell has is he hasn't got somebody breathing down his neck and therefore he can probably take different lines. It's a really difficult compromise to have to have when you Gilles Gounon trying to attack and lap a car, but also trying to make sure that Jackson Evans sitting in behind him doesn't see a crack opening in his front door that he can, he can stick his foot through. Jill Gounon effectively needs to be cross-eyed. One eye out the windscreen yeah, and one yeah. eye on the rear vision mirror. Yeah. And deal with the lap traffic at the same time. So. You're right, and we spoke about the gap that Matt Campbell opened early in that safety car restart, and that's what that does. It gives you that luxury of not having to race the other car. You just deal with the lap traffic. So now, Campbell coming up on David Russell in the number 47 AMG Mercedes. He's just full focus, is just get past this car, not have to worry about getting attacked from behind, because that gap that he has now, 6.6 .6 seconds over Gunon, and Gunon, his full attention now is in the rear vision mirror. Yeah. That's <laughs> Russell's mate, the Russ. Well done. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Very <laughs> generous. Yeah. And that's good sportsmanship. Oh, I know they're playing for different manufacturers, if you will. Um, I, sh I should probably answer this question, gentlemen. Uh, Gunon ever been a co-driver cool in the Great Race? No, 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 not yet. Frankly, <laughs> madness that he has not yeah. yet had that opportunity. Yeah, I was, I, I was thinking that myself, and when I was talking to him last week at the Alpine uh, 424 launch, where he's the reserve driver this year, thinking to myself, no, I can't, I can't think of him being there. He's rather good round here. <laughs> rather young guy that will go places. Sure. Yeah. Going on. Yeah. Again, that previous lap at the chase, Jackson Evans was so strong on the brakes. Gunon gets held up out of Forest Elbow. He needs to defend and defend for his life when they get through the kink down into the chase. Because Jackson Evans will be down the inside in a heartbeat. Under 13 minutes to go. And the good news for our leader is the next bit of traffic that he's got to get by is quite a long way ahead. He's going to have at least to the end of this lap and probably a little longer before he catches the back of the... And it's not a whole clump of cars. Just a single car, and then a gap, then another single car. What you don't want to come on is a, a battle for position where guys are fighting for a, a lead of a class and not reasonably, not necessarily looking in their mirrors. I'd love to get a stress test as well on Yasser Shaheen. He'll be watching on from the Manti EMA garage because he's done... A really big job today in car 911, and they're leading the Pro Am class. They're ninth outright, and they've got Jamie Winkup 13 seconds behind them, so a slightly more comfortable margin for the second of the Manti cars. But they are on potentially to claim both of the main classes in this race. Jamie Winkup driving manfully in an injured Mercedes double eight, but Ross Gunn taking three seconds a lap out of him, and the gap's down to 10 seconds now. I don't think Roskin could get back to Alessio Picariello, but there's a second place on here for Harter Racing, and they'll be cursing that final penalty that they had for waving, coming back to the green on the last safety car restart. Here's how much ground that Porsche takes out of the Mercedes under brakes for the chase, but the BMW noticeably closer this time by. Valentino Rossi was watching on nervously with teammate Raffaele Marcello who switched brands. It's normally Lello we're talking about in these circumstances. He's been in this fight before. Now he has to watch from the BMW bunker. They salvage a podium out of what's been a day of enormous promise for WRT. There's such commitment out there at the moment. Yep. Riding the curbs and the Curves hold the dampness garth as well, so they're, they're really now, they're leaving nothing on the table. No, it's max attack, full send. We hear from him playing quite a bit these days, where certainly the front bunch are leaving no stone unturned. Previous lap round, Matt Campbell was a 5 1, Jules Gunon a 4 1, so the traffic continuing to influence the lap time of our lead cars, but Campbell enjoys a five and a half second gap. Over Gunon in second. 
that was we're on board with Mikel Grenier who was chasing down Cam Waters that was the battle for sixth and seventh yeah, Cam's just dropped off the back of Chris Haza in the Audi that's another incredible story of the day remember they went the same route that Sun Energy One have gone with putting a bronze driver in that car and so two of those combinations are going to be in the top five at this point anyway with Chris Haza having done a huge job and Kelvin van der Linde, who's longed to get a big result at Mount Panorama in all of his visits to this place. The Audi still grimly hanging on. It's one of the older cars now relative to some of the yeah. new machinery around it. But with people like that behind the wheel, it's still very, very effective. And Liam Talbot did do an outstanding job in his stint earlier on today. Serviceable, I would say. Oh, More than serviceable. Quite. Yeah. Audi Sport Customer Racing boss, Chris Frankett. Uh, at the mountain this weekend. Flew in today. Uh, uh, one day fi only. Finally, yeah. He, he, I think there were some travel issues there, to be honest. But Chris likes to be uh, where the customers are, and there's plenty of customers down here in Australia. 2045, Matt Campbell. 2044, Jill Gunon. 2040, <laughs> Jackson Evans. Hello. 2041. Maxime Martin, 204, zero, Christopher Haas. So, lap time starting to get a little spicy. So that's the hardest a Porsche has had to get its tyres switched on in the whole race so far. So yeah. Matt went really hard really early. And the Porsche's been a skill of it today, a, an attribute of it today has been bringing them in gently. Will that hurt them late in this race? Will that offer any pain for Matt? as he gets towards the end of the race. And I'm still keeping an eye on what's going on in the Pro-Am category. Alessio Picardiello, now 20 seconds to the good on Jamie Winkup. The 911, the shell helix coloured, the Porsche. Well up the road, but Jamie Winkup is going to see the headlight shortly of the Mercedes AMG, the number 27, Ross Gunn, now under, well, I was going to say under six seconds. I might as well say five now, 5.2 seconds. He's taking great lumps of time after, out of that wounded AMG. Seven and a half to go, gentlemen. Tense. <laughs> Tense. As a racing driver, I, this is a tense I've seen Garth all day, because if you're in the lead car now, all you want to do is for that, to, to know there's one lap to go. You're hearing all sorts of nonsense. You've got to just concentrate and keep it going, haven't you? Oh, this is this is what you spend all day playing chess for, to go checkmate at the end of the day. So this is what it's all about, Jackson Evans! Have a go at that move! There was not a door to walk through, but Jackson Evans pried it open. Here comes the BMW, Maxime Martin on the outside. And what can Chris Haasa do? This is for Oh, Martin, look fourth. how deep he went. It won't work, it won't pay off, but it might open the door to for the Audi. Touch. He's got a wheel up the inside of Jackson Evans. They're going to war down towards turn one. Goon on safe for a moment, and Chris Haasa gets himself up potentially to the podium. I did think that 22 Audi was still in with the shot. I think Gunon helped him out there, actually, because he slightly blocked Jackson Evans as he was coming into uh, Murray's for the final time. This the Porsche's not done. The this Porsche is not done. Is running skinny. We know it's quicker in a straight line, but the Audi's got the preferred line into visit New South Wales, Griffin Bend, and Chris Haaser on the third step of the podium for the number 22 Audi. All right, I am locked on the timing screen for Chris Haas's sector time across the top of the mountain this lap. It'll yeah. be epic. Because <laughs> he is going to run and run hard. This is his eighth, eighth visit to Mount Panorama, Chris Haas. He's been desperately unlucky. A little bit of contact, Jackson Evans to the rear of Shulgunon, but it fired the Sun Energy 1 car out well. Maxime Martin just went, well, i got to commit to this somehow and go around the outside. <laughs> they were on the podium for a second. His teammate was on the podium for a second, didn't didn't quite pair off. I, I think Gilles Gunon locked up there, Garth, as he was coming into the chase. I'm not sure, but we've been saying all weekend there. <laughs> Martin just absolutely sent it around the outside, hope for the best. Jackson Evans sent it down the inside, hope for the best, and Christopher Haas picked both their pockets. So it was ecstatic in the garage at BMW for a second or so, then disbelief afterwards as Martin drops back to fifth. How's the situational awareness from Chris Harzer, though? Yeah. Put his car in exactly yeah. the right position. Elbows out, made sure he's stuck. 
And then again, the positioning on the run up the hill into Griffin's Bend was perfect and got that car into third place. Could they be on the podium in an Audi R8? That would be an enormous result for this team. A balance of performance sees Porsche from Mercedes, from Audi, from Porsche, from BMW in the top five places. Good spread of the manufacturers here. Cunard with a little bit of breathing space this time around. Under five minutes to go. Every year. Every, every year. year. This place does something utterly ridiculous to us. And what a show. There's a new second place now in the Pro-Am. Ross Gunn has dispatched Jeremy Winkup with that wounded arrow on the front of his AMG. 27 and a half seconds behind Alessio Picariello. He's taking time out of Alessio, but there's not enough time left for him to get back. That was a very, very costly mistake, weaving behind the safety car with the lights out. The, the daft thing about that was he had to come down the pit lane anyway. So there was really no need to be doing that. It's one you file in the memory bank for 12 oh. months when you come back and try and go one or two yeah. spots better. Hart and Racing have put up a good fight. Three rookie drivers here. And with SPS, a really well drilled team. I think if I'd offered them second place at the start of the week, they might have said yes. Then bank, class puts, bank, thank you very much. Yeah. But they'll have wanted a little bit more. To get greedy into the race. There they are. And there is the battered and bruised. Oh, it's, it's shot gone now. It's gone now. It's broken off, yeah. It's worn through. So, Jamie Winkup's AMG Mercedes sounding more like a Massey Ferguson tractor. <laughs> the 11 front splitter flaps away. 11 1 last time around. Yeah. The worst thing is he's the team principal now. Yeah. He pays the bill to fix it <laughs> for the next round. I don't think it happened when he was driving the car, though. He's inherited I don't that think one. That matters. <laughs> So second, Goon on third, Haza, who was three tenths quicker across the top of the hill than the Mercedes AMG, playing to the Audi strengths, less than a second between them. Jackson Evans not out of this yet either. And Maxi Martin will do anything he can to try and wrestle the BMW further forward. Well, WRT last year finished within 60 seconds of the winner. This year right now, they're within eight seconds of the lead at the end of the race. So, and I hope they come back for a third straight year with those BMWs because they have been a force to be reckoned with today. And someone's lit a fire under the Grenier 888 car. Check that out, 203.9 on that last lap. 1.5 seconds quicker than the leader. And that already exciting fight for second and third could have another car with two minutes to go. That's a really good point, Chad. I saw that one too, Grenier 203.9. He's come alive whilst... Jackson Evans and Maxime Martin are fighting over fourth and fifth. This car on screen right now, fastest car on track last time by, by a margin. Yeah. So, Grenier doing everything he can to get himself in the game. Under two minutes now, gentlemen. Under two minutes, and the gap is five seconds at the head of the field. Shil Kunom within touching distance. This is tantalising. He's not. I don't think he's going to get back to it unless it would. Four and a half now. Bit of traffic to go the wrong way. Traffic has played such a part here today. We saw it. Exceptionally clean running in the early part of the week down at Mansai EMA. And it's great. Of course, it's Grello. It has to be Grello. Some lap traffic up the road, but only two cars mm. that are separated. So, not going to stern. so that's good news. His name's Matt Campbell. He's going to deal them one by one. He's going to get to them at the right part of the track for lap traffic anyway. Between here and turn two. 4.2 seconds. Jill Goon on. You know he will drive car 75 within an inch of its life. <laughs> if there is even a sniff at the end of this one. 5-3 for Matt Campbell. 3-7 for Gilles Gounon. 3-8 for Christopher Haasa, who's just done the personal best for that car in the last sector. Wow. So, Matt Campbell's enjoying a handy buffer. He's lucky he's got it. I mean, I think he is making sure he's massaging the car to the end. He's making sure that there are no mistakes to be had. You said it, Garth, take the advantage when you've got it. You never know when you might need a second here or three-quarters of a second there. We've seen this race come down to 
meters in the past. Look at the clock. Tick, tick, tick. Three seconds, two seconds, and one. So it rolls down to zero, which means it should be this lap and one more. Oh, traffic at the worst traffic at Reed Park. Wow, that could have been big if he'd not gone through there. It's cost him some time, but not a whole heap of time. Uh, Gunon, there's potential that Gunon will get it in this part Correct. of the track. The S is coming down the hill, which is much more a one-lane raceway than it is at Reed and McPhillamy Parks. So, 2.6 seconds. Jill Gunon. He's got nine kilometres. Nine kilometres to try and give Kenny three in a row. To try and give Luca three in a row and go four up and create Bathurst history. But this young man out in front, he celebrated his 29th birthday yesterday. He won the Daytona 24 hours just a couple of weeks ago. He's one of the great success stories of the Australian motorsport and the Porsche pyramid here to go overseas and become a factory driver at the very highest level of sports car racing around the world. And Mante EMA Racing, what about that story? They're six k's away from a Bathurst win. One lap remaining in the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. Control, attention all teams, the lead car has commenced the last lap. Well, well, well. What an up and down day it has been for a number of the class leaders. An up and down week. It's not been by any stretch of the imagination, gentlemen, a pristine Manti performance. There's been mistakes made, but they have reacted and they have had the key element to any motor race, be it a sprint or endurance. They've had speed, they've had the pace, and all three drivers, Lawrence Vanzor, Aichan Guven, who has done the yeoman's part of the work by far the most laps, and Matt Campbell brought in as the closer. You are going to have dramas in a 12-hour race. Doesn't matter where it is, yep. doesn't matter what sort of driving lineup you have, it's how you recover from those dramas. And the 912 car that leads outright and the 911 car that leads the Pro-Am race have had their fair share of dramas. And Mante EMA have recovered beautifully. They've had fast race cars, but they've got themselves in a position to use those fast race cars. And no one can deny that this is a very, very special result for Paul. Yeah, today the fastest car will win the race if he can negotiate the final sector. This story incredible. Lawrence Van Thor has tried his heart out for years in cars that weren't quite possibly there to win. And the Belgian driver, who's been a superstar at this place, one of our favourite internationals, has done the job. And Ayankin Guven has been remarkable. But the story is around Matt Campbell, who's going to win this one again. He's just got the run down to Murray's. For the final time, Jules Gounon is within sight of history, but he won't make it. It's Porsche and Mansai EMA who win the record Bathurst 12 hours in 2024. And Matt Campbell does it again. He did it before the big run of Sun Energy 1. And he breaks the streak and breaks their hearts. What a run. And Bathurst has delivered again. What a defence for Sun Energy 1. What a defence. If went, you can't win it, finish second. No, they went within 2.6 wow. seconds of doing it again. And Manti EMA will do the double pro and outright win. And the boys sell pro-am class. This is a huge result for this team. Yasser Shekin is going to win at Mount Panorama. And they were in the they were a lap down in the kitty litter at yeah. the top of the mountain. So they didn't have a perfect day. That wasn't their fault, in all honesty. So that's a great comeback drive as well. Remarkable stuff. Lawrence Vanter, finally, how does it feel to be a winner at Bathurst? It always needs a bit of time to sink in, but yeah, pretty amazing. Uh, pretty amazing group of people. I've uh, been waiting for this and dreaming of this one for, for a while, and it's uh, it's there, so I'm happy. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Silver class coming through to a quite brilliant finish. They've 
just gone round like clockwork. The Invitational class with bits falling off the car in front of it as they come down. It's the IRC car that was hard into the wall with the driver who was in the car who was hard into the wall earlier in the week. This is another great comeback story, Krilzy. Incredible, one of the overnight Bathurst repair jobs to victory. <laughs> the, the Bathurst history book's full of that story. That's incredible. And Mark Griffith's little team that could, in the Mercedes AMG, win in GT4. But Matt Campbell, he was the hero for Porsche in 2019. He's the hero for Porsche again in 2024. And he wins by 2.6 seconds. Was Jules Gounon whose streak finishes at a mere three in a row. There's only six drivers in the history of this place that have done it. Shay? Again, Matt Campbell, winner at Bathurst. How special is this place? Yeah, I mean, that feels awesome. Obviously, second win. Uh, you know, tough day, the, the weather, everything like that. And, and hats off to everyone at EMA Mentai Racing. I mean, we're always running at the front. And it wasn't easy with the mixed conditions, but, you know, to Larry and, and uh, Iancian, they did a fantastic job. We kept it off the walls and, uh, yeah, phenomenal. You know, the second win and, uh, yeah, it's un unreal. Nothing but qualifying laps for that last stint? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a little bit of uh, risk management as well. Uh, obviously, there was quite a lot of uh, water still offline in places, so just making sure I don't do any mistakes and, and really trying to manage the gap a little bit as well. So team was sort of keeping me up to date and, uh, yeah, we, we got there in the end. Two big races this year, two big wins. Congrats, keep it going. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Great start to the year. I think it was Shea who first spoke to Matt as well after winning the Rolex 24 at Daytona. That's his mum and TC, his aunt. They have been along every step of this journey. It's his girlfriend as well. What a really cool moment this is, waiting for his teammates to come and join the celebration. And Grello, one of the most famous brands in global GT racing, finally gets a Bathurst victory. Uh, the thousand watt smile of Matt Campbell. What a couple of weeks. First time overall winner and another Rolex watch a couple of weeks ago. And now second time here on the mountain in a real dogfight, let's be honest. Yes, they've had a good car, but as we've mentioned, it was by no means a perfect run. And they had to outfox and outsmart some strategy from the 75 Sun Energy One team. Teammates are all together down there. And uh, that's the start of a big party right there this evening. You, know, you ride the roller coaster with these guys. And for Lawrence Van Thor, who's tried his heart out so many times to be delivered a victory, it's an incredible result. How about third place? Christopher Haase. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for the drives of the two cars in front, that's drive of the day for yeah. mine at the end, who get to podium with Kelvin van der Linde and Liam Talbot. Enormous result for Audi. Jackson Evans and Phantom Global fourth. That's a good result yeah, really. as well. Maxime Martin fifth in the end in 46 with Valentino Rossi and Rafa Marciello. You know, I heard you call the wall racing Lambo across the line. Silver class winners, that's going to be a big party tonight. Massive. Oh, that'll be at Grant Denyer's house, I think, just around the corner. One of Bathurst's finest is going to win a Bathurst class, and he will be over the moon with that. And these are the class winners. Adam Christodolo, so Prestige Iveku, Mark Griffo's team got home in the end in GT4. And the class that no one wanted to win today in the end, <laughs> T2 Racing and Local Search got there. And Grello on top at Mount Panorama. This will be a famous photo in the Porsche archives for oh, yeah. years and years to come. That first win was special, backing it up with the Manti brand attached, with all the cachet in endurance racing that it has. Thomas Laubenbach, head of Porsche Motorsport here and in their garage in their corner as well was arguing the toss with the officials over the uh, the blown drive through and they've managed Gartander said it it's about how you react it's not about making the mistakes it's how you react how you reset how you throw away the plan that you were working on open another spreadsheet and just go for it some great photographs going to be going around the world. As always, there are so many stories to pull out of this. 275 laps, so well short of the distance record 
In fact, it, it'll be one of the shorter GT3 races held here. A smidge over 1,700 kilometres of racing in at times what were really challenging weather conditions throughout the middle stanza of the race. It's hard to believe they got to threes at the end yeah. of that in that shootout towards the flag. Record crowds has been in attendance. It's been an absolute cracker. And once again, the run to the chequered flag here has given us all of the excitement we could have. Even Mother Nature couldn't dampen the spirits here at the Repco Bathurst 12 hours for 2024. Last three races here, winning margins, 8.7 seconds, 0 0.9 and 2.6. So the last three races decided by a combined margin of about 11 seconds, which is just remarkable when you think about everything that you have to go through to finish this race. Eight cars finished on the lead lap. That's a record for this race. Shows you the depth of competition in that field and the car that finished in eighth position was in the end, Maro Engel. Triple two, Cam Waters, Tom Randall, Craig Lowndes. A really strong finish in the top eight in this race. That's huge. And then triple eight, Mick Grenier with huge pace at the end of the race there. Ends up in sixth position for the national storage team. BMW just in front. And the Pro-Am winners, just as a reminder, Manti EMA get both the outright and the Pro-Am class wins with uh, Piccarello King, who won here in Carrera Cup in October last year, and Yasser Shahin, who's a double GT World Challenge champion. Uh, I'd love to see where this fits in his CV from a racing driver point of view, because it, it will be right up there for Yas. How about Matt Campbell then? Um, his GT duties aren't finished this year. Um, I'll have to check to see and, and speak to him to see if Nürburgring 24 is on his list. Overall win at Daytona. Overall win at Bathurst 12. Well, what a trifecta that would be. I, I'm not sure that double that I've just mentioned has been done before. I'll have to look back. Let's go and celebrate this one. Chad Nalon has the Repco Bathurst 12 hour podium. Yeah, it's time to celebrate here at Mount Panorama, the 2024 Repco Bathurst 12 hour outright podium. We'll start with our third place team, the Washit team, MPC, and our drivers, Liam Talbot, Christopher Hasser, and Kelvin Vanderlinda. <laughs> With our third place trophies, here comes Shane Rodzis from the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. <laughs> and here comes Abby Hay, series manager with our Intercontinental GT Challenge medals. <laughs> Let's go with our second place team here today, which is Sun Energy One Racing. Kenny Habul, Drew Scunon, and Lucas Stolls. Here comes series manager Abby Hay with our Intercontinental GT Challenge medals. And with the trophies for second place, Bathurst Mayor Jess Jennings. And now, Bathurst, it's time to make plenty of noise for your winning team, Mante, EMA, and your drivers, Ihankan Guven, Laura Vantor, and Matt Campbell! <laughs> Ray Rosina from Repco with the trophies, and Christoph Hopp from Bozell with the watches. There are your nine drivers from the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. And here come the Bozell watchers. Thanks to our terrific partners. It is now time to celebrate here at Mount Panorama.
Well, Garth Tander, let's get out here and celebrate with the drivers as we say farewell to everybody on what's been an amazing 2024 Repco Bathurst 12 hours. It's been a while since you stood out here, mate. <laughs> oh, it's a fantastic result. What a result for Porsche. Matt Campbell delivered in that last stint. And for them to win the Pro-Am class as well is a big result for Porsche. Kenny Habal, he's the mayor of Bathurst. He's doing a shoey over there. Great, ep great atmosphere out here. Incredible. We're going to have to get off this podium before we accidentally find ourselves drinking out of Kenny Habal's shoe. And we're going to continue the fun next week with the thrifty Bathurst 500, all part of Superfest. Go and sign up to Superview for our international viewers. If you need another Bathurst fix next week, this has been an incredible race once again. Farewell, Bathurst. It's been great fun. There's a personality and an atmosphere to this race that is unrivaled anywhere in the world.